Welcome to Warcraft Reloaded, a podcast brought to you by Mash Those Buttons, covering World of Warcraft classic and its community. I am Bobby, also known as Blazing Bob, and as usual, I'm joined by Mel, aka Melarina. How you doing? I am good. I was responding to your tweet because you didn't even tag me in your tweet, and I was trying to find a good gift to be angry with you. <laughs> Which tweet? The one announcing the show. Oh, I don't You're ever like, tag Come us. Join me with. I just tag okay, the guest. You don't have to tag yourself because you're the one tweeting it. You see how that works? I'm just saying. Okay, I'll get you. I'll, I'll, I'll get nope, you next nope, time. No, nope, no, nope, it's fine. It's the, fine. No. We're at Sorry, episode, it's only 180. episode 180. I know. This is the first time you bring this up. <laughs> it's like I said, I don't look at Twitter very often, but. <laughs> Looks, okay, okay. All right. Well, lesson learned, note taken. We're also rejoined by Only Black Smoke. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Recovered, good. you could say. Yeah, <laughs> it took a little bit for me, but I'm recovered. I'm recovered. And first time on the show, the man behind classic Wowhead, Rockman. Welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, I didn't shave and my hair's messed up, so I'm wearing a hat. Welcome I, to the club. I didn't shave either. It's just, you me know. Me neither, guys. Damn it. Yep. Unfortunately, I, I don't have the gorgeous beard that that only has over here yeah what the hell can i get some of those jeans dude <laughs> please <laughs> i'll send them right over thank express you express shipping should arrive tomorrow oh <laughs> yeah just i always thought i'd have a face facial hair that just never came yeah i got same. the birds i got the stash and i got the chin but no just scraggles on the cheeks yeah Pro problem is i'm not allowed to shave because i look like I'm 19 again, if I don't have it. I like I, I grew yeah. it out because I was trying to get a job right out of college. <laughs> I look like a uh, six foot tall newborn baby when I when I shave. <laughs> there so. we go. <laughs> oh man! All right, all right. Well, I like to start the show off by thanking our tank patrons. In Thick Lizzie, Croxford, Braxton, and Turtle Whale. I'd like to remind everybody we stream the show live, twitch.tv slash blazinbob. That's B-L-A-Z-Z-I-N-B-O-B. -B. Um, I would tell you right here to join our Discord server, but it was hijacked by the hackers. And so I'm going to be making a new one soon, and I will let you guys know as soon as I have that up and running. Uh, and then, uh, okay, so we're going to start off the show with one with one voicemail. Um, and the number to call in is 816-866-1066 or speakpipe.com slash Warcraft Reloaded. And then we're going to go on. We're going to do the we're going to do uh, Rockman's uh, first time on the show interview, a uh, short interview, uh, be, you know, right after that, before we talk about the news, because there's so much news, we just might not get to it all. So with that being said, let's uh, let's jump in. You guys, uh, we got a voice, a voicemail. The person thought Scotty J was going to be on the show. So, uh, uh, so he asked a question for Scotty J about cataclysm, but I'm just going to skip that because we don't have Scotty. So I think you guys so are probably cool with that. Voicemails? Well, no, he had two questions. Do we not questions. have valuable opinions about I mean, Cataclysm? Is this look, only a Scotty question? Come look, on. Look, I'll admit to being an amateur, but I can I can give it a little crack at identity theft. I can be Scotty J. Mm. Yeah. I'll come this. Be, well, then Scotty be like, I can't be bothered, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like uh, he'll probably come on next next week, so I thought I would just just save it for him. So, But there's a second question that I think we all can... We can jump in on it. I'm going to start it right there. Cat a little bit. Second on SOD. Do you think SOD could be the bridge between retail and classic potentially? Because I've seen a lot of content creators, not just people that like classic, but even ones that look at classic. I played it back then. I don't want to play it again, but... Holy heck, I want to play 
SOD, a warlock tank, a shaman tank. All this stuff looks so cool. And I'm like, wow. Like, I feel Blizzard may have indirectly opened a can of worms <sighs> here. Like, do you think this could be it? The game that unites classic and retail. Anyway, those are pretty much my questions. Hope you guys have a great show. This will make it casual. Sign up. I have an opinion, but I'll I'll let you guys go first if you have an opinion. I want to hear from Rockman first. Uh so his question was, could SOD be a bridge between the classic and retail community? My first reaction is no, uh, <laughs> because retail people are always going to think they're better than classic people. So what we are to retail is we are uh, this goofy museum that they can go check out every now and then, but it's mostly for noobs and it's not uh, as cool and shiny as retail. And then uh, us classic players, uh, we think these retail players are crazy people. So I don't think there will ever be a bridge between the two <laughs> communities. But they I do blow think, it out very quickly. Yeah, exactly. I, no, there will never bridge the communities. That'll never happen. But I do think there is potential for SOD to be enjoyed by all types of people, even people brand new to, to WoW. Uh, if you didn't know, in the hardcore community... There were tons of people that have never done Molten Core. They've never leveled to 60 before that played hardcore. And I think mm -hmm. SOD can even appeal to people that have never played WoW at all. So I think the biggest thing that's exciting with SOD is Season of Data Mining is there is <laughs> a lot of potential because it's brand new. It's never been done before. There's no meta. Like some people might be... Uh, not encouraged to try classic because they don't know the meta, the warrior world buff meta. They don't know that and they don't feel comfortable, but there's no meta now. So anyone can play it. And also with the level caps, level 25 is what? Two days tops. Yeah. If you're a slow leveler, anybody <laughs> can play it and try it out. You know, throw out a couple of chaos bolts or whatever, you know, you're going to go oom really fast, but Hey, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Oli? What do you think? Uh, yeah, my, my first reaction is also no. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first reaction I heard, I forget who it was from, um, but I was like getting lunch with uh Jordy and Travis from Golden Guardians, um, and he got some DM from one of the GG retail players whose f first take on uh, on season of discovery was looks like shitty retail <laughs> uh, uh yeah and i and you know i i brought that up to a couple of people and i think it was like sarth or something said to me that <laughs> it's always felt to them that retail is a place of skill expression um you know where people really go to show off their individual skills whereas classic is a place for pushing limits everything's figured out everything's super easy to clear you know, it's a it's a noob meme well, space, just like Rockman's cat told us. Can I jump uh, in here real quick to like you're yeah. talking about is a skill place for heroic and mythic difficulty. Yes. Right. That yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's every skill other part of the game is and, literally and press W, right? Yeah. Pre press W, get to a place, get a thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Skill cool, expression cool. collection versus min maxing. Uh mm -hmm. um and limit pushing. You know, where I where I I I would agree, I do think that like it could be a place for for everybody to find something they enjoy, you know, filling in. I think that the the fact that sorry to suddenly switch, the fact that so many classes can now fill in as a tank, I think is a direct response to the constant tank shortage that we experience <laughs> in classic. Like you never have enough tanks. Uh, mm -hmm. They added Death Knights and Wrath. Still not enough tanks. Uh, Paladin, you know, Paladins and TBC. Still not enough tanks. Well, I think uh, the biggest problem with that is usually <laughs> the people that can tank are also one of the best DPS classes. Yep. yep. If you mm -hmm. if you're a warrior tank, why not just be a warrior DPS and do the most yeah. damage? Yeah. Well, or if you're a DK yeah. tank, why not just why be not? unholy unholy and do the yep. most damage? And we can't and point out Red Paladin. So Paladin tanks. We can't point Red out is though. Viable. <laughs> It is true that in Wrath, uh, 
tank shortage has gotten better. It's it's mm-hmm. not great, but it's way better than TBC was. Mm-hmm. Or like Vanilla working up yeah. wasn't bad because really any spec could tank, but mm-hmm. it's gotten better. And I think that's purely because of dual spec because people are like, oh, I'll do a tank spec just so I could do yeah. do dungeons and stuff. Well, also, Rhett is not uh, top of the meters. Mm-hmm. Right, Rhett's Rhett's good. But it's they're getting not there. Leaders. It's yeah, getting well, there. Well, so like like Rhett Rhett was simmed as this OP DPS where everybody abandons their prod spec once people are in you know, um, you know full tier gear. Like once they're basically done with prog, um, and then going into what is it, uh, Violet or whatever the hell, Ruby Sanct- Ruby Sanctum, Ruby Sanctum, yeah, Ruby Sanctum, yeah. Mm-hmm. the the one that everybody forgets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh yeah, we it's have one. The it's Wrath's afterthought, um, <laughs> but yeah, well, I have like a, I have an interesting theory about that. We can save that for later. Oh sure, sure, sure. I, like I, I agree with you, Bob, that the situation's gotten better. But it took two entire expansions and two fully new tank classes. I you know, feel like, like so. So if you're adding rogues, warlocks, shamans, and paladins all in a classic setting, you know, like doubling that progress with max level of eventually 60 uh i think will will really shake things up not not to mention all the other meta changes that are going to be made but what i wanted to say and this is a little bit of a an offshoot but specifically responding to the retailers hope for it when we were sitting there getting the announcements you know when mel was laughing at us or saying this is us (laughs) over and over again um wait is wait is this us (laughs) is this us uh i was sitting next to ompi and they were starting with the retail expansion outline, the three-parter. And he quickly gave me a theory on what he thought it would be. It, it wasn't true, but I do think that this is the reality that would have been super cool from a classic enjoyer's standpoint, where he thought that the tying up loose ends, you know, and finishing out all the storylines and taking us into the next 20 years was going to be three expansions where retailers saw effectively the end of the world by the titans returning and you know in that last moment in the third expansion midnight or whatever the hell it is um <laughs> ba- basically we would get to see uh or no i think that was the second i don't know whatever the third one is the last one uh, re- last titan thank you the last titan yeah so like we would retailer players would effectively see the world explode chromie last second come in with her big old button press rewind (laughs) everybody gets rolled back all the way to effectively season of discovery uh or like lessons learned from the season of discovery and we play through everything else but in an alternate timeline you know trying to fix the past and what ended up producing the end of the world that's not what happens of course now that (laughs) now that we now that we know not yet but but you know having not been a retail player and going into that outline with that idea i thought that was the coolest opportunity for blizzard to say hey let's just blend retail and classic have everybody get to go back together um i don't know you're right mel maybe it could happen um but that's what i thought could have been yeah exactly that's the pipe dream where i thought oh maybe we could build that bridge i see ryan with the uh, i don't know face Um, i just that's my little tangent response right i I I don't know that we like like the same game yeah to be yeah, honest. we we are, we're all playing World of Warcraft, you know. In retail, they're often like, uh, you know, fairy, uh, shadow, uh, alternate dimension, Narnia, uh, dream, Narnia, Furries. Emerald Dream World. <laughs> I don't even know where they are anymore. Arm Drasil. What is it called? <laughs> Amir Drasil. No idea. Yeah, who knows? Who even knows what that's called? <laughs> but, uh, so they're playing. That. It's not a real place. Yeah, it's not real. <laughs> but what is interesting is I don't know if y'all saw this, but a few maybe it was a month or two ago, I did an art. Well, it was more than a couple months actually. I did an article about basically I was super bored. I had nothing to work on, and I I had this like tinfoil hat theory that I've been kicking around for a long time about like uh, classic is an alternate dimension parallel to retail like i i remember you telling me about this yeah so like uh, you know there's like all these little things in classic that got like tweaked or whatever right so like outside undercity there is a bronze dragon flight zydormi and you can talk to her and she can transfer you in and out of the quest 
they added a bronze dragon flight uh, character outside of Onyxia and Wrath, and you can go in and out of the 80 to 60 Wrath. And there's like all these little changes. Chrono Boon, uh, we got the... Uh, there's like a tabard that we got that we weren't supposed to get. There's like all these little... Oh yeah, the Sons of Hodir rep And it's, tabard, and right? it's always mm-hmm. those pesky bronze dragon flight. Yeah, it's the bronze dragon flight people who are in charge <laughs> the of the time. <laughs> so I, I had this like fun theory because one of the big things that just happened in retail is they did like a big time related raid where it's the end of the bronze dragon flight in retail. And I had a theory because they've also been adding all the classic gear to retail that eventually they're going to allow classic players just to go to retail. And what? they're going to end classic. Like, we repaired the time fracture or whatever. Mm. There would be a lore reason for us to go to retail. And uh, a lot of retail people are, have told me they'd be very unhappy with that. But <laughs> <laughs> but it is, a way that they could, it is a way that they could go farm a Scarab Lord, right? right. Yeah. And next, another season, go get your Scarab Lord, bring it to retail grass. You got Scarab Lord. So, you know, <laughs> little things like that could be cool. They can get their tier three gear without the black market, black market auction house. But um, if you've noticed, this is a spoiler for something we're going to talk about later, but there was some data mined void touched gear, right? And the mm-hmm. void is a retail villain that exists, the void lords, and they do a lot of time manipulation. So like there's more evidence for the tinfoil hat theory. The void people are messing with season of discovery now. Interesting. See? Interesting. It's all coming together. It's I'm all coming together it. here. I feel Only like I need surely. to make myself a physical tinfoil hat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that before. Very pointy. I've done that before for sh- for shows. I'll I'll like have it ready, and someone says it, I oh, put yeah. it on, and people can't stop laughing. Usually. <laughs> oh my gosh! You need one of those for me whenever I'm on here. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, what do you think? Yeah, I. I think that Season of Discovery will be like a vacation for retail players. I think they'll come try it. I think they'll get bored quickly. And I think the majority of the people that will be there will be the classic people and new players. I do think it's enticing for new people. And I think it's enticing for a lot of people that maybe feel like they don't have enough time to do the current classic content even, right? Even though it's not that much of a time commitment sometimes people's schedules change weekly so they're not always available on guild nights right and maybe they don't want to do gtkps so i think that you'll see a lot of people in there that fall into that category and i think you'll see just like hardcore you'll see a lot of tourists come in from retail that kind of stay and you know maybe we'll keep some of them but for the most part i think most of them will go back to retail i don't think it's the same game i think there's different things that we love about Mm -hmm. classic that they love about retail and I don't think you could been convince either of us that one or the other side is right. <laughs> so that's all. Yeah, I don't I don't think the classic community and retail community will ever like, you know, hold hands and sing Kumbaya or anything like that. But uh, at the end of the day, we're all playing World of Warcraft. So it's good for both. I, I mean, as much as the retail people will say things like, oh, Blizzard's wasting their time developing classic. Or, you know, there's only two janitors in a closet working on classic. I've heard yeah. both of those. <laughs> or as much as classic players will say, just cancel retail. Yeah. Right. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's it's all one WoW sub. And the more yep. WoW subs there are, regardless of what version you're playing, it's good for WoW. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the I, thing, is like their target audience is not retail. And that's what I keep trying to tell people is like They've already got retail subs. Like, why would they try to target retail players to come to Classic when they could target new people <laughs> to yeah. sub and come to Classic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the big lesson from back in Season of Mastery, we need to stop cannibalizing our own player base. Right. Um, you know, like trying to find them new, up. new... Yeah, trying to find new markets or, you know, making sure that they find better retention for their existing market is really going to be their decision-making process. Mel, you did say something that made me, or that, yeah, gave me an interesting question. I'm curious for player retention throughout season of discovery, like to the end, how many like really good players, or I guess I should say like really good guilds, like prog guilds are going to have interest in sticking around throughout season of discovery, uh, given that it'll be, you know, existing at least partially during the launch of cataclysm and i'm talking about you know people like beef bar progress because i think one of the cool 
opportunities about this is that we have world buffs again. Um, mm -hmm. And then we've got this weird level gated content and new content uh, and not only, you know, new instances to clear, but a new class meta to where people haven't data mining aside, figured it out, <laughs> you know, so you? I, I, I'd be curious. Yeah, ha yeah. like how, how how many guilds will actually be taking it seriously or wanting to compete for that world first and potentially world only uh, status of, you know. First, so BFD clear with, all the way through Karazhan. Clear. Right. With those classic guilds, though, crypt. the classic guilds that are doing like the world <laughs> first stuff, right? Do you think it's as enticing to them to go for world first when they don't have everything figured out? Right. Like when it's all just theory crafted or data mined. Right. Because right now they go for world first when basically they know exactly what they're going to do. And it's yeah. just a fight between the guilds as and to they who can, can put 160 it. hours of PTR. Yeah, who can it. execute yep. it the best right at this point like it'd be way more fun to watch a world first in season dis <laughs> discovery i just don't know if the big guilds that are doing it in classic if mm -hmm. that will interest them as much i think it'll also depend on they're coming what... back and i think that exactly what you said is what a lot of people think about these vanilla guilds these private server guilds that have been doing the same raids forever they think uh they're only good because they've PTR'd it so many times. But honestly, PTR is just because it's available. Mm -hmm. I think if there was right. even no... There was no PTR for uh, BWL, I believe. Uh, there actually wasn't a PTR for BWL in, in 2019. And uh, yeah, they could make their own private server to test it. But, you know, the, you know, the little mi minute mechanics are different between the two. But uh, I think a lot of guilds from vanilla private servers in 2019 classic that were world first guilds, like some of the names you mentioned, they do want to come back to prove to people that they're not good just because they've played the same thing so many times. They are yeah. actually good players and they want to prove themselves by being the best in uncharted territories. That'd, That'd be, be cool. really exciting. Yeah. It'll yeah. be neat to I already see. Know, I already know of two that are coming back. So. Awesome. Well, there we go. It'll yes, they are. It'll be interesting to see if they uh, if they time gate the raid too to come out like two weeks after launch or something like that. Rather what do you mean than the just, raid? You mean all raids or just the first raid uh, BFD? Like if they? Oh, I, I think it'd be it. fun if people are in there. I think it'd be day fun one. If it wasn't, like a, yeah. imagine it's a like because you like if you are a very very good player or you you're in a very very good guild hours, you can right? get yeah you can get to well, 25 a hours but a day in, in yeah, like yeah in, in like life, tw 20 in hours. like 12 yeah in somewhere between 12 and 20 hours uh you know just to put a very liberal time stamp <laughs> on it I mean, yeah somewhere in there. uh you know but then you're looking at within the first 24 hours you are going to have it cleared and yes. i think that that's like really exciting from a yeah like, i do think content it'll be production right production perspective you know being able to mm -hmm. watch that and cover that and you know the world gets to feel a part of it we did that in 2019 with fluid core. motion yeah like it is launch yeah. all the way through clear you know but it's not going to take you five days like clear molten six, core in 2019 yeah. you know or six days um but it's going to take you one day see you and know, i'm like on that, the fence that's very exciting i kind of like the like everybody gets in the door and you watch you watch people, you know, as they're racing, you know, I kind of like that, but then I do like, I mean, I like aspects of both ways they could do it. So I'm kind of on the fence with that. I'm just curious what they're going to do. Yeah. It's no, very interesting on because Thursday they'll be, and the raid will be yeah. out. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the things will be different that they do. Right. I think because it's not all figured out. Right. I think they'll do a lot of similar things because there will be theory crafting out there, but I think you'll see a lot more differences potentially in the season of discovery. I think the longevity of it for those players will depend on what else is going on at the exact same time. Right. I think wow has to be very conscious of when they're releasing Kata versus when they're releasing the next level gate on season of discovery versus when something else comes out. Right. Like, and I don't think they need to do it with retail as much. Um, they might want to, but specifically like releasing content. I remember when the hardcore servers came out and then the ICC PTR came out right at the same time. Right. Yeah. And it was like, that was rough. 
so well, many I mean, Blizzard Mastery. Season yeah, Mastery Blizzard, came Blizzard's out during this, Black Temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blizzard's got this weird thing where they think that three weeks of separation is enough, and it is never enough. <laughs> like be- between releases, like well, you if need you tr- more. If you like people don't what... get bored and complete things in three right. weeks. And if right. you chart out what Blizzard said at BlizzCon, <laughs> we should be hitting the sixty level cap phase four of SOD right around the time Ruby Sanctum is going to be coming out. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ruby Sanctum is only one boss, but yeah, it is. Still, you know, that's it's, a, it's that's still around something that to be time. pushing for. Yeah, yeah. Like, and then uh, or, or or not Ruby Sanctum. Sorry, Ruby Sanctum will be coming out at the end of the the level 40 bracket coming out January, mm-hmm. February. And then it's Kata, excuse me. Kata is coming out around the time we're going to be hitting 60 on the sod level cap phase 4. See, and yeah. that's not good. That's no. that's very not good. Well, yeah. it, especially like another layer of it. Um I saw somebody mention like I wish that they had discussed world buffs a little bit more in the presentation. Like we're getting a new world buff for example from the Ashenvale PVP event. Like not multiple. only do you have to worry Yeah, yeah multiple. Thank you. Uh, like, not only do you have to worry about the world first pushes that are happening in a season of discovery uh, and timing them with other releases, whether it's Wrath, Kata, uh, or potentially even retail, who knows? Um, <clears throat> but you also have to worry about, you know, the fact that the speed running meta is going to be changing as well because you have uh, new world buffs to get that have never been used before to clear well you can't raids. get the old world buffs we're only level 25 no, no yeah I, I know i know but yeah but there's like, no there's but, no but dragon pre, slayer but pre-60 like we still have to worry about you know completely different world buff metas yeah where yeah. where you're going to have the world first clear say it is day one uh world first clear of bfd then like three weeks after that or up to three weeks after that you're going to have the first speed run push for it as well when dmf's you know, out yeah yeah when dmf is out and i think that is why especially for season of discovery you have to give more than three weeks difference between these releases you know like i would say at least five and, and i get mm-hmm. that that's harder given that blizzard has stated they're going to be working on an accelerated timeline for cataclysm releases and push through that expansion faster um but i think it's yeah, gotta be <laughs> 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 Yes. <laughs> we'll I mean, see. there's a reason but, they're gonna go through quickly. Yeah. This kind of like we're just yeah. gonna we're just gonna you know breeze on by but, this guys. <laughs> yeah, but like exactly. like they they need to realize like the potential for like Rockman was saying, a lot of these top end guilds, not only for prog, but also for speed running to find long lasting excitement and make sure that they're not cannibalizing the players that are really generating this massively outsized portion of the hype around classic. Uh, and has the potential to generate a lot of hype and excitement and attraction for Season of Discovery at the same time if the releases are given, you know, an appropriate uh, cadence uh, to where those guilds can enjoy both. You know, like if yeah. we have, if we have, you know, um, I don't know, like Take Note or Fusion, you know, being able to pursue uh, you know, the DMF world buff runs on season of discovery without having to worry about that overlapping with them trying to get, uh, you know, fire lands, uh, <laughs> clears or progs, then that'd be perfect for them. And not only also, for the thousands of people watching on YouTube, Twitch, kick, wherever. You bring me to something else I've thought about with the new world buffs and the fact that if they don't do something about the Chrono boon, until we get to like the fifties, we're gonna be back to the buff logging meta. Well, which I can tell is you, fun. There is a new uh, item ID for Chrono Boon, so that means. So there's we don't know what that means, but I can tell you on Wowhead we've seen a new Chrono Boon in the data. So it means one of two things, or both even. One possibility is they had to make a new Chrono Boon to also suck up the new world buffs so if you get the new bfd world buff they need a new chrono boon spell to suck up that new buff with all the other buffs right it's also possible that they're going to put the chrono boon on a new vendor somewhere or in a different location and maybe for a different price even um and then it's also possible that it's it's just a low b chrono boon 
that mm-hmm. only does the new world buffs for SOD. We don't really know, but I will say they've they're, they're I, Blizzard's done something with Chrono Boons, so I'm assuming they're aware of this issue with Chrono Boons. Good, good, yeah. Can can we talk about the the data mining? I don't mean well, to here. Like Hold on, I, oh, I, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I still need to get my thoughts on the the oh, question please. real quick. So yeah, the question on if uh, if this could bridge the gap between retail and classic, I think it can, but only one direction. I do believe, and basically hardcore has shown me this. I played with so played dungeons and did so many things with so many retail people in. Uh, in hardcore, it was absolutely out of this world. I'd never hung out with so many uh, retail people, and they hadn't played classic. Mo- like most of them I talked to, hadn't played classic until the hardcore realms. So I think this can bring retail people over. Maybe Mel's right. Maybe they do get bored, but I think it could bring them over. Bringing us over to retail is such a tall ask. Even if you do these changes where. I think he was kind of the, I think Mega Man in his question was kind of pointing towards what if they like brought some of these rune changes and tank changes to retail, like would that entice us? And I think we're all, you know, I'm speaking for me, but I think I speak for a lot of the classic crowd that just retail is too bloated for us. Oh, I mean, hell no, I ain't playing that game. Yeah, just too much, too many mounts, too many everything, too like, and the the talent trees are crazy confusing oh, and in trees. depth. Yeah. But I mean, I, you have to really get into done it. it forever in the game, but it's a lot to go with, to go through. Right. Like I, well, I, played, I played dragon Path of flight. Exile. Yeah. But so are the, oh, so are the wrath talent trees. I played Path of exile. I'm not intimidated by a giant uh, talent tree with a ton of choices. I think more choices are always better. And the sky's the limit. If you want to give a player a million choices, a talent tree that never ends, I think that's good. Obviously, that's intimidating to some people, but they can just copy someone else if they're if they're too intimidated, you know? True, true. Well, and, and most people are going to copy someone else even if they're not intimidated. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. Some people just, chasing. I'll just, I don't want to put the effort in. I'll just copy someone. That's a good, good point, too. Yeah, I think, yeah, but I just don't think, I don't think it's going to entice us to come there. So that's that's all I really think about that. Like I think retail people can definitely come over, but I just don't see classic people. You know, there's all kinds of different things about retail that turn classic people off. You know, like for me, dragons that look like they're out of Disney instead of out of Tolkien, right? Or out of the hell is a Volpera? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I mean, it's just it's not my game. Yeah, the little fox (laughs) people they're cute, but it's not my game. Yeah. Uh, I play the horde. Okay, we're supposed to be orcs covered in blood, murdering people. Why is there a cute fox? <laughs> Listen, I think if we want to combine classic and retail, we need like the classic faction and the retail faction, and they fight against each other. Right? Like this is the only way I feel like we're actually going to get oh, to a common a ground. True. <laughs> I don't even like the character models in retail. World yeah, of God. Warcraft. But we would have our classic Look, models. Retail. And they would have their retail, retail models. Retail yeah. against yeah, I'll classic. Smoke them. Bring them on. I'll, I'll say, smoke all of them. Yeah, as a longtime <laughs> gnome enjoyer, I hate the retail character models. Gnome. Mecha gnomes? Yes. Gnomes oh, look like little toddlers again. that are about to fall over. Like, they're just oh so ugly. God. I the, hate the them with a are, burning passion. The mecha gnomes look like they're wearing diapers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, uh... My dear friend Lesmos was for a while, gosh, back in like, I don't know, January or something, uh, trying to see like, I wonder what hardcore retail would look like, like if you were trying to push, uh, push mythics or something, because it only takes like five hours to level back up. Um, (laughs) And I logged in and I'm like, okay, like, what am I going to play? I took a look at the character creation screen and saw like 50 races that I could choose from. And I was like, this isn't for me. (laughs) <laughs> like you've lost no, me log out. when you've got like two sub races for every single race. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I really think it was <laughs> super, super silly to separate some races that are the same races, like dark iron dwarves and dwarves. And then the new like wild hammer dwarves or whatever, they yeah. should just be one dwarf race. And then yeah. you can like customize them to look like that. 
Mm-hmm. Same with the right. high mountain Torin and the Torin. Yeah, or the just different tribes of uh, trolls. Like yeah, and the elves. I get that like, they're different tribes, but well, they're still I, trolls. I ran out of things to do. They were like, "Well, let's." <laughs> yeah, they ran out of this. space. They, they, they couldn't do another cataclysm. We need to put something on the box, yeah. right? There's uh, been too yeah. many boxes. That's a big yeah. But yeah. I quit. Bob, Bob, I oh, go ahead. Oh, oh I, I was, was saying I quit retail once. <clears throat> okay, I quit in Cata. Same. And I've I and listen, I've always tried a new expansion. World of Warcraft was like the biggest game in my life for like five years of my life. So every expansion, I give it a fair shot. I say I'm gonna sub. I'm gonna buy the new game. I'm gonna try it. If it can captivate me, we play this. It every expansion after Kata, it didn't. And I think there are some things that they did in the game that are like unrepairable, such as the new race class combos added in Kata. I think it really killed a big part of the game for me. Mm-hmm. That like all of a sudden orcs can be mages, torrents can, can be, be paladins, paladins. undeads yeah. can be hunters. And I don't have a problem with that. It just doesn't make sense to me that this world that we've been playing this game in, all of a sudden races go, oh, I know how to cast a spell with a staff now. (laughs) Even though we've been fighting wars for thousands of years before uh, World of Warcraft came out in 2004 and people Mm -hmm. could play us. Oh, we know. Well, you know what happened? Yeah, yeah, they, well, you know what it, happened that... is there was that one really cute orc that got with the human, right? And they had a baby, oh, and that baby had another baby with an orc, and then they just kind of started to yeah, look like man, orcs. Man yeah, they got real Moonguard. lonely after his wife was gone. They did that they're in Goldshire just... Inn on the Moonguard server. That's oh, where God. they made these new yeah, characters. <laughs> really, they're just mutts, you know? Like, yeah. Like, like, well, it, it's that the game for me. The, yeah, the it, well, it's that erosion of like, uh, like racial and even faction identity. Like having all of these combinations. I think, like, uh, going back to the comments on, like, the, uh, shrunken down and then re-expanded and reimagined talent trees. It's the exact same way. Like one of the biggest turnoffs when Blizzard was originally looking at like, what do we hate about Kata? Like, what's what's causing all of this commotion? Like, end classic at Wrath was the talent trees, you know, just suddenly turning into, you know, four choices that you get over 85 levels or whatever. Having to go to the, all the way down in one tree before being able to put something in another tree takes a lot of, you know, creativity out of it. I mean, Kata not Um, only destroys the talent trees, they destroy stats too. A lot of people don't know this, but there's tons of stat changes going into Kata where it's like block rating, block value, do- all the rating stuff gets replaced. Mm-hmm. And then people get this new stat called mastery. Mastery, yep. Yeah. Where it's just like a catch-all stat depending on your spec and honestly, that is the most awful. Is Kata where you can change RPG a stat for too? Sake. Is Kata where you can change a stat? Is that in Kata? Yeah, the, uh, that's item reforging where you can like tweak yeah. an item. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with I, item reforging. I, I kind of yeah. like that. But yeah, I mean, it, well that it like Kata in so many ways represented like the shift toward oversimplification and over let everybody be everything and anything they want to. And gear stopped being cool. <laughs> gear, yeah, gear stopped it's being just cool. Item level other, now. other than like, you know, the you, you, get, you get the best item level and cool then you go anymore. back and right. hope yep. that you had your Trans-mog. tier three for transmog. I, I'm uh, not a huge hater on the transmog because, okay, so I used to always say like transmog stupid because in PVP, I don't know what the guy's wearing. But come, give me a break. Everyone in vanilla is using savories and noggins anyway. We can't see what the hell anyone's wearing. And we're all hiding our rocket helms anyway. You can't see when they have it on. So I never really care too much about the transmog. But I will say it does change something where, you know, your your guild leader, your main tank is transmogged into like, you know, a dress and a party hat. (laughs) And he's running in to find a dragon. You're you're not a classic paladin and you're like what's that <laughs> and this is like this isn't it doesn't look right it doesn't feel right sure it's fine right. in town when we're goofing off in yeah, the moon version breaking but rockman yeah. i've been saying it for years if you put in trans trans mog, it should have always been a toggle switch client side everybody's happy yeah i can toggle I feel that it way on about in town and i can games. toggle it off if i don't want it you know that's I mean, it's such an easy fix because all the graphics are kept client side. You just have to yeah. be like, mm-hmm. 
just like it's an if statement in there for each piece of gear. I mean, I don't see how it would take too much time. But Do y'all play yeah. y'all play Dota at all? Nope. Used to. Okay, well, the cosmetics in Dota, after so many years, has gotten so insane. And some uh, heroes in Dota can b be modified with cosmetics to not even look like what they're supposed to. And it's getting really close to the point where they're finally going to put in client side, disable all cosmetics. It's going to happen eventually because wow. it, you can't even tell what anyone is anymore because the cosmetics <laughs> are so glowy and sparkly yeah, and crazy. It's the power creep of cosmetics. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and I would um, love that in retail to just hide all trans monks. Yeah. I would do that. Instantly. Bob, I, I'm wondering if I can go back to something you said in answering that question. You said okay. it only work one way. Uh -huh. um, for retail players like finding enjoyment in classic content. When I was going through the demo and hearing feedback from <laughs> classic and retail players, you know, one of the big points of feedback that I heard that people wanted to get to Blizzard was it felt like there were just a very clear cut mix of mechanics that were classic mechanics and retail mechanics, and they just both existed in any boss fight but that it didn't really feel like they belonged with each other. I think that, like, there's a really cool opportunity for Blizzard to implement more retail-like uh, boss mechanics in these fights, but to find a way to do it in a way that feels like classic. And I think that that might be an opportunity for classic players, if it's done well, for them to say, oh, I really liked how this was challenging in a new way. I wonder, you know, if I went and leveled up on retail and started doing Mythic, if I would actually get more enjoyment out of this style of dungeoning and raiding. Um, that's you, one way I think that they me? could capitalize on a classic to retail yeah, okay. turnover. Um, but again, I don't think that what I saw in the demo, they're there yet. Did y'all do Chromagus boss encounter during <clears throat> Season of Mastery? In BWL, Cormagus, the second to last boss in BWL. <laughs> nope. You I didn't. know I quit after we killed Rag. <laughs> okay. So yep, in I season only of mastery, did hardcore. Let me let me tell you this. Okay. I played every fight since 2019, right? I'm in a pretty good guild, right? We're our juice on Feralina. We're a really good guild. We kill everything. Uh and the first fight I fought where I was like, yo. This is too many things happening at once. This feels like retail. It was uh, hard mode Mimiron. So hard mode, Mi and I play melee. So oh hard gosh, mode Mimiron yeah. has so much going on. I, I think I was physically overheating. Like my <laughs> body temperature was going up during this fight because it was too much, right? Let alone and, your and, computer. And like, it felt like chaos too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it is, it it's a lot like... of chaos. Dude, and I and had I'm to a... do that fight dozens and dozens of times before I ever felt like now I'm good at it. But now yeah, we're, exactly. But, but I had to play it all through TO, like doing GDKPs all through TOGC. And it wasn't until halfway through TOGC where I was like, I'm confident I could do this with it. any group. Like, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm actually on the top five of the, you know, DPS chart instead of just running around not knowing my prio and everything else. Yeah. Well, that, that, so that was the first fight where I was like, I'm actually overheating. This is too many mechanics at once. And, it made me realize that a lot of the appeal of vanilla raids are that I can kick my feet up, have a beer. With yeah. The I can just chill while we do the raid. Yeah, we get our world buffs. We go hard, but we don't go crazy unless it's DMF week. Then everyone's fucking sweating, headband on at the computer. <laughs> you know, Using your foot pedals. their keys. I can't miss a global. So I mean that was cool, you know, like you had a yeah. a respite between when you right. had to really work hard, and then the other times you kind of do it. Lots of the really good deals are doing splits, yada yada. So the Chromagus fight in Season of Mastery is Mimron. There is a lot of mechanics happening all at the same time. To I'll just quickly run you through it. You know, regular Chromagus, he puts debuffs on people. They got to get dispelled. If somebody gets all the debuffs, they turn into a dragon. You have to kill him, right? Well, in, in Season of Mastery, whenever Chromagus put a debuff on someone and it was dispelled, a mechanic would happen. Okay? So, oh, no. Yeah. So if they got the green debuff and you poison dispelled it, a poison nova goes on the ground. And if you stand in it, you die in the poison. So now everyone has to move out. If you get the um, gold debuff and you dispel it with the sand, 
it uh, does an AOE stun. It doesn't just stun you, it does an AOE stun when it gets dispelled. So you have to be spread out so that we don't AOE stun everyone. Then there was the blue debuff, which slows you. Well, when that gets dispelled, it spits out an ice block, okay? And, the, and if you remember the Chromagus fight in original 2019, you just use the wall to line of sight his AOE stuff, right, from Chromagus. Well, in Season of Mastery, you couldn't use the wall. You had to stand behind the ice blocks. To, oh, interesting. So now you have to time when you dispel the blue debuffs so that all the ice blocks don't fade away before the AOE goes out. Oh my God. And this is really hard for vanilla healers who have never had to worry <laughs> about anything and just dispel right? instantly everything. So, it and and listen, if everyone has to run behind the ice block when the blue buff, blue buff gets dispelled to avoid the AOE, and if someone dispels the sand and it's an AOE stun, right? So there's mm -hmm. like conflicting mechanics that you have to be aware of. It is way too much going on at one time for 40 people. It's 40 people. Yeah. It's not 25 yeah. people. It's fucking 40 people. Mm -hmm. And and I swear to God, it's like he spits out 12 debuffs every five <laughs> seconds or something. So it's like, it's it's really bad. It is so it, much happening. I will say it was my favorite fight in Season of Mastery. But it is not at all in any way feel like a vanilla fight. You cannot have a beer at your computer during this fight. <laughs> and they didn't give us world buffs in Season of Mastery. So do you know yeah. what happens every time you died on Chromagus? You needed oh, to no. repop every greater protection potion. Oh. You needed nature for the poison. You needed fire. You needed frost. You needed arcane. You needed to pop all four. It's a two minute cooldown between it. So it's an eight minute timer between pulls because that everyone's got to repop all the cons. And you know how and much gold it is to do all that? 40 yeah. popping four greater protections every pull. It I just remembered to going into classic and it being remembering how much buffs cost in mana, right? It was like, like right now I can buff everybody like, woo, okay, I'm like 10% down mana, right? Right. You go into classic and it's like, you buff two groups and you're like, all right, I got a drink. Oh, I got a drink. And yeah, then, I mean, even a even a mage. Oh, I made I made four stacks of water. I got a drink to full again. Yeah. I, I got to trade those four to the priest. Now we got eight more priests I got to trade. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Every boss fight that we go into that they're like, all right, don't dispel. Every time the first thing comes up, I'm always just like instantly like, oh, shit, yeah, don't do that. And yeah. about 50% of the time I accidentally do, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so I, I actually don't know if I trust Blizzard to make fights that feel like vanilla because the season of mastery were supposed to be vanilla fights with new, you know, coat of paint on them. But they all they all felt like retail. OK, it's way too much happening all at once. And it's, it, it has to be really, really hard and complicated to try to design fights like they were made in 2004 with <laughs> modern players, right? right? And and it's like, who who does Blizzard want to appeal to? Like, who was the target audience of Season of Mastery? Just asking you guys. Who was the target audience? It wasn't Vanilla Andes, who just want to play Vanilla. It wasn't retail players. And it wasn't the hardcore guys, because they took away world buffs. World buffs, yep. And it wasn't super casual people, because you need a ton of gold, and a ton of cons to be able to play the game. So who the hell was the target audience of Season of Mastery? I think Season of Mastery was just like, a, here, we'll just leave this here. Yeah. And then they tried to like be like, okay, let's try these things, see if it engages those people who maybe are Vanilla Andes or maybe are, you know, didn't want to go to TBC or something. And I think they learned they made some changes but not enough changes to entice like for me it was just too soon to go back to vanilla yeah. right for like, most i mean people, i was like, trying to get my war waves i just did that so. <laughs> like, i think like, it was practiced for the devs remember yeah, the devs the wow yeah. classic devs hadn't done a whole lot of changes to that point and they were coming in and they were watching raids and coming in asking them if it was okay to reset the raid so they could make a tweak and try something else. Oh, that was, I was in the raid that, that happened. To. They, I we mean, they the did PCR it to a couple of them. Yeah. They did yeah, it to yeah. you and a couple others. Uh, cool. And yeah, it's just, I think that was them getting their hands, you know, like, in it. Yeah. And, and starting to really make changes. And then we started to see the fruits of that in wrath with the old war changes and a bunch of different changes, you know, and it, yeah, I think it was kind of practice 
And I think overall it was a good thing. And, you know, hardcore made it very popular for a bit, but it's still, you know, there were still about 20,000 people raiding the entire way through it. So according to, um, according to, uh, Iron Forge Top Pro. So I mean, they had cool, some people, right? but I think they got a lot of practice in actually manipulating the game because I think our classic team prior to, you know, them bringing a lot of people in was not really any dev developers. It was more like just stewards that were just kind of watching over what was created, you know, when classic was created initially, because they didn't even talk to us, start talking to us until around like AQ times. And then they're like, hey, OK, well, let's talk. You know, it was radio silent before that, pretty much. Well, I think it's because they maybe like their ego Right. I don't think Blizzard likes that Classic is as big as it is. I think they're getting rid of a lot of those people, and I think a lot of people are coming around, but I think you're definitely right yeah. in the beginning. In the very beginning, it definitely was. I mean, they literally only had two people doing 2019 <laughs> Classic when it mm -hmm. started, right? It was like, here you go. Yeah, they had a you big team. It up, we'll give it to you. It was, yeah, it was Omar it. and Brian Birmingham, I think, were the two guys, and that's it. I mean, I think a lot of the retail people chipped in and making it, but yeah, then it yeah. was just like clocked out as soon as that was done, right? And then, um, uh, and also, it, it probably is hard to grapple with as a developer at Blizzard right now that's developing retail when you see like when Classic launched in 2019 and there's 3 million new users. And it's like, mm -hmm. hmm. And then you look <laughs> around the room at Blizzard and you're like, oh, wow. There's not many people here that actually made the 2019 WoW still here. Mm -hmm. I mean, half of them were a part of the sexual harassment thing. But, you know, it's like, oh, all those guys that made that game aren't here anymore, except for like, you know, a handful. And those are the ones trying to resurrect classic 2019. So it's kind of like a lot of I mean, this is just my you know theory or whatever is like the reason Blizzard treated classic like a black sheep in the beginning was probably like kind of like an ego thing and then yeah i mean, then, well, like, I mean the jab wanted, was do. the the head I mean, of the company that. then you know they jab was there told us they told us that we don't really want classic you know you think you do yeah you don't. and yeah. honestly that was the dumbest thing to say because obviously oh we know what we want yep. but yeah they didn't even believe that we wanted the game well right? and now the retail people have to watch the classic WoW devs so excited about what they're doing and have such a cool, you know, crowd reaction to everything they're doing. I mean, if, you know, if they, I don't want to, I don't want to like, I don't know, if retail devs were as excited about their game as the WoW classic devs are, I think it could make a lot of difference for them, but it seems like a completely different crowd and I'm just glad we got the team that we have now. Well, I think the vision for retail has changed over so many times over so many years. And I think mm -hmm. that's why it's really important that they got back like someone like Chris Metzen, who has mm -hmm. such a strong and clear vision in his mind of where he wants it to go, what it is, what it should be, what people want it to be. He mm -hmm. has a very clear defined vision of all those things. Whereas before, I feel like, you know, WoW went through, it went through so many hands over the years that the vision got maybe a little muddied or the vision changed a lot, or even there was no vision for some time. Right. And they were kind of just putting it out there, you know? And mm -hmm. you really can tell when people go, what are my favorite expansions of the past? Oh, I really like Wrath. I really like Mop. I really like Legion. And you know what's funny is about those three expansions, those are expansions where a new class was introduced. And you know what happens when you're developing a new class for a video game, an MMO, is you really start to think about what makes each class special. So sure, we're going to make a new class and this class can do this, but we need to make sure all the other classes feel special too and they feel like their class. So when people say, yeah, Wrath, Mop, and Legion are my favorites, it's because there was really good class design in those expansions. But then, you know, every other expansion people are like, yeah, that one sucked. But yeah. it's kind of like because there wasn't a clear vision. And the only time there was a clear vision was when the developers were kind of forced into really thinking about class design. And, right. you know, Retail WoW is what it is. It's Retail WoW. And it, it appeals. It's also 
especially in kata. We were just talking about kata, how they simplified things. Well, when you simplify something, you want it to appeal to more people because it was too complicated before. Not everyone can understand it. It's too complicated. If you're a brand new player coming into kata and it still has dodge rating, dodge uh, or block rating, block value, and then block as a stat, that's three types of block, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's pretty- the whole like, is it too late to start question? You yeah. Know, and like, And it's like, so if you're going to water it down and simplify it to appeal to a broader audience, you're going to alienate your original core audience. And I think that's exactly what happened with WoW. And I feel like that's happened so many times over so many expansions, Mm -hmm. right? They keep trying to appeal to a broader audience, but that alienates their original audience. And I think that's just a problem with developing a video game as big as World of Warcraft for so many years. 20 years of developing the game you think that's going to happen right yeah well um let's uh let's move into the interview and we can hit when we get to the the last part of the interview we can hit on the uh data mining thing that we were going to talk about too so let's move into yeah sure yeah sure (sighs) bobby we need to have a talk about this World of Warcraft classic. Do I look like I know what a WoW token is? All right. And just like we do with every new... You know they're uh, bringing King of the Hill back. Are they? Yes. Nice. Nice. I did not know. Oh, no, no, no. You're fine. I love King of the Hill. Um, But yeah, so like we do with everybody, it comes on the show for the first time. We do their their first time interview. Anybody who's been on the show, you should be able to go back and find the first time and hear their interview. It's just a cool thing we do here that I think separates us from other podcasts. So let's get to it. Rockman, what is your WoW background? Like you gave us a little bit. You said you quit in Cataclysm, but when did you start playing WoW? Yeah, so I was in high school. Uh, this is 2004, 2005. I'm an old man. Sorry. I was in high school in 2004. I'm older. Uh, I was in college. All right. Fair enough. (laughs) I was Uh, in fourth grade. (laughs) grade. That's a good time. So yeah, I, uh, 2004, 2005, uh, we saw this Leroy Jenkins video (laughs) and it was going around. Like this is like, this is like pre, uh, viral no one said things went viral right it was just a popular video and uh we were talking about it at school and my friend was like dude i can be a paladin tank and i had no (laughs) idea what those words meant i thought he was talking about like an actual like world war ii tank i was like bro what you're they're transformers and wow they turn into tanks what the hell like all right all right yeah so i mean i wasn't a pc gamer i was a a console gamer i had a in 2004, I don't even, I had a PS2 probably. I don't know what I was playing. Um, I just played video games like super casually after school when friends were over, you know, you did a split screen on the monitor, golden eye, you know, shit like that. And uh, I wasn't like crazy into video games, but I did play things like Magic. Uh, I played the Pokemon card game, Yu Gi Oh! I was really big into card games. I was like a professional Pokemon person for years, uh, but I got out of Pokemon, uh, obviously. Um, <laughs> And uh, so so my buddy's like, dude, I can be a paladin tank. And I'm thinking Transformers, right? So he goes and he begs his mom to buy him a gaming computer, right? So he gets a gaming computer and he buys World of Warcraft. It's vanilla WoW. And uh, he makes like a dwarf paladin or whatever. So he's leveling up and I would just spend the night at his house or like the whole weekend. And we would just take two hour turns on his computer playing. And and I would just sit right next to him watching him play and I'm talking to him about his shit. And then it was my turn and he'd sit next to me and he, we're like theory crafting the whole time we're playing it. So it was a pretty unique uh, uh, introduction to World of Warcraft. Cool. But yeah, the very first character I made was a dwarf priest because he was a dwarf paladin. I made a dwarf priest because I was like, dude, I can go shadow form. <laughs> and uh, I remember this is, this is like my origin story. So I'm in Red Ridge Mountains. And I'm going up north. And I'm like, dude, what's this broken down gate over here? And this, you know, these burning steps, you know. So I'm walking into it. And this is in 2005. His computer is so bad. It's, it, you know, dial-up. Most of the kids don't know what dial-up is these days. 
But basically, it sounds like a transformer dying when you're connecting to the internet. So, Robots in disguise. Yeah, exactly. So I'm running, and I swear to God, I'm playing at like 12 FPS and on my dwarf priest, and I just die. And I'm like, what the hell killed me? And I see an undead rogue like slash bow over my corpse and then vanish and not like he entered stealth he literally you know was vanish Did he, he say didn't have to vanish because he was out of combat but <laughs> i was like a level dead. 23 dwarf priest and this is a level 60 full bis rogue he just ambushed me and then vanished on my corpse oh and my i was God. like i mean that was showmanship right there <laughs> yeah it was sure he was literally show no that back. was show back show back in 2005 <laughs> for sure bankai uh, show back in 2005 ambushed me on my low B dwarf priest. And I said, I'm playing that class, whatever that guy's class is, I'm playing it. And then I've, I've been playing a rogue ever since. Oh, man. So, so yeah, I played rogue forever. That's a similar thing happened to me, but I made it to 60 on my mage before I switched to rogue. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, getting to 60 is insane back then. Right. Um, oh yeah. I was one of the first mages on the server. I was getting hounded to go. Hell yeah. So I, I didn't, uh, buy a PC or anything. I just made a rogue on my friend's computer and I would play over at his house on the weekends and over and stay the night or whatever. And what I did was I was like, dude, leveling, dude, I'm only leveling in two hour sessions. It's going to take me forever to hit 60. <laughs> so I just stopped at like level 26 and I just did Warsong Gulches for my two hour sessions. Nice. So for my two hours, I would just go Warsong Gulch as like a level 26 rogue. I wasn't even twinked out. I didn't even know the cap was 29. <laughs> <laughs> I was owning people, right? And yeah. uh, it wasn't until TBC launch. So when TBC was launching, it was 2007. Uh, I had a job and I had my own money and I bought a gaming computer. It was a really bad one, but I could play the game. And uh, yeah, eventually I got into Warcraft movies um oh, I, was, yeah. I was making pvp videos for years i knew everybody on on there i became friends with like neil yo uh unmercy and i played with them on like tychondrius and illidan and blackrock and kill Jaden. and uh, i got involved in the pvp community and i was always flirting with gladiator i never did get gladiator uh the one time i did get high enough gladiator uh, I ended up deleting the team a few weeks before the season ended because I didn't know the season was ending. Oh, and no. yeah, it's a very sad story, right? But uh, so eventually I'm, I'm playing while well, I'm having fun. I play in Wrath. One of my biggest PvP videos was in Wrath. And then uh, Kata comes out. And Azeroth is destroyed. Uh, there's undead hunters, orc mages. <laughs> Torin paladins and i'm like this is not world of warcraft anymore what the hell is a worgen and a goblin doing on my team i also <laughs> didn't like when i mouse over people it would put the like highlight line around their body i didn't like that i don't like in that in, yeah in retail yeah. at all i don't like that highlight thing it takes me out of the game i also didn't like that everything was sparkly for a quest item or an herb it would just be freaking glowing like it was a pile of gold <laughs> and the whole game just didn't feel the same so i was like uh i can't play this anymore and yeah and i think this was before transmogs transmogs weren't even in when i quit so it same. wasn't a reason that i quit but i didn't like transmogs when they did come out but yeah every expansion since then i've gave the game a try and it just didn't work for me so but what ended up happening was a lot of my friends got really into the idea of Warlords of Draenor. I don't know why, but everyone thought War Warlords of Draenor was going to be like, wow, it's come back. It's going to feel good again. <laughs> All that dumb shit's going to be gone, or you can t toggle it off or whatever. Um, so I, I gave Warlords of Draenor a good college try. It was freaking garbage. <laughs> and uh, I got my girlfriend into the game at the time. She was really into uh, Wad as well. And... Uh, yeah, WAD sucked. And then I heard about uh, vanilla private servers. And uh, yep. I immediately uninstalled WAD and started playing vanilla private servers. I played on pretty much all of them. Uh, I only hit 60 on a few. Uh, I only ranked on a few. But some of the servers I was on the most were PvP servers like Retro WoW and Hen House. Retro WoW is especially my favorite because... Uh, I like I said earlier, my origin story heavily involves Warsong Gulch. I love the Gulch, mm. and I 
played level 60 Warsong Gulch on Retro WoW, solo queuing into just complete dogs on my team. It was never good, but I learned everything I know about the Gulch from like thousands of losses on Retro WoW. Like, I'm Dude, so, guy. You're like ready. A chicken dance. What the hell is that? You you're know, like, out, oh. you're like ready for level 25 Warsong Gulch because you did it all at level 26 back in the day. Yeah. I mean, not, I mean, yeah, that's true, but <laughs> I've also done t 10 times more worse on gold at 60 than that. But yeah, uh, I mean, I was keyboard turning back then for Christ's sake. <laughs> but, oh, uh, see, I never did that because I came from first person shooters, luckily. So oh, I changed good. that immediately when I first started. Well, my very started. first computer game was, well, like Neopets, but my very first video game on a computer was wow and i didn't know anything ah uh, okay I, and, I, and i played counter-strike on friends computers but like i never had my own computer to like really think about keybinds and optimization mm. and shit you know so my first or competitive game was quake 2 and that's what i was like that's what i learned all the like you know looking with the mouse instead of the golden eye old ways you know yeah yeah and oh i love golden eye oh i love gold too I mean, yeah College. i didn't even know starcraft was a computer game because it was on N64 when I was a kid. That's how oh, I got introduced into StarCraft on the oh, N64. Oh, yeah, they did put it out, dude. It I was forget. so hard to play. It was so hard to play. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I got into private servers, and I played private servers for years. And a buddy of mine, Tips Out, y'all know Tips Out, mm -hmm. he was uh, writing guides for Wowhead leading up to Classics launch. So this is, like, early 2019, right after... The beta, I guess, it, it was starting to ramp up and everyone's like, it's coming out in August. Like right when they announced the date is when they started writing guides on Wowhead. And I guess they were looking for a rogue writer and Tips Out recommended me to the site director, uh, Perculia at Wowhead. And then I started to write all the rogue guides and they didn't have someone for Shadow Priest. And like I said earlier, my very first character was a priest. So I'm very familiar with priests. So I wrote the Shadow Priest guides as well. And then I did that for... Uh, up until TBC, and then in, in TBC, well, in, well, I guess more like AQ, Nax, was when Wowhead's like, wow, our classic stuff's doing really big. We should probably get this organized and, like, make it a, a big part of our site because it's getting so much traffic. And then I just uh, was always bugging Perculia to do more work. And uh, eventually she's just like, why don't you just manage our classic stuff? And I was like, oh, okay. And I was able to, like, quit the day job and stuff, and now I just full-time Wowhead. I was in a raid with you when you had just got the job, like, and you were telling people in the raid about the job, but it was like a GDKP or something. Uh, oh, I have no idea. I God, do, I do yeah. GDKPs every week for I know, it was. Oh, if I could remember the dude's name, you would remember his... Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but, but yeah, I mean... Whatever. Yeah, when I got promoted, it was a really big deal. Uh, it was like huge for me. Like it's a life changer, right? I work from home now. I, I, it doesn't even feel like I'm working because I already am so plugged into this game. You know, it was huge for me too, because before you took over, I, I mean, I'd use Wowhead here and there, but the way I got the news for the, sh the show is I would go to Google and search the last two weeks news, a wow classic news, yeah. world of Warcraft news, blizzard. And I'd pull it from like, Kotaku and IGN and all these like writers that don't know the game and I hated yeah, it. Yeah, they're not plugged in, right? And then you took over and I'm just like, well, I guess I'm just gonna be uh Rock kind, of, covered, kind of sponsored by Wowhead, you know? And I, oh, yeah. and, I, and I think Wowhead all the time put the links in the show notes, you know, because you just we appreciate you that. Put it there and then you also write up, you know, and kind of summarize a lot of the different news things in your own words at the top which helped me you know cliff note it, it you yeah. know it, it's it's really nice so i've i've definitely enjoyed since you took over tremendously well i really appreciate that but yeah i mean that's part of the reason they wanted someone for a classic division because before i took over it was all the retail people were like so, like, something would happen in Classic, right? Like, Blizzard's like, hey, AQ40 is coming out on this date. Well, no one on the retail team cares. They all play retail. <laughs> so then it's like, yo, can anyone do a little post for the Classic thing? And no one's like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. 
everyone's just like, eh, eh fun <laughs> classic, you know? So, like, Perculia is running around trying to wrangle someone to do the dang classic article. And, you oh, know, hours God. have gone by and somebody else has already been tweeting about it for so long. Mm-hmm. And they, the news right. isn't even hot anymore before it finally goes up. So, and the, and the retail Wowhead team is great. Right. And Wowhead is amazing. But like it really helps when you have people that are like the point man for something. So if something Mm -hmm. happens in retail, we have a guy. His name is Squishy. He's fantastic. Anything happens in retail, everyone pings Squishy and Squishy does it himself or he assigns it to someone and it's taken care of. Whereas there wasn't a person like that for classic. So like everyone just kind of managed it as a group. And like, obviously, if there's not a point man for assigning it it's like it kind of falls through the cracks sometimes so i remember i talked to him when i did the brian birmingham interview and then he was like talk to rockman uh Mm -hmm. yeah yep so like so i'm the classic guy for wowhead squishy's the retail guy and now we have scenarius he's our diablo guy so we have someone now assigned to all of the different divisions at wowhead so it makes the things way 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 better and it's not like there's no scrambling you just message the person in charge, and they know. That's awesome. Yeah. So okay. So you kind of answered a lot of like the questions I I had here. So, um. So yeah, like, so the way you keep your your because you have the news out so fast is that just like does Blizzard actually like send it to you guys like yeah sometimes like actually. a press release and stuff like that. Yeah, sometimes, very, very rarely. It has to be something like super obscure that a developer feels is really important and they want kind of, they want us to like, uh, you know, megaphone it a little bit so that it gets traffic, right? So, I mean, the with Wowhead, it's like we've got all these blue trackers. Like Wowhead is like the number one source for blue posts anyway with the blue trackers on our site. But um, basically how I have the finger on the pulse, however, however you phrased it is, I just have been playing the game for so long. I, I basically every major guild in classic and TBC and wrath and, and, you know, in the future versions, I'm either been a part of those guilds or know people in that guild or know the GM, you know, I'm just like super, I mean, not to, it's not like I'm, you know, friends with all these people. It's just we're acquaintances, right? I, yeah, I'm acquaintances with all these people. Yeah, I'm connected, I guess. And because of so many years of being the number one news source, like the second something happens, and sometimes we even make news on our own, like with the data mining thing, right? But like, because we're number one at delivering the news first and in uh, as good as a state as I can get it to all, like... Obviously, if I want to be first on news, I could just post it. it, but it wouldn't be polished and like have extra value added to it. So like it's a, it's a fine line between adding as much context and value to a story and then publishing it as quickly as possible. So I'm like frantically typing, you know, <laughs> and sometimes I'll have a little typo or a grammatical error or whatever, and I go back and fix it. But, you know, I want to be first, but I also want it to be good. So, you know, I'm writing that line, but um, I, re- I, I respect that. Yeah, and by being first for so long, a lot of people know they can message me. So there's a few, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, wizards out there that, like, they can find stuff, too, in the data mining. And they'll, like, yo, they'll ping me. They'll be like, yo, Rockman, did you see this in the thing? And then I'll even credit them in, in like, a story if it's something uh, really big or whatever. And, like, like, a good example is, like, a store mount or whatever goes to EU before it goes to NA. All, all my buddies on EU that are in those EU guilds, they'll ping me like, yo, the freaking store just updated, dude. What the hell? And then, <laughs> and then like 30 minutes later, it comes to NA, but we'll already have the story out on Wowhead. So mm-hmm. like, you know, our competitors aren't as connected, you know, and they don't get pinged directly when something happens across the world. I even get notified of stuff in Taiwan now when, uh, mm-hmm. uh like the, the, Magic Rooster uh, and uh, a different mount got added to the shop in Taiwan, but it's not available in NA or EU. And that's because of the whole uh, Chinese player exodus from Chinese servers. But that's beside the point. But just be, <laughs> that's how I'm able to stay on top of so many things and get it out quickly is because so many people know I'm the dude 
and they just message me. So your working hours are <laughs> permanent. That's like uh, yeah. <laughs> that's like literally okay. old old school. You know, you know, old school press. You have you know, you have your contacts, and like that's how you get the inf- the information. So that's that's pretty cool. Well, I'm, thankfully, I'm salaried, so I don't have to like clock in and clock out or keep track of. <laughs> Oh, I got a ping at 3 a.m. from Taiwan or anything like that. (laughs) And, okay, uh, Oldly, you had a question about the data mining earlier. Do you want to get that in now? Uh, Sure. I just haven't looked at what it is. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Oh, wait. So a lot of people. (laughs) Oh, yeah, go ahead. You have have a. In general, what is data mining or what did we get? No, 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 no. no. What What did we get? What okay, so yeah, I'll explain. Oh, okay. I'll explain data mining, and then I'll explain what we got. So, well, I mean, we can. A lot of people are confused. We can about go this. through them piece by piece too, if you want to, after the interview, if you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. that's fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt the interview. No, you're fine. I just want to know the process. Yeah, yeah. So the process. So a lot of people think like we're hacking or something. Okay, and like yeah, Wowhead does have hackers. But they don't they are they're not the data miners. So basically the way this works is Blizzard, there's a thing called the CDN, and that's where you can see all the patches and all the branches of Blizzard's products. Okay. So anyone in the world, it is public information, you can see the branches. So there's a branch for Every PTR, there's a branch for Classic, there's a there's a branch for Cata, there's a branch for Retail, there's a branch for Diablo, Overwatch, Hearthstone, everything. And then you can see what the patch number is for those things, okay? Well, half of the branches are fully encrypted. They're not public, you can't see it. We can't data mine it, It's we, there's nothing there. But then the ones that we can, that you can download and play, the information is on your computer. So whether you like it or not, if you downloaded the recent PTR, you have Season of Discovery data on your computer. Everyone has that, that downloaded the PTR. What we do for data mining is we just open those files and look at them all. That's all we do. We can't play it. We're not hacking. (laughs) There's nothing there. It's just, and what it looks like, if you've ever been to wow.tools, I think wow.tools is, uh, they're like uh, offline now. But there's a bunch of variations of that where it's called a database reader. And if you can imagine an Excel spreadsheet where it's like spells, spells spells.database, okay? So the spells.database for patch 1.15, it lists every spell in the entire game, every spell that's ever existed. And then it says there's there's another column where it's like, it's going to be, it's going to say something crazy like, you know, uh, div x underscore rg and nobody knows what that means and it's just random numbers zeros and ones nobody knows what that is and then there's all these columns but then there's all of a sudden there's a column labeled something crazy like uh name underscore description underscore rxv7 you know whatever and nobody knows what the hell that is but then if you look at what the the information is in that column it'll be the spell descriptions it'll say you cast a bolt of fire that deals damage and applies a dot to your target. And then if you scroll all the way to the other side, you can see the name of the spell, it's fireball. And then it's like, okay, well now that I know that, I can deduce this is the column for the spell descriptions. Mm -hmm. This is the column for the spell names. This is the column for the spell icons, because I know what fireball icon looks like, and there it is. Mm -hmm. And once you deduce what all the columns are, what you do is you download last patches spell database, you download this patch of spell database and you compare the two and you have a program tell you what's changed between the two. And now I'll know something changed with fireball in wrath. And you'll, you'll see it's a bunch of numbers. You don't know what the hell it means, but you can deduce it has something to do with the spell travel time or the spell, the spell proc rate for ignite The effect the fireball changes to a new ignite one that doesn't, you know, um, ignite, uh, whatever the Ignite problem was and uh, Ignite munching. Ignite munching is now fixed and I could see that they did that in the database, right? And everything that I'm doing, anybody can do. It's not special. Anyone can do it. Well, yep. <laughs> But what, what, what Wowhead does is we are a, this is at the core of what we are. If you take away everything else, you fire all the employees. What is Wowhead? It's a database of spells and information. Yeah. So anytime a patch gets updated, 
we have to put all that information on our website. So, if, I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything, but you could probably Google, you could, or not Google, but you can probably search around Wowhead, you know, sniffing around trying to find the cheese, and you're going to find a lot of cheese for a season of Discovery that we didn't put in articles. But Ooh. no one's done that yet, but that's beside the point. <laughs> so data mining isn't super special. It's just using a program to compare different versions of patches to find what's changed. And then when I found what changed, I could try to figure, I could connect the dots of, well, this is a brand new spell or this is a brand new whatever and like figure it out. So with this whole fiasco with Season of Discovery, we didn't really, there's a lot that we didn't put in articles. Like I do know that how to obtain one rune. I know how to obtain one rune and, and probably a bunch of others because... So whenever an NPC gives you a quest reward, when you complete a quest, you don't know this, but in the game files, they're this casting an instant ID. speed. Well, no, it's not just an item ID. They're casting an instant cast spell to create the item into your bags. Oh. So, so there's a lot of spells associated with NPCs where it says create rune. And then it has the NPC's name. So like, I know where some of the runes might come from and what NPCs they are. So, like, stuff like that you can find in the data if you're, like, you know, a rat sniffing around trying to find cheese. You got to be a rat in here, okay? But that's that's all the data mining is. It's not crazy. The only crazy part is when our guy in Serbia has to literally hack to get the 3D models of everything and put them on our website. Or, mm. the, or, or our guy at Wowhead in Australia, and these are crazy time zones, mind you. We're working... Uh, sun up to sun down around the world at Wowhead, where we have a guy in Australia who has to take the new patch and send it all up to the cloud onto our website, you know, so that everyone can see all the new tool tips and spells. So it's the really elaborate and complicated stuff is like the models and putting the information on Wowhead. But the actual data mining, any Joe Schmo could do just by opening it and looking at it, you know? Yeah, because you've and had... Think, and thinking like a rat. Wow has been taking a lot of flack over the last few days about the whole the whole data mining, and I just keep looking at people and going, I mean, if they didn't do it, somebody else would. I mean, they, well, they're they just quicker. Well, like I said, any Joe Schmo can do it. And if any Joe Schmo can do it, someone will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And here's what's going to happen, okay? If someone finds something cool, they're going to put it on Reddit. They're going to put it on Twitter. They're going to make a YouTube video out of it. And then what happens is everyone's going to go look at that content. And at the end of the day, Wowhead is a business. I am a player of this game for since it came out, okay? I've been playing for, what, 18 years? I've been playing this game for 18 years. That's, that's more than half my life. I am a player first. But at the end of the day, Wowhead changed my life, and I work for Wowhead. So... We do care about the players. Like I said, there's things that we didn't put out there in the news because we don't want to ruin all the fun. But at the end of the day, if any Joe Schmo can open the spell database and see all this stuff, I can't go to my boss and say, yeah, we didn't want to post it because, oh, the players were going to be mad that we spoiled it. And it's <laughs> yep. like, oh, but there's there's millions of views on YouTube and Reddit and Twitter on all this stuff that you just chose not to put as an article. How am I going to explain that to my boss? At the end of the day, we gotta, I, we all get paid very well. We don't want to just leave money on the table. So we're a business. We have to do it. And it's like, and, it, and, and this is just for the record for y'all, the, the traffic on our stuff is insane. People are clicking like this on like crazy. So yeah, everyone's complaining that we data mined it, but everyone and their mother is opening the article and sharing it to all their friends. And the article is doing crazy traffic. So it's like, do y'all are y'all really mad? Because everyone's looking at it. I think it's, it's a like, vocal minority, really. If yeah, I'm of course. guessing. And it's like with tier lists. We all hate tier lists. Us oh, wow had hate tier lists too. We hate tier lists. And everyone says they hate it, but everyone opens it and talks about it and shares it with their friends. It gets crazy engagement and traffic. I it's know. Like, Tier lists are so worthless, but they're always popular. Even when I was doing Overwatch stuff. Oh, team yeah. Team tier but lists you know and everything and, and character tier lists. And we were always wrong, but people loved it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the I think the biggest thing people love about games is trying to speculate about 
what the next meta is going to be. Yeah, it's definitely fun. Yep. And like, I just played Warcraft Rumble. Uh, you, you're, you, you're a damn fool if you didn't think I googled mini tier list. <laughs> because, <laughs> because when you get a mini, you had to choose one of two. Man, I, know. I don't want to choose a shitty one and put all this experience in it if it sucks. So of course right. I'm googling best minis in in uh, Warcraft Rumble. Of course I am. Well, and just you know, so recently Mel and I have been playing Baldur's Gate three, and we loved it. But when we started, when we started it, we were looking up everything. We were looking up like how to build our 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 people. We were struggling with a uh, uh, with a you know a problem. For a very short time and then looking up how to do it. And then we stopped ourselves and said, this is a single player game. Let's just mess around with it. And I think that's yeah. something you could do in a single player game. In an MMO, I feel like a dick if I don't know as much mm -hmm. inf information as I can to make the raid go mm -hmm. better for everybody else type of deal. You know, it's a different mentality. So I'm always going to keep up. I might change things a little bit, but I'm going to keep up with the people that really push finding out new new things you know and it, like that's just kind of the way it a is single player game right there's lots of us where we could choose to not look up that information well and that's what we do now but we in choose BG3. to look up that information well no we, we just, yeah we stopped though like we stopped pretty early we're like okay did y'all see maybe uh, Mel that still youtube looks documentary up, it's Which? called no. it's rude to suck at warcraft <laughs> oh, that? I heard I heard about that at no. the very least. Oh, it's so good. I highly recommend it. It's like it's like an hour and a half long. It's a full movie. But it's oh about oh, it's about the it. like psychology. Like it's exactly what you just described, Bob, where it's like you feel like a dick if you don't know everything and try to do your best. It's called Why It's Rude to Suck at Warcraft by Folding Ideas on YouTube. It came out at the end of it's been a year now. It's a fantastic documentary, and Wowhead is a part of it. Uh, apparently, That's it's cool. called Paratext, when uh, someone makes a supplemental guide to a game to explain it. But I remember when I was a kid, and I would buy like a PS2 or N64 game, I would go and get the little game manual that had all mm -hmm. the explanations of everything, and I would buy them together. I would yeah. buy the game and the, the... Was it Brody Games or something like that? They made those big thick manuals for games i don't think it's a problem if you, I are, I remember if you those. Be, yeah if you want to be good at a game you're gonna have to look stuff up right because just the way the world works what are you gonna spend fifty thousand hours experimenting before you figure out what's good or right. you're just gonna look it up in five minutes and, <laughs> and, and have move on with your life and honestly if you didn't do that then somebody's just going to have to explain it to you when yeah. you're when you're doing it, you know, like if you're playing WoW as a single player game, it's okay to discover and everything. But I don't know. I feel like I'd rather be prepared. Like that's why this whole hack thing came out right. I got hacked right as ICC came out, and I'm back. You know, a week and a half later, with you know, had to reload every every single thing, and I'm sitting here just going. Oh my God, I feel so bad that I'm behind on this. I'm behind on that. You know, like when normally I'm one of the ones that are helping the raid, you know, with knowledge. And instead I'm just dying to something I should have known about, you know, and it's horrible. Like I hate that. Yeah. I mean, in, especially in a raid setting, it really sucks to be the guy that fucks up. I, I got, we got a couple of those in our guild. It's the same dudes every week. <laughs> Oh, man. Doesn't everybody? Everybody's yeah. got that guy. All right. Well, unless anybody has any more questions, I'm going to move us on to the news. Is everybody good? Or anybody want to ask anything else? Did I explain data mining good only? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not crazy. Only is I'm doing data it right now. Right now. <laughs> You're doing it right now. There you go. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> the whole people getting mad at Wowhead, like, it's. Okay, let's just oh, let's just let's say hypothetically. Let's say Blizzard didn't put SOD on a PTR, and it and nobody knew anything, and it comes out on November thirtieth. Okay. You really think you're going to be the first guy to find the level twenty five rune? One hundred percent no. On of course December first. There's going to be a guy. 
There's going to be a guy with a case of energy drinks. Uh huh. Uh huh. And what like, do you mean a guy? There's going to be twenty and probably guys. An Adderall prescription. Uh-huh. And he's going to crank the game, not sleep, and he's going to find everything before you. Yep. And he's going to make a YouTube video about it. And it's going to get spoiled for everyone else. So yeah. I don't know what people's idea was of what it's going to go like, but I just described it for you. Some yeah. guy is going to no life the game way harder than you, and he's going to find everything before you do. I don't yeah. know. If- yep. Or it's going to be some guy who's not even a creator. But, you know, there's a lot of guys that figure start or girls that, that you know, yeah, yeah. I, that I, find I, a I lot of stuff. Guy, I just mean person. Yeah. Guy, guys they send it. Term. Yeah, so they but they but they'll often send it to their favorite content creator. So a lot yeah. of content creators that get a lot of stuff from their community, and these guys find it out out for them, you know. So yeah. or they put it on Reddit for the karma. Yep. But you're not gonna listen. Per, person mad at Wowhead for data mining, you're not finding shit. So <laughs> right <laughs> over it. <laughs> and like the other thing is is with the Wowhead data mining. Can I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open your guys' mind to something. In the data, I couldn't find the new Black Fathom Deep items, right? Like Fathom Blade, the new two-handed blue sword that shoots water out of it. I couldn't oh, yeah. find Weaving it. Weaving Tunic wasn't there? The Clam Weaving Tunic is not in the data. Huh. What? So, okay, exactly. What? <laughs> Let me open all of your minds to something, especially the people listening right now that are pissed at Wowhead over the data mining. Have you ever thought that Blizzard knew we were going to data mine it? 100%. And have you ever thought that Blizzard put the PTR up and encrypted a bunch of stuff, but left some things unencrypted on purpose to feel out the community's reaction to it? Because these new Warsong Gulch helmets are pretty radical. It's basically TBC resilience in vanilla, right? Reduced crit chance and damage taken by 5%. That is a significant... (laughs) change to vanilla that's resilience in vanilla do you think maybe blizzard allowed purposefully didn't encrypt those items so that we would data mine it and make an article about it and have everyone talking about it so blizzard could see if people like the idea of resilience in vanilla or not oh 100 definitely blizzard is stupid and that these leaks come out of nowhere and they don't know how to encrypt their data you guys blizzard knows what they're doing they're not like they're not giving Wowhead anything that they didn't care if it came out, right? right. Like they also put things in Blizzard. there, and yeah. The day the PTR updated, literally the second the PTR updated, I have a little thing that pings me when a CDN gets updated. I messaged Blizzard within one second of the CDN being updated, like, "Yo, is this PTR up? What's going on here?" And I got the green light. So I don't know what anyone thinks about. And it also, come on, let's be real here. Wowhead, at the end of the day, it's just a website. You really think a website is going to ruin Blizzard's, like, multi-million dollar season that they're about to launch? Like, you're insane. Right, right. A one website's going to tear down Season of Discovery. Yep, it's all your That's fault. That's not how it works. Yeah. If it's not super successful, we can blame Rockman, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, Probably. Uh, me data mining it ruined it, you're right. Yeah, just totally killed it. Horrible. All right, well, let's move on to Fort Nomagon. All right, and we're back with Yip, and we're doing Raid Prog. It's been a couple weeks. We were off for BlizzCon, uh, and the guild took kind of a break, too. But now we are back, and Yip is here to tell us all about our different prog in Raid. And I don't want to give spoilers, but... uh, Looks like weekends ahead at the moment. Nah, <laughs> not by my definition, but I agree. <laughs> but maybe by, by a definition, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, we we're already struggling with the roster boss, like without BlizzCon and Halloween. So we took Halloween week off. Uh, call it early. That was, I think that was good. I think we all could have used like a pretty mm-hmm. early week off. Come back refreshed, hit everything new. But anytime you take a break you come back kind of <laughs> kind of off what everyone, is this raid exactly what are we doing? everyone forgets <laughs> the mechanics you kind of have to reprog some of what you're doing and then again uh we're hitting the roster boss we've been unable to field a full raid 
uh, in both raids this week, which is pretty new. So on Tuesday, we got stuck on Saurfang. <laughs> oh we my got God. stuck on oh. we got stuck on Saurfang with 24 players, and we basically were like one DPS off killing him multiple well, times, where it was like we at the 25, we would have got it down on Tuesday, and we <laughs> we didn't. He was alive going into thursday right well you like, didn't even talk about the monday raid where we kind of like had oh true true okay people okay. from so we both had a sides. monday raid yeah. we had a monday raid that was a no, joint raid that well, we only had like 21 22 people and it went shockingly well like we did we did rot face heroic which was really cool we did margar heroic with like 21 people <laughs> so right. and it was like it was nice part, like there were some people from the like it was mostly i think weekday right but there were some people from weekend yeah, we right there from weekend yeah yeah so um yeah i mean it was just a it was a good raid it was a solid raid it made me think like wow we're actually gonna crush it this week probably because like if that's how monday raid went <laughs> tuesday raid we're gonna crush it and then we got stuck on blood thing and uh, mel and i uh actually first time ever slept through a raid I blame yeah, we all, uh, we all, BlizzCon we all were and Southwest. We, we looked up if there were any, uh, you know, plane mishaps that ha might have happened in the air. We we had no idea. You guys just went MIA when well, you're supposed to be back. Okay, so we did have... We, we got back. Yeah. We got delayed. So we got delayed. We were supposed to come back on Sunday and then have, like, Monday was supposed to be, like, our recovery day, right? And then raid Monday night, and then I start back to work on Tuesday. So we sat at the airport for, like, four hours on Sunday and they kept and they delaying like, our flight. And then all of yeah. a sudden it was like, see front desk. Cause it's like, oh, yeah, it was like, fuck. see attendant. What does that mean? I was like, well, that's not good. I, go, I don't think we're getting out of here, Bob. And so I go to the front desk and they're like, so we can get you to Denver, but you can't get home from Denver. I was like, <laughs> that's great. Can you tell me what other options I have? And they were like, so there isn't really any other options. Um, so you can either stay here or you can fly to Denver in a couple hours and stay there. And I was like, okay, no, I'll just stay here. And then they were like, okay, what, hell would, what hotel would you like to stay at? This one or this one? And, and they were like these two random names of hotels that I've literally never heard of. And I was like, I don't know, which one's a better hotel? And he was like, I don't know, I've never heard of them. And I was like, this does not sound promising. Like, <laughs> sounds very sketchy. So I looked him up and then we stayed at a hotel and then we didn't. And it was then actually we were a leaving. really cool hotel. Like it was, it was, really nice. yeah. it, was uh, it was, it was, it um, was family owned. Um, and like the family was really into making those, those like ships in a bottle. They had these huge bottles with these intricate ships made. It was really actually really neat. Like I'd never seen anything cool. like it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like the, that didn't the innkeeper me, comes but... out with a top hat like oh welcome right to my and hotel. bobby says family owned like it's one they were like family owned and there's like 17 of them across california right so well, let's say that like a big family i don't yeah, yeah well I mean, yeah well at some point like i'm pretty sure hilton is a family as well too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? everything starts family owned by one family <laughs> um but yeah so then we leave and we leave it like Seven well, okay, we, we get back layover. to the hotel at 10. Yeah. Then we have to, like, wind down and go to sleep. We get to sleep by, like, midnight, and then we have to get up at 5 again. And we've already only had, like, three to five hours of sleep every night at BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. So we're dying. Every part of our body hurts. But we get back here, and then we just, like, we probably should have taken a nap. Well, we have a layover. We have a layover, right? So we actually don't get home until, like, 3 p.m., right? So we get back at like 3 p.m. We like sit down on the couch, we like turn on a TV show and like our whole bodies are just like dead inside. Right. We're like, OK, we've got a rate at 930. We're good. And we just like lay down and then we both fall asleep. And then it's like, I don't know. Yeah. And we're like, so, OK, so you oh. woke up at midnight. I woke up at 3 a.m. Like one of those like things where you wake up and be like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, you Dude. know something was wrong. Like this was yeah. not a planned uh, unconsciousness. Like yeah, this. you know that like wake <laughs> up and that like like anxiety that you feel yeah. right where you're like, you're like oh my god, oh my god, what did I miss? What did I like? Yeah. And at first, I just thought like, 
oh, it's midnight. Like, I didn't miss work. I just took a nap. And I was like, oh, okay. I like, looked at my phone. And I was like, fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh. And then mm. I was like, well, it's too late now. It's midnight. They're already done. Now these are badges, to too. Ugh. So yeah, I really wanted to go. Yeah, we got a lot. We did get a lot of badges. I mean, it okay. was kind of a blessing in disguise that you weren't there because it made us very comfortable just banging things out on normal when, mm-hmm. like, we knew it would be too hard and said if you guys were there it would have been like we would have had 24 pretty good yeah, yeah. We, we got 24 like maybe we should be trying our thing on her egg and right then we, then we uh recreate tuesday so on tuesday missing i wait i say we were missing one person but it was like we were missing one person and then we had like an alt in the raid as well too so it was right. sort and of like missing. didn't have a hunter two. or a shadow priest yeah we didn't have a hunter or a shadow Which priest was, so huge. Replenish was kind of hecked up um unfortunately but uh yeah i mean there's a little blessing in disguise because while we did get stuck on sarfang for a very long time all of tuesday heroic sarfang yep. <laughs> and then we were able to kill it on thursday and we made it reasonably far on thursday imagine how far we're gonna get when we actually kill sarfang <laughs> like it made me realize how much time mm-hmm. we have in there now if we actually can get the the full roster going and, and make sure we kill the bosses we've already frogged. It was then so frustrating though, because like I had to do wound poison, and like that's one of the fights where the combat rogue actually shines. Like it is one of the top top damage. And I'm just sitting there like, all right, I have to do this because we don't have a hunter. And it was just uh oh, it was just rough. And then we ha- we do have the number three mage uh, in all of WoW, I guess, in Ice Crown Citadel, LZ, and he was <laughs> bitching about his uh, replenishment too from Kim. So yeah. hey, he he wants his replenishment. <laughs> I more. mean, he does. He, he obviously d de- de- deserves it. Shout out to LZ, man. Okay, you guys really good. on Warcraft logs. It shows that we did. That we did kill it on Tuesday. That we had okay, six I we wipes. Have, I, think I thought we, we killed it at the very end. end yeah. Of Tuesday, yeah, we had six wipes, correct. and then we yep, killed we it. We went to Rot Face, and then we, and wiped we went on to Rot, rot face. face, and then, and then we the Scar was like, "Okay, uh, we're just gonna call it night. now." <laughs> yeah, we wiped on Rot Face just because, like, I hate to put it this way, but people can't skate by in ICC not knowing the mechanics. Especially when you're moving on to heroic on some fights, it, you can't just like, oh, well, we'll outgear it soon. I'll still never have to learn it. You'll just die. And it's mm-hmm. obvious. And it's just, it becomes clear that you don't really know what's going on. And I think like it's, it's just different than like TOGC or even Olduar was hard, but like how many mechanics did a DPS really need to know on like heroic Mimiron? Some of them, but for the most part, it's like stack on hard scare, move over here, run across the fight. You're getting told live. Yeah, the hardest part of Mimiron was just just knowing what you should attack. Like, yeah, yeah, like what you should attack. And it's getting told live. Whereas, like, some of these fights, you need to know going in or you're going to die. If you don't know how the spore mechanic works and you just don't get your spores on Fester Gut, you're going to die in the pungent. And it's just all these things. And even if you know. Harskar held our hands a lot more in Old War. Because a lot of the mechanics were the same across a bunch of different people, right? So, yeah, like, yeah. it was, like, stack here, do this, right? So, like, you could just listen and, like, move with what was happening, right? Whereas in ICC, I feel like there's a lot more mechanics that affect different groups of people differently. And so you can't really call out, like, a raid-wide, like, everybody do this, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just not... and. Well, we and, need to use all of our cooldowns like at certain times normally where right. in the past it's been let's use a sack just because like we have to like oh <laughs> people are taking damage let's use a sack <laughs> like now it's like they're a lot of the bosses they're pre-planned we can't i can't afford to sack during people's mess up i have right. to sack at this time so and even um, if you know the fights too it's not just something where you could phone in because Tuesday night, I was still pretty mentally just drained and fucked up. Like, we did a podcast prior to it, and I was fucking up, and I know what I was supposed to do on different stuff, but I was just fucking up. Like, just straight up. And it was because I was just like, what? You know, it was just rough. Mm -hmm. 
It's overwhelming. And we're using ridiculous weak aura packs that crowd our screen with all sorts all of information. Kind of information. It, yep. it, it, I don't think it I don't think it helps that much. If there's too many bells and whistles, you don't know which ones to look at. That's a, I know. I think that's a, a problem. You just tune into, it all but. out. And you're just like um come Thursday though. Thursday we we you know we were back in action. Thursday. Yeah. Um you know, we killed heroic rot face. We put a couple attempts into heroic fester gut. Uh, if I recall, Mm-mm. that might have actually just been yesterday. No, nope, never mind. That was yeah. that was yesterday. Yeah, that was <laughs> oh, two raids. Yeah, that was Listen, weekend. I raid six days a week. <laughs> yeah, you're nuts. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. I got the logs up. I'll keep you honest here. Okay, so I think yeah, I think we did give up on Fester Gal because we wanted to spend time on Heroic Blood Queen. Um, yeah. We had done some Heroic Blood Queen in weekend raid. We might have already told you about, and it went surprisingly well we were like this felt killable if we had decided to spend more time on it that was when we didn't have hard scare i think too so like we we're like we can tough we can definitely get this in weekday um <laughs> it ended up being well let's we'll go we'll go boss by boss before we get there um so we kill fester get we kill heroic rot mm-hmm. face blood council i have no hope for us this is <laughs> the sad state we are in when our raids cannot get through normal blood council, it's uh, definitely yeah. the one that I most think of when I think like everyone needs to learn the mechanics because it, I mean, we need so to have everybody to white people watch a few different vids, me I, included, because I'm still yeah, just like not completely comfortable on heroic. It's so well, yeah, and, on heroic. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, we're not even we didn't doing even heroic. try heroic, though. yeah, so, yeah. like. To, for for us, it really comes down to like we and I, I've been sort of like guilting the raid a little bit. It's like we're not even going to try heroic until you guys can learn the mechanics. <laughs> like we can't be dying to this and then even think about doing heroic right. yet. So um, that's yeah, sort of we blood still council, have uh, people cleaving on the one boss with the orbs, you know, like, yeah, yeah. It's just like, come on, guys. And stuff. So like people just have to be careful because it can wipe the raid. You take a, you take enough orbs, the tank dies and, and it can turn into a wipe really, really easily on heroic. Probably almost definitely uh, will just turn into a wipe. Um, but I mean, obviously, we're not wiping like a thousand times in a row and our DPS. Yeah, is we sort wiped of like, twice. Yeah, like, but it's. <laughs> you know we and we had a week off it. we had a week off i get it you have a week mm-hmm. off you forget the mechanics so it is what it is but we just have to clean up i think what we're <laughs> doing in there um and it just eats into our prog time when we're when we're wiping on stuff on normal that we have already right. killed we're just it's eating into prog time so we make it to blood queen and um i think we had the we had, we had the quest for the blood uh, area and we wiped twice on normal blood council where you have to do everything in 30 minutes so didn't get the quest done <laughs> um <laughs> and then gosh. blood queen was a much bigger struggle than i was expecting um it only took like a couple of deaths or even like one death for us to not make the berserk timer i was surprised mm-hmm. we had a, we had so many close ones but right. I, I thought we were going to like overshoot the berserk timer relatively easily in weekday um but yeah i was i was surprised that it was actually very difficult it was very close the heal we got pretty good at making the healing not really a big problem um i think some of what we just need to do is make sure our cooldowns are like being used properly we use cosmo file sheet and um it's pretty easy to lay out like who's going to shadow aura mastery for every pack so like the link up we shadow aura mastery or we sack every single one of them and i think like it's just sort of hard to do that (laughs) it's just sort of hard to coordinate that where every single one is always done properly and then it's just like a timing thing right like if you're just a little bit late or you're just a little bit early like like not worth it or you like panicked and hit your uh cool down at another time you know like yeah. it, it is a it is a who thing i do it sometimes yet? i do it he always well, do it it's just is what it is you see people who are about to like who might die from something and right. you're like i'm gonna hit a cool down and then there's also the selfish thing yep you're gonna be mad at me <laughs> i only tried it yeah. once uh uh-huh. but yeah i remember the time i died immediately mm, not particularly what'd you do the though time uh, time. The time I died immediately on poll was when chat oh, yeah, yeah. chat yeah. was like Bob, you could totally take the first the first bite. You just just <laughs> go tricks. 
yeah, that didn't work at all. <laughs> I just took That's aggro funny. and died immediately, and I was like, all yeah, right. Yeah, that, that will happen. That, that but, I happen. mean, people are trying to fight for that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm glad I didn't because here on weekend, I didn't even – I fucked up the bite twice and couldn't even like just just like griefed our raid for for two kills because I couldn't get the bite Is it right. Always a melee that gets bitten first. No, it's no, the it's just a highest threat. threat. Yeah, so usually it'll be like a feral uh, or a hunter. The highest threat. Um, Got it. And like a com a combat rogue can do it, but. You're, once you get into get blade, bitten? or once you get into <laughs> well, killing spree, you're kind of fucked. Higher. So you had like. If you like waited for killing spree, didn't tricks, you know, and, like maybe you could do it, but it's not, yeah. it's not worth it. Chat was like, all right, you, well you got it this time. And I was like, dude, I'm not griefing the raid. Well, like I'll try it maybe sometime we in a couple of weeks. Have it, though. Our <laughs> sheet, we have a sheet that shows. I know, but every it. DPS wants it. You know what I mean? Why? Just it doesn't count it's for big your numbers. I know, but it just looks cool. <laughs> it looks cool. <laughs> Um, you guys get out of here. Okay, this is funny. Someone said that their ret tried to get the first bite with righteous fury. Oh my! That's God. really cool. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, like people try to do it because they because they they just want to have the clout in the raid. It doesn't matter if it's on yeah, Warcraft actually, logs, you know. Another comment here: It sucks you have to bite someone twice. It's true. It's actually better to not be on the bite order whatsoever for yeah. actual parsing yeah for parses yeah yep. so you don't have to go bite anybody but uh either way i mean blood the the it's the same as normal honestly like it's basically the same as normal just a ton of yeah. damage like we know what to do it's just we're hitting that berserk timer shockingly quick and i could be wrong but maybe we still had like a, a weird person there maybe we didn't we, In my did. heart, we had one yeah. um we had chain crits still there chain crits right? yeah. yeah yeah um so yeah, we were definitely weren't at our like max DPS or anything like that. But that I would I thought we would be way over the line, and it, we actually talked about it where um, our warlock said something about like swapping to uh, to like do more damage, like getting a bite at an earlier moment, or I think he wasn't getting bitten at all, and he wanted to for execute. And I was like, well, we don't need to rearrange it to optimize DPS tonight because like if everybody lives it'll die on time. And when everybody lived, it did die on time, but it was like 10 seconds away from berserking. Oh, yeah. still. I was very surprised at how close the kill was um, with everything still going right. So pretty, yeah, what pretty is the berserk timer? Fight, I don't know the exact. Is it like five and a half like five, minutes? It probably is like five and a half minutes. I, like that. And I do think we were actually at 24 people too, right? Not on. I thought we were good on, on Thursday. No, on Thursday, I think Did we, we had twenty five. Okay. Yeah, I think we had yeah. twenty four plus chain crits. Um, because every wipe we had, it was like five twenty six, five thirty six, five thirty nine, and then our kill was five eighteen. Nice. Yeah. So it might be like I don't know five. If it's if we're wiping at five twenty six, then it must be earlier than that. Yeah, it must be um, like yeah. Five twenty. Five minutes and fifteen um, seconds. Either way, way, way tighter than uh we thought it was going to be. And um but we did get it down, which is good. And that tier is really important because it's heroic tier and putricide feels pretty far off. Cindergosa is a little far off. Like we're gonna have a lot more gear probably before it dies. So uh Blood Queen and Sorrowfang are like our main tier getters. So getting them down on heroic ASAP is like did we even try Preacher's Eye or was that Ted Man? I think we that was did Ted Man. Man and it's yeah, it's just like not. I think I think 20 I could be wrong. I think 25 some of the mechanics are easier to manage than on 10 Man. Like I think there's still just one plague that comes out on 25 and you can just like battle res it or something but when in 10 man you just don't have the res you don't have the soul stones for it so i'm not exactly sure um it was pretty uh, funny just, in the 10 man when i was like guys i got the vanish off <laughs> oh yeah, like, yeah yeah like, yeah but on dude heroic, you don't get no. stunned on heroic bob oh okay i didn't get the vanish <laughs> off yeah, that was pretty funny <laughs> you're so excited but we're, we're so all excited. like we're all also attacking you're like yeah, guys i'm attacking still <laughs> I, um, from my view i couldn't see behind me i couldn't see what you guys were doing so i just thought you were stunned i was like getting all the damage i can <laughs> yeah um then oh, velithria man. honestly like velithria is pretty easy now that the healers i figured out what to do and how to do it yeah you guys are um, awesome 
they basically had to. Though. I remember week one just telling healers like healers, this you just have to learn it. <laughs> it's like tell us why your stacks are dropping because like there's there's it's just how the fight is. Out. Like yeah, and everyone did. Everyone figured it out very quickly. Uh, everyone's doing a good job. Um, I take zero credit for this because I stand outside and shield people. But yeah, even even in for my sloppy, fellow healers. even in our sloppy pulls where people are dying up top and we're using battle res. And I think even, a, I think Stoof died. Stoof this, died. Stoof like, died. Who normally is like, like mega heals. 24 stack yeah. or something. Um, like maybe even 30 stacks. Like, is that yeah. like the and, first and time she's died shot. on that? Yeah. Well, like on an actual kill. Yes. Yep. Oh, definitely. On yeah. Yeah. yeah on sure. a kill. Yes. Um, she, yeah, she always does like super mega uh, healing. So that was mm -hmm. scary, but we still one shot it. And it was the end of the mm -hmm. night, right? Or no, it wasn't the end of the night. We no, needed, we, went to uh, we needed to move to Syndagosa. So it, it's like, we can't get stuck on Valithria. Right? We've already wasted so much time. Um, it was very like, we were very hesitant on like people like calling a wipe too when Stoof died. People were I like, know, because it's wipe? like, how Stoof are we going to do it <laughs> if Stoof's dead? We got it. We got it. Um, but yeah, we did get it. Uh, and then, unfortunately, Cindergosa happened. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. Um, but we did wipe on Cindergosa a couple of times, and I think that brought us to nice. the end of the night. Um, it's just hard. It's just there's mechanics, and everyone has to do them right. People are, like, dying to, like, too many melee stacks. People are dying to, you know, a tomb placement. Um, this was also, the, though, the first time we tried Cindergosa in 25 men on the opposite side, right? We did that on mm. Thursday. Yeah, I think. which was awesome. Um, which, which is good. I think last time I said the ice block didn't block me from healing you, but I think think i was proven wrong this week so i think it yeah, does i think it because does. the ice block was on the other side now and for some reason it like impeded my healing more there was like certain things i could use but most of the things i couldn't heal you so. it's got to be a line of sight. So i think it can some of your spells might work not with line of sight perhaps. yeah and it's like, as long as it's in range that might be what it is um but yeah i mean yeah, it was good. We wiped a couple of times, but again, it was like a new way we're doing it. But it definitely we need to clean up phase three in order to get on heroic. Basically, phase three still kind of feels like everyone is running around a little bit with like their heads cut off. Like uh, our damage on the boss is like our, our I think our uptime is is pretty low. And it's I don't really exactly have the judge. answers because it is. I don't I don't really know. So I don't do that part. <laughs> yeah. So, OK, so for the like, I don't know. I know ranged has like a bitch of a time with like their different 30 second like lockouts and stuff, but as for the melee, the, what you want to do is, and I'm not good at it yet, but I'm trying, but what you, but what you want to do is you want to go to drop your stacks of the new debuff, the purple one. Um, you want to drop that by at least three, but you want to run to the ice block with only two or three seconds before it's going to stack again. And then you only have to stand there for a fraction of a yep. second. If you do it right. The problem is, is like, at least for me with the Druid, it's a real big bitch because there's a lot going on in like your rotation. So I'm just like, I just have to learn like, okay, I just have to like not get the rest of this rotation and just go. You know, like I'm sitting there trying to like stay just for one half second to get a bleed off. So it's going while I run back. But then I get over there and then I just got a new stack and I'm like, OK, well, I might as well stand here because I have four now. So I might as well stand here for the full seven seconds. And it just sucks. So, so how does it? It's just go? a practice thing. I mean, it's literally just a practice thing. We just have it's to just practice. Like, it's a Vezix fight, though, where it takes five minutes to get to the part you need yeah. to practice. Mm -hmm. Right. Just like, like, oh, we wiped is on it, the Animus again. Is the again. second buff a timed buff? Is it like a timed buff that just like... Yeah, every, yes. all of it? it is timed. Yes, yeah. where the other stack. one is like a... You could... Sometimes, like, I don't even have to, like, stop attacking. Sometimes I do. You know, yeah. but like... I don't know. Like, the, the one that we get, like, the, the new casters one. get throughout the... Oh, throughout like, it, yeah. Throughout it, that one stacks every time you press Cats. a button. 
Well, yeah, not every time you cast. press a button, it's every time the yeah, every time cast. cast. Out. It has a chance to. Well, okay, for no, melee. No. I, I, okay, for no, melee, no, no, no. it has a chance. Melee doesn't casters. get this one. We're talking about for casters. casters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Melee. melee. Get you get it every time, but not. You don't always have the buff the whole time. That's the why it's different for casters. So they don't always have the unchained magic. But when they do have it, it stacks up every time. So they do a couple. They do a couple spells, then they have to let it drop, and then she reapplies mm. it to certain people in the raid. Um, I swear and then to God, in I have heroic, it. you explode when it drops. I think, unless I'm crazy, Shut or I think it, I think you have to run away you from everybody. You do an AOE. You do an AOE. Yeah, yeah, and you you have when to it like drops. I, I, or there's a different debuff. I am not a hundred percent. I think it's when it drops though. So you have to like run away from everyone and then drop it and come back. Yeah, hey guys, so, leave that in the comments below. Let us know. Yeah, I'm quite, I'm, I think it's what it is. So it is uh, a little bit more difficult, but other than that, like on heroic, it's not that much crazier. We did some 10 man attempts on heroic Syndragosa and it's doable. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's just doable. We just got to get better at phase three and, by the end, time you get to Cindergosa, like you're tired. <laughs> you're right. done. You're done. Tonight we got to Cindergosa. Oh, well, for, so for weekend, we're so understaffed. Weekend is in a is really rough shape so right now. We are we're like pulling people from the weeds and four K gear score to just fill out a little oh bit. We pulled um, classic go and I had to pull him kicking and screaming. He's like, bro. I'm literally going to be on the bottom of the damage chart every time. Like it's not even worth it having. I was like, we just need a, we just it. need a body. And he was like, all right, final come. Like and he just, yeah. he's so embarrassed by it because I mean, he's in like a 99 booby parser and he's just coming in to help yeah. us. A 99 boomer par <laughs> booming, uh, boom. Pimkin <laughs> Parser, but uh, mm. didn't bring any battle res mats, so that's the real. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It's okay. I mean, he, that, was I mean me. he, that was me and all of TVC. Was not he didn't even a, have. He, I mean, he did like he came just to help, and he didn't even have flash. And like I was, I know, I was like, know, somebody know, give him a flash. Yeah, we definitely did summon him right away, dude. Like, I felt boss, so. I felt bad for him, but you know he. Yeah, that was great. Those it help. helped. Those us, help. Yeah, we, I mean, um, it's better than nothing, right? Yeah, and we were able to get through, like, obviously not everything. Um, but I think we did, like, okay, we did Heroic Morgar. We did um, Heroic Rot Face. We did Heroic Valithria. So we're hitting these ones that are, like, the easier Heroics, but we're still getting them down, and we're bringing, like, 22 people. And then if we are full, it's, like... 21 people and three of them are nobody like they're like 4.5k gear score and <laughs> it's like they're dying so, to mechanics right away because they just can't they don't have enough hp so yeah, on weekend little... we tried a couple was it fester gut the one with the like tan yeah we did some fester gut attempts yeah. and what are we, we doing wrong the there nothing we just don't have the dps to kill it okay is and that that, it? that was mainly a uh yeah, that was mainly a DPS issue is that we're going to hit the Berserk timer on it. Um, there are a couple like other issues, I think, people that, that people need to clean up. Uh, people are getting hit by like the Malibu goo that comes out on Heroic and just like dying to stupid stuff. But that's just like we'll clean up dying to stupid stuff. But our Berserk timing was just <laughs> very, very off still on weekend. But I think with like the full roster, or a full roster of people who are like competently geared, um we're a little bit closer to that i think in weekday we probably can kill it next week if we choose to do that i think we'll have no problem doing that um if we want to put some time into it um but again like we have to manage like what we're what's most what important we and yeah. fester gut was like i knew fester gut wouldn't die but at the same time half of weekday raiders are in weekend so doing a little bit of heroic fester gut is going to help our weekday prog as well too so it's sort of like you get a little extra learning in yeah we're gonna wipe we can see like what the benchmark is for how like much damage we need to do so that we can like make sure that we don't um hit the berserk timer and we can like make sure our cooldowns are lined up well and properly so like we get some of the kinks out without really like hindering the weekend raid because we were doing so many normals we we're flying through the dungeon or flying through the raid um okay <laughs> someone didn't stop their logs because pit us on gun drag and direct their on keeper in here <laughs> but, <laughs> my bad okay. my bad <laughs> it's just funny <laughs> uh, um so we got to valithria and uh, i was pretty scared for a weekend because we didn't have uh jasmine this week 
So I think we were one healer less than normal. Um, and we only had 20 minutes or something like that. We had, yeah, our first poll was at 10, 10. We had 20 minutes uh, in order to get it down before the end of raid. And that's on, that was yesterday on Saturday, our first night of raiding. And we were able to get it. We got it in the last one. Um, so three polls with not with one healer less than we were used to with like our dps not being there and i'm pretty sure not a full roster um so pretty good very happy with how that went um, see jazz you can take weekends off now that's what i heard yeah <laughs> yeah so pretty uh pretty happy with how that went for weekend and then today we went in and honestly like we were at like 21 trying to scrape people together and it's just kind of a bummer you know like we were in this weekend was in the same stage in uh in old war in old war though we didn't have the raiders right now people are just like absent people are missing mm -hmm. raid like dkk who's like unironically will leave like really important family events to come raid is <laughs> like busy so we're missing like a strong dk in and both during, of our raids and during in, in between polls he's going to wipe his kid's butt he's yeah he's <clears> insane <throat> he, arguably commitment arguably the government should probably look into what's going on there but i'm not gonna say anything because... when he asked that in raid he's like do, do any of the other dads here or moms have like kids like yelling at him to wipe their butt in between pulls. Yeah, he plays like on a laptop in a kitchen table with like his kids screaming and running around him or something. Oh my so God. Oh, man, it's um, great. he goes through a lot for us. And like we're missing people like that who like are usually there and it's it and makes very it knowledgeable to players to too, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it does it it is tough. So I was in kind of a bummer mood going into the night and mm -hmm. luckily we killed uh Blood Council in one shot and i was like oh look we're better than weekday right wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute what's going on here maybe there's hope for this raid after all um but we wanted to do blood queen also and we just couldn't we just with the numbers that we had it just doesn't make sense we just lost a holy paladin in our raid so we're gonna have to find a replacement oh, no. um yeah we lost raid, uh, lax right <laughs> yeah lace yeah, lace. Lace. <laughs> lace spelled lax um uh, yeah. so that is like another thing we're dealing with so it's kind of that's it, a bummer too because that's a valineer paladin too yeah yeah it's a bummer. one of our valineers is gone um well I, well I i hope she's going on to bigger and better things at least and not yeah yeah i think uh i think she's joining cousins um i was joking <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so is. It's, just, <laughs> it's a white main guild that DKK raids in now. Also, it's oh. other characters. <laughs> um, but we uh, we were struggling on normal Blood Queen. That's just the only way to phrase it. Is uh, struggling on normal Blood Queen. Half to mechanics, half to low DPS, and then it was sorry, all me. Half to mechanic. Okay, half to Bob. <laughs> a quarter to a quarter to DPS, and then a quarter to um healing because again we're down a powerful mm -hmm. healer so we have someone who's like not typically a healer having to do a lot of the work um we're missing that dps twice. a normal blood queen a normal though yeah I and it was because it's normal still. we were gonna we yeah. were gonna go for heroic I, uh, on, <laughs> and we wiped twice on normal um, on the first one, I missed the bite on my first bite target because I was stupidly going by the add-on when Horror Scar has specifically said go by the list. But for some reason, bizarre, in I mean, my head, I behavior thought, from Bob. Well, I, I heard list, and I was like, Bob's "Oh, head. list up here!" You know, like, and I had <laughs> no, looked never. at the raid. You jet. know, we you know we use a a chart. <laughs> I know, I know, sense. I know. Look, it was just, but yeah, it was bad. Fine. And then the Bob, next time. Bob was overwhelmed. Wait, is this and for then, the add-on to bite people? Yeah, 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 to bite people. We have, like, a list Come separate on. than the add-on. Although, yeah. honestly, at this point, I'm kind of like, let's just use the add-on, I guess. Like, right. if we have the DPS, let's just use no, the No, because, add -on. like, three people's add-ons not going to be working for some reason yeah, it or does. Another. I think it, it did look better, because before it was recommending tanks, like, weirdly early on, and I was and like, healers? there's no... Yeah, well, no, I don't. I mean, maybe it was recommending healers for proximity reasons or something, but we were just like, mm. 
no, we're not going to use this list if it's like going to say bite yip now. Like it makes no sense. Well, but and- it did seem good to Nile. It seemed like it was recommending like the people that made sense. So I don't really so- care, but. I will say, if I was on my rogue, that wouldn't have happened, right? Like, because the rogues turned into, like, people in the NFL talk about how year two, when they're in, things become, you know, just muscle memory and stuff, right? Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, like, like focusing with the druid, on the, the basics. On yeah, the druid, the druid yeah. is a hard, it's the hardest rotation I've ever had to do. And so I'm focusing on that. But then, you know, the final time... I made sure to find my bite target and know where they were at on the map way before I ever had to bite them, like 30 seconds, you know? Yeah. And so at that point, I was able to do it right. But it, yeah, I cluster fucked the first one on the first poll and then the second one on the second poll. And both times, I will say that I Bob was not the and only one <laughs> who got MC'd. And I think either of those polls. So, yeah, I was so just Bob, the one Bob that did mess them both up, but it, we right. were not going to kill it anyway. <laughs> um, we finally did it with like everybody living, I think. And again, seconds off Berserk Timer on normal. So I was very surprised by that. Um, but it really makes a difference. A few players really can make a, a huge difference um, in a rate. I think we were only we were missing one, but we had like a couple alts in. So it makes it. It's like, what does missing one really mean, you know, right. at that point? You were missing one um, body. Yeah. And then like. Yeah. And then just miss a, yeah, a gap of gear uh, on other yeah. players. Gear and sometimes not, I don't want to say skill, but practice. Like sometimes you have to bring somebody right. in who hasn't been raiding with the guild or something like that. And it makes right. it Even if they fun. know the fight, it's still yeah, different it's still doing it with a different, different set of people. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we killed Velothria on uh well we killed the other three yesterday which was nice so we went straight to cindergosa and honestly like we wipe on cindergosa and i was just looking at the time <laughs> we had so much time left in raid and You're i was like, just this like this is gonna be a shit show <laughs> yeah i was like i don't want to be here <laughs> I was like, this is just like wiping on Vezix, where you're like, you guys oh, have like an hour like, and a half left. Yeah, we have an hour and a half left. It's like, I'm, we're just, I don't want to keep doing the Cinder oh, for God. an hour and a half. Like, I really don't. Luckily, uh, it wasn't that bad. We wiped twice. Um, and one of them was like really silly. Like, one was a really early silly wipe. But when that happens, you're just like, wow, that we're done for. Like, when we're oh, wiping against. Sh- 70 when we're just calling it a 75 <laughs> percent that's not good no hope yeah um battle res or nothing will make up for this yeah exactly exactly but uh well i mean we killed it pretty cleanly after that it really <laughs> it was just getting back into the groove of things and again we had a week off which does affect mm. a lot of this no matter how pessimistic i am in any of this a week off is always a big big deal it hasn't Dude, been out coming back from for us BlizzCon, yeah. like i was like okay how do i play warrior yeah. again how do i play rogue again how do i yeah it's huge yeah, so it it makes sense that everyone is you know it makes sense nothing is that out of the ordinary uh and then we're on lich king and i was like well now i have to suffer on lich king till the Still end another an hour fight. Left. <laughs> another yeah exactly still have an hour left um <laughs> Guess we're doing Lich King. Uh, I totally I thought we were gonna do it by pulling a. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know if I want to call it a Bob, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was a weak or a mishap. Where my weak or is normally when I get the plague on me, and this is entirely my fault. Normally, when I get the plague on me. It goes. <laughs> it goes like plague. Like it just says it to me, and yep. I'm like, oh, just spell myself. It says plague every time you kill the ghouls and the shamblers the tank gets the plague and you have to dispel it. So I have no excuse that why I didn't dispel it, but it didn't say plague. And I just auto ran into the group and spread the plague. And uh, we wiped like it was unequivocally that reason we wiped. Um, And then we go again. I don't wipe us to that. Um, Yep. We get to the second phase, which I think the first phase is actually really easy. Like it, it's pretty simple and easy. You own out of 25 people, if you're slow DPS, which we are slow DPS, you get three plagues that come out. Three people have to move, and that's like the whole first phase, basically. So it's pretty right. easy um for the most part. Um, we're in phase two. 
Luckily, we have a... I'm not going to say he's a better tank than me, but I will say that he raids on multiple tanks in, like, multiple raids that progress faster and harder than we do. So he's a very he, knowledgeable so, individual, yeah. yes. And so him, him. this is this is uh, me, please, slash family size, slash size matters. Um, who we got so from he, Classic tanking, Go. Like, he's his, yeah, he's his friend. Yeah, we got from Classic Go, yep. yeah. Um, and luckily, with him being our new off tank, he calls it a co-tank, which hurts my heart a lot. But <laughs> true, true. Okay, true. Fair enough. Fair enough. Co-tank. Um, Don't let Fab know. Don't give him that. Oh, window. Fab is not a co-tank. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily, he was able to take the Lich King and like was able to make some calls more comfortably than like even Harskar or myself were. Him and um demon booty are uh, who was also like another person who these are like their alts raiding with us and they're doing like heroic lich king prog um they were able to make like calls on the fly that normally we weren't we, we just weren't gonna do so even as like thames and foji were like fighting over marks for valkyr they were like making some calls about which ones to to taunt um he was pulling lich king out at like the right time to be like okay we can push now to like get into the next phase everyone come over here where for the second pull of lich king after a week off hardscar and i were like not <laughs> gonna be able to like do it all like and remember it like we had to have a couple wipes but people were doing defiles really really well that was a really that was well huge. people yeah. did defiles there was really only one well. like biggish one the rest of them yeah, were and all it was during, like a weird running moment where like it was like very awkward i think so that worked out really well and we were able to push it to the third phase um and again like i said like we would have wiped on that transition if it if me please wasn't there because i probably like i probably me and fab probably just would have forgot to pull it at 45 percent because we're like wow we're actually getting pretty far like, you know, like <laughs> we're just thinking about oh valkyrie coming out in 10 seconds but like that we, like we were able to manage it just fine because we had some really good shot calling during it we go into phase three and finally we kind of again thanks to me please being there we were able to like get the ghost down properly where he was calling for everyone to stack on the tanks which we've never done before and it made the ghosts actually come down and like group up in a meaningful okay. way and um i was able to do a soak phase it was so easy it was the easiest thing in the world i just jumped on them and like they all blew up i barely took any damage like it was really really easy um and then we killed it <laughs> we killed yep. lich king Love on the it. second pull <laughs> didn't have to see phase two didn't have minutes. to see phase three that's nuts yeah. our first wipe was yeah our Four first minutes. wipe was like in the first yeah it was the first phase basically though didn't see phase two didn't see phase three and then we kill it next so that was really exciting um and, and yeah i mean i honestly wasn't expecting it to go down at all because we we're so like rostered out basically and uh just because it had been a minute i thought we'd have to like wipe a couple times on phase two then get to phase three wipe a couple times on phase three and then kill the king no we'll just kill it we'll just get it down so wow. we are all normal king slayers now thankfully bob wants to say yeah. that we're ahead of weekday i i argue that there is a Hey man, heroic killing difference a between little the two raids bit, that a little are bit of you know a little bit. Of, I will you say know, though, cop, a competition across both is 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 healthy, right? I think that the roster boss is the weekend's biggest problem, but when it comes to doing mechanics properly, <laughs> I think weekend might be outperforming weekday. Okay, do you I guys hold that, weekend's hand more though? Do you guys explain I don't the fight so. more? It could be. I mean you guys it, no no i don't think could so be. we go in we went in on blood council we didn't say a word everything was like super clean on blood council like and this is with like a new t new off tank like every i don't and know he, I, and he might be the difference you know what i mean like he is like he is really i mean it's nice to have it's nice to have someone very knowledgeable who is ahead of our guild Yep. Who's like seeing stuff we haven't seen yet? And he's not um, a com and he's not a complete dick, which you usually the knowledgeable people are. He's he's so close. We were all worried when he first joined. I was and worried. He started talking a lot. Yep. We were all like, I was oh, definitely this worried. Is dangerous. Mm -hmm. This is dangerous. Wait a minute. But we did a we did yeah, a ten man. He's been great. He's been great. We did a ten man with him where we killed Lich King, and he was like incredibly patient with all of us. He like <laughs> and yeah, at the, he's and been at the, great. Then, 
And then at the end, he was like, that was really fun. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> he, he doesn't like, hate us. Was it? I mean, if you've honestly. Never been through something like that. Honestly, that's it's right. one of the coolest things ever. Like, I got a chance because we took a break at the end of TBC. I got a chance to go in with a guild that was on just the cusp of getting Muru, Muru down. And I got to just give him three different, um, different, different tips that like helped them. And we were able to kill it in three pulls. And I yeah. like, like, and it felt, it was one of the best feelings I've ever had, you know? And they're like thanking me. I'm like, bro, guys, like this was <laughs> you. Like, I just gave you our strategies for three different, like different things. Like you guys would have been fine. But yeah, it was like those types of things are I mean, cool. It's jazz brings up cool. a good point though that weekend cares a lot less about parsing than our weekday raid, and I think that, that actually is that bites actually us in the butt. <laughs> is a potential difference. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that the players in weekend are necessarily better players. I just noticed that thing. A lot of things do go smoother, and it seems mm -hmm. like people are there to like make up for issues more. Where we. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we like, stray off the course nah. and it feels like we fall apart right now still um dude i i, so gave I think up it, i blame togc togc was just yeah. too easy weekend had to freaking prog a noob for three and a half months or whatever oh, <laughs> we, yep. but we were we were everyone was always on edge making sure we didn't mess up in like the weekend togc but weekday we're like snoring the yeah whole we took like the last well, like month and a half of just like okay 15 30 minutes like all right we're done so Thank I, you guys, bye. I know I've talked about it a bunch of times, but I've basically just shifted my whole mentality. Like I am mechanic over parse now. And I've been that way since probably the very end of old war. I was just like, everybody's doing these crazy things to parse. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fucking parse unless I like go to a guild that specifically looks to parse. Like, so I'm done with that. Like I'm, from what I hear, Cataclysm is going to be more mechanics over parse. So I'm just getting, I've just We're been getting retail. ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, parsing is still fun, but it's just the order of operations has been wrong in vanilla or in classic the whole time where it's parse first, worry about mechanics later. Like mm -hmm. everyone's trying to parse in the first couple weeks when it's more like we should focus on getting the boss down yeah, and you then you get, you get so good at parse. the boss. Yeah. You get so good at the boss. You're able to parse like getting right. in the cheesy week one parses is like, what's the point? <laughs> like, right. like prove your metal. Let's get really good at the boss and then parse that way. So, well, and it um, made sense then, you know, because the bosses are so much easier. Like there's yeah, I mean, punches, yeah. you know, it's... or like, yeah. Or like you could ignore a mechanic and get it healed through or something yep. versus like ICC is just like, nope, you're murdered now. Like yeah. <laughs> you're just dead. And you're dead. There's so um, many times where somebody dies like so quickly and I'm just like, what the hell just happened? Like, I <laughs> I don't even know. I could not do anything. Yeah, yeah but we did it. Half of us at Good least job. have done it. We've got uh, we'll we'll get it down in, in weekday probably this week unless we want to spend our time on Fester Gun, spend our time on Putricide. What are we doing? Oh, Lady Death Whisper. I think we're doing some Lady Death Whisper. Um, Listen, as long week. as we don't spend our time on that one boss Sorry honestly thing. i think as long as we don't thing. spend know, yeah. all of our time on i Sorry think thing, if we have a golden. if we have 30 minutes because we did get really close in week in weekday prior to uh going to blizzcon yeah i think if we have 30 minutes left i think lich king is for, is yeah, for that, sure yeah that's down. what i was trying to say before about uh the heroic prog and like why we're behind it's we literally have allotted almost no time to lich king like yeah. we and we, we got one of the harder it. ones down early on too yeah, like the yeah. like so i i definitely think it'll go down this week but yeah we just need to get in there in a little time and it's a it's a we're experiencing the symptoms of raiding for five total hours which is just i think a little under what will kind of help it's us a lot of john to be but, honest well, yeah, but we we were three hours before, so like that extra hour would probably help us push um, probably a little bit better. But 
I don't know. Say I like brain. two and a half time hours. Out. Yeah, like I like two and a half hours. My brain is I'm fresh not lie. for like the whole time, mm-hmm. basically. Yep. It's like we just you're hit not... our head against a wall for another half an hour. Like I don't know if that's helpful. Like everybody, yeah. if we're doing well, I don't think there's anybody in the raid that is like, no, I'm not going to stay another thirty minutes. It's true, right? we, like, and we will do that. We will, yeah, pour some some other think, pulls out. Yeah, it's on the just, whole, we're not going to we are... wipe again for the next thirty minutes. On <laughs> the whole, healthy. we are we are we are winning we are like we are having a good time every time whereas the top guilds just like no life to ptr hated their lives i watched them all on stream don't tell me any of them had were having a good time because it's not true (laughs) we're having a good time doing it and we're doing it at a pace and who the fuck cares like if i'm yeah i'm pretty comfortable with like I, yeah, I I literally. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I literally don't care. I have cared before. I used like, to care. We got to get this down. We should get this down asap. And like, like even in Old Uar, I was like stressing over like we have gotten this on heroic mm-hmm. yet. We haven't done hard mode on weekend here. We haven't done hard mode there. But now it's just like this is it. This is all. This is the rest of Wrath. Like. Right. We can take our time, get stuff down, get some loot. It's and like, it seems like it's going to be a long time, too. Yeah. It seems like it's going to be a long time. Yeah, like, 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 <laughs> like I, yeah. I don't think we're looking at Kata until like the fifth month in, you know, 2024. Oh, didn't, didn't they say Q1 or did they say the first half? No, they said, they the, said the first, first half. half. Ah, the first half. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the case. Which means but, they but. probably plan to launch it around like March and they're giving themselves a three month buffer. Of, I like... bet you it's not even <laughs> March. Right. I hate to be this I guy who has only contracted me for Raid Prague and not cast. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> He's like, I don't want this on the record. I just honestly, I I hate to put it this way, but. One of the I don't want to say benefits of not being on the podcast, but it's sometimes nice to just not care. <laughs> like yeah, you don't care, you, you don't know. know. You're on the podcast, whatever. You do. Like I, it is with some weeks I can just like disengage from WoW and just be like whatever. I'm showing up to Ray, like whatever. <laughs> I don't yeah. get a like. It's like oh, they're doing this. All right, like, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Oh they can do God. whatever they want. Um, but yeah, I mean, cat cat is cool. But we are gonna have a lot of time in ICC. There's no reason to get like crazy burnt out. And like, obviously, we want badges. So there has been a little bit of a mad rush for ten minutes and badges and dungeons and stuff. But as that settles down and things go smooth, like we're gonna be in a good cadence of rating where people shouldn't burn out too crazy uh, before yeah. the end. And we will definitely be taking a break before Cata. Uh, if that, who knows if we even move into Cato, who knows, you know, who knows? We probably will, but who knows? I know, but <laughs> y- y- maybe y- yips like I'm going to take my favorite nine people and move into Cato. I'll see you guys later. Don't, <laughs> don't listen. I, I know said that's it in your head. I said it for wrath too, though. I said it for wrath too. I was like, we're doing anytime we'd wipe on like in Sunwell, I would message officer. We're doing 10 men. We're doing 10 men. We're doing 10 men. We'll have the number one 10 men guild. <laughs> oh, These man. are the people that are you can't really get away with it. You can't really get away with it in Wrath though, because uh the gear differential. Yep. Yep. Um, but Kata, you do get the twenty five man gear, right? Yeah, I, th- yeah, I, th- I think Kata, I'm gonna but... have one ten man person and one twenty five man person, and I think that's, that's all I'm gonna do in Kata is just is just raid. Yeah. All right. But Lich King's dead. Yeah. We've done it. I have not killed the Lich King yet. It's fine. All right. Well, uh, do it, we'll do it tomorrow. I mean, two days from now. Yeah. All right. Well, that uh, tomorrow <laughs> that concludes Raid Prog for this week. Stay tuned for Heroic Lich King next week. Kidding. Yeah. Heroic Lich King. <laughs> I don't even. Wait don't, a I don't, minute. Don't, don't talk to me about Heroic dude, Lich King. <laughs> two, dude, two weeks in 60, like 62. It was either 62 or 64 guilds worldwide. It killed Heroic Lich King. It's nuts. I will, I will just say that I am not trying. I don't have interest in killing Heroic Lich King before the buff. I'm happy if we kill Heroic <laughs> Lich King before the buff. I'm not going to sabotage us from doing it, but right. I'm not like. I'm not, that's not a particular goal I have. Just the five, <laughs> just the five percent buff, or all the way to the thirty percent. 
well any i well maybe when it comes out i'll feel more rushed but like right now i'm not thinking like oh my god we have to do this this and this or we'll never get heroic lich king down before the buff well where it was like you really have to because like sunwell you were progging those were like the main two bosses you were progging right and so you really wanted to get them down if you were close before the buff right or yeah 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 it's just crazy like yeah, you just don't. Yeah, you didn't want to be like the people who got it when it it's easy. That guilt. Even this is just like a little. <laughs> it's a little buff that you get. You know, you get a little buff to help. You <laughs> bitty out, bitty. But, um, Doesn't even count. All right. Well, that's Wait. gonna that's gonna conclude us, guys. Uh, yep. Where can we find you? Uh, you can find me probably on Twitter at the Yip Show or uh, send me in game mail. Send me your love letters in game. I will respond to each and every one of them uh, <laughs> with a yes or no, uh, maybe uh, <laughs> an, 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 an item. You know, I would love I would actually I'll, I'll send you something from my bags because my bags are constantly full of graves <laughs> and uh, I always yeah. delete them anyway. So. <laughs> And guys, just remember, like, don't send me messages asking you to join the guild. I have no power in the guild. I am not leadership at all. Send them to Yip and probably don't tell them you're a podcast listener until True. you prove yourself. Because we've had True. a little bit of a bad streak with that. So our eyes will all collectively roll if the first thing you say is like, I'm Bob I love Disney Warcraft Man, Reloaded. Yeah, that's, Warcraft a, that's reloaded. a red flag. I think if you say... <laughs> I agree with Mel. You may have another <laughs> yeah. shot. I'm just saying. Yeah, and don't get him wrong. Even if you say, I love Yip. Yip, you are always the best part of the podcast. Yip's not going to invite you to the guild. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. But, no guess. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Yip, please. Can you start a podcast about something? Because you're so fucking about good what? at it. Anything. I would listen every week. I don't give a shit what it's about. I don't Look at do him looking around. Right? I'm like, not uh, trying to think like of what lamp? I can do. Uh, like yeah, I'm trying to. I'm like, what? What can I do? What can I do a podcast about? I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll see. We'll All see. Right. Yeah. To be determined. All right. Well, guys, we're gonna send you back to. I believe I'm gonna put this in between. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in between. We're gonna send you back to the news with uh, me, Mel, only Black Smoke, and. Rockman. So, uh, yeah, season of data mining going back to you. <laughs> Time for the news. All right. So, first off, I just want to get this out of the way. It's not in the notes. I saw it last night, and somehow they snuck this by us while we were, you know, didn't sneak it by you, Rockman, but they snuck it by me. <laughs> And by everybody I talked to, nobody mentioned it, but they just threw a level 80 boost into Wrath, and it looks like no, it's no unlimited. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then, you know, I'm not really, don't really care about that, to be honest. If I'm being, like, completely honest, I really don't care about the boost. I don't think, if you're boosting something you haven't played before, I think you're setting yourself up for a little bit of anxiety and a few hours of really like reading through a lot of shit, like moves and everything else, if you want to be good. But um, I always think it's best to just start a new character. But what I hated and I saw last night made me even less excited for Kata. The mount that they give you for oh, the pre order thing. Oh my God. Okay. I talked to people and that shit didn't start happening. I think until, until, until Legion where you're riding a boss, it yeah, you're looks riding so out of place and dumb. I don't know whoever came up with the idea. I don't like it. I'm sorry if you like it, but God, it was horrible. Like, uh, I just, it's like, it, uh, I just, I, I hate really it, like man. The, TBC one, the Viridian phase hunter. I thought it fit well. I mean, it, yeah, it fit was a with big. it, you know, a little bit, a little big. It, it was a little big. I also but don't like riding, riding Ragnaros. Yeah, and it's so. I mean, it looks great. It does look like the 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 model looks good. Well, you if you're really into that weird to, stuff, well, I mean, it's just like the pixels are a lot better than the pixels oh. on all of our characters. It does have some good pixels. But I just it. Three people got on it in my little ten man raid. And I was like, what the hell is this? Uh. So, 
That type of stuff. I hate that they're throwing that type of crap in. What do you uh, get it for? I'm right there with you. You buy um, it. Buying. Oh. Hey. Buy, it's, like, it's the, the same as like the. Oh, rat you know that. Pack. I'm so glad you just brought this up. And I sorry I cut you off. Only I just remembered Not something so. so freaking good. A Blizzard developer that left the company. I don't know, like ten years ago. He did like a little interview for this website, and you want to hear something this guy said. He said that Blizzard made more money from the Celestial Steed in Wrath of the Lich King than all of StarCraft II's revenue. <laughs> wow. That horse, wow, that, is, wow is a collector game. I'm telling so, you. Celestial Steed, I think, was one of the few first store mounts in mm -hmm. During Wrath. Mm -hmm. I think it was 25 bucks. And that made more money than the $60 StarCraft II boxes. All of them. So immediately the higher-ups were like, we need more bouts. Yeah, they said, well, this is a lever, and I just want to keep pulling it. So and it always comes back down to our time. freaking fault. Oh, no, no. Yeah, 100%. You don't well, have to it, buy it. You want to talk about whose well, fault yeah, but, it is. Well, yeah, but everybody did. I mean, I didn't buy it, but. Whose fault it really is, is Todd Howard. He was the first person at a AAA studio to put a microtransaction in a video game. Horse oh armor. God. Horse armor, right? $2 horse armor. Yep. In, in uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion. And uh, Thanks, here we are. Here we are. Now we're, now we're riding Ragnaros. And <laughs> we're riding Ragnaros. Right, <sighs> riding Orgrimmar at the mailbox. Oh I know. My God. And another thing with retail that I hate is if you're in BGs and stuff, and you're you're able to ride your big old flying mounts, your dragons and stuff. I think it looks so out of place and dumb, but everybody's riding the dragons and crap. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> well, season of discovery is out in 19 days. I don't know though. Mm -hmm. You know I what would have fixed all of that? Discovery. If flying mounts were always like they are in Dragonflight, because then you wouldn't use it as as much. You'd only use it if you're going to go a long distance. So you'd always... Uh, oh, you're talking about the dragon riding, yeah. Yeah, and so that, you know, that would save me from all this crap, you know, in town and just big... Ugh, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just makes too much money. They can't help themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like Wildhead with tier lists and data mining. From what I've heard, like, you know, I'm not going to enjoy the game Cataclysm, but I supposedly have been told by many I will enjoy the raids. So I'll probably raid log a little bit, try it out, give it a shot. But yeah, it really made me. I'll level up. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll just have to see how it goes if my guild stays in it and stuff. But boy, that was a turnoff when I saw that last night. But the first thing is no Wrath era servers planned. You think it's a good idea or a bad idea? I'm kind of indifferent. I wasn't going to stay. I think it's less of a bad idea because of the changes they made to gearing along the way that more people are going to feel like they completed the game, you know, got their shadow more. Oh, good point. Good whatever point. it is. Um, <clears throat> I think that that was a, a good choice on their part for planning no Rather our servers. I think they'll eventually come like a if there is enough demand for them. Right. I think, again, they're trying to continue to keep people engaged in the game. And if they do Wrath Arrow servers and nobody goes to them right now, they're going to be like, why would we continue to maintain these? Right. Whereas if they put out Season of Discovery, then they put out Cataclysm and then they see a drop in subscription numbers or something, they're like, hey, what if we put out Wrath Era servers and they see some people come back, right? So I feel like there's definite opportunity for them to do it. And they said they were open to potentially doing it. But again, splitting the player base that many different ways is probably not in their best interest either. I think they're oh. going to do a Wrath season one day. Probably, yeah. Maybe season three mm -hmm. or four or five. It'll mm -hmm. just be a Wrath season. And we'll be it'll be a one to 80 fresh server as a season yeah. season of ice crown or something mm -hmm. yeah i i do think that um same with tvc the like classic era servers that they left up and running have been a tremendous gauge on 
player interest and player burnout from their current expansion. You know, being able to mm -hmm. see whether it's through people coming back to rank in PvP, just enjoy the vanilla raids again, or even do strange game modes like hardcore. You know, being able mm -hmm. to actually get a clear sense on, okay, like, why why are people leaving this game mode we have and going back to classic, you know? I think it's a helpful stopgap against people just going back and saying, okay, I'm back to a private server. Well, they were a ghost town for most of TBC. Yeah, and they I would have... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, Blood Cell Buccaneers was was Well, and that was, was only big. one server, too. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. but then, like, it has... Just recently had, you know, the last six months had a huge up uptick. It's old war. Yeah, and, and yeah, and that's not, you know, something like hardcore. You know, and that's yeah, just classic era rates. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's mostly one or two servers, but that's because of clustering. Yep. So you know, and a lot of people not having the foresight to, you know. Yeah, get, I think you can free transfer. Even now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's day. it's free transfer. A lot of people, you know didn't copy their character when they had the chance. So they're, Ooh, they're mad about anyways. that because I did. Yep. I got a full Biss Rogue, baby. I, oh, had, yeah. I got an almost <laughs> full Biss Warrior. I keep meaning to go do do next uh, one week. But I said that those were the dumbest thing ever when they when they made them. And it's only 15 bucks. So I was right for the a, like a good long time. Well, that's but why he still copied his wrong. character. He said it was stupid and still copied his character. Well, I, <laughs> when they dropped the price, I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and copy... Because it's, I mean, he had a lot of cool shit. I mean, he had, everything was Biss except for his weapons. And they were damn close. But they just weren't the K, the two KT uh, weapons. But literally every other slot. And then my healing set ticks for, I can't even remember. It's a ton, though. Like, but I never yeah. got DFT on my Rogue. That's like the one that got away. I got uh, everything else. The one that got away. Well, but Yeah, I so, never got a DFT. Yeah, like... I don't know. It might be a good idea just to keep one up, you know. And what, classic era or wrath? Wrath, wrath era. Just no. let people have it there and just see when they return to it to gauge. There's too many. There's think so? five versions of WoW right now. True. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really don't think they're going to make a classic era realm for SOD, even though they like hinted at that. They just said that, so some people will still play it and not worry. <laughs> but they're not going to. There's just Extra no way. Extra incentive to play to the end. <laughs> Yeah, it, what's going to end up happening is you're going to transfer your character to a seasonal realm or a non-seasonal realm, and it's going to lose all their new shit. And it's just going to be mm -hmm. a regular classic era character. Maybe yeah. they'll do something where you can transfer to middle of Cata or retail even, who knows. But I really don't think that they're going to make a permanent realm for SOD shit. They're just not. There's no way mm -hmm. they can do that. There's too many versions of... And, and mm -hmm. honestly, I don't even count hardcore as its own version like yeah it has different rules but you know there's different server rules on a pve realm too compared to a pvp realm it's just classic with different server rules so i don't consider that a different version of wow so you've got classic era and hardcore as one but then you've got the new seasonal stuff then there's kata then there's retail that's yes. four versions of a game and by adding in a wrath era if you do add the Wrath era, do you know how pissed those TBC guys are going to be? <laughs> right. Why oh, the yeah. hell didn't you make a TBC era? Because TBC There's like five sucked. of them. Come on. Like, I didn't like you know, TBC. The five TBC people are upset about it, but... No. Well, I honestly like TBC PvP more than Wrath. I'm one of those guys. Mm. Whoa. No. I don't dude, know. Like, Holy well Paladins enough. are so OP, dude. Holy Paladins are the worst. Yeah, I really yeah, liked I really liked PvP in TBC, and I just don't even mess with PvP in Wrath. So, like, I like druids and priests being the best healers. Druids are going to run away from you, and priests are going to dispel you. <laughs> but paladins are unkillable. Yeah, they have like, too much armor. Too much. They can the healing them and another target is just like, come on, dude. They just beacon their twos partner, and no one's killable. Mm -hmm. And right. they wear plate, dude. Get out of here. Yeah. If paladins wear cloth, now we have a real conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they wear plate and have a shield on, you're fried. Pa yeah, Holy yeah they, they are really fuck. are the, the sleeper original hero class of the game. Yeah. You know, just like slowly power creeping through all of classic. 
Uh, all three specs too, right? Yeah. Like they're just oh, yeah. slowly like in Wrath. All three are insane. Yeah, well, because yeah. I mean, e even think about in like how Alliance would use them in classic era, um, like raiding. You know, well, like they're wearing the teal dress forever. Yeah, and then but then when you get to Nax, you know, they're just the God Heal Bot. You know, yeah, like you, so yeah. e even throughout that one expansion, you got uh, you know, Holy Down. Then come TBC, suddenly Prot is just king of all mm -hmm. tanks for no reason. They just felt, oh yeah, we'll just give them a taunt and also here take the whole kitchen sink while we're at it. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then when you get to Wrath, by the end of Wrath, you've got you know retribution palatins all geared up to just dominate come, you know, even the following uh arena season. Well, let alone it, the meters at the end of And then the they, they even have a four spec, Preg Paladin. <clears throat> yeah. You've heard y'all heard of Preg Paladin? It's oh, a yeah. one handed shield paladin that's instantly healing themselves and their partner. Oh my god. And what? That shouldn't be Preg's a thing. The worst. Like, no. No. <laughs> They're a half ret, half holy with a sh no. one hander paladin. It's so stupid. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's too much. Meanwhile, rogues have one viable spec in arena. <laughs> and we get owned by every paladin. That is a tough spec to play, at Listen, least for at least for me. You're never going to convince me that rogues should have more. I well, I don't, I don't care about us having more. I just care about paladins being. Yeah. Bad. <laughs> I, I, paladins I just think the like anti -rogue. rogue. Yeah, r rogues got I think the least love across the classic expansions. Like Rockman, when you were describing like how you fell in love with WoW, you know, like shifting over to rogue enjoying your time at a level 26 in more song gulch like that was me but from the start like my first character was a rogue you know and i was just goofing around being like this you is guys are amazing a PvP. type of person i feel and like every single time like I'm a new a expansion fan. would come out i'd be like oh this is going to be the time where like my end game pvp just takes off nobody can beat me and of course you know like whether it's a warlock a hunter a you know a paladin you know there's someone else who just got way more buffs <laughs> yeah. I mean, anytime. Meanwhile, paladins... I'm a holy priest Hell trying yeah. to walk somewhere, and I can't even move. And before I'm dead, when yeah. I encounter a rogue, true. But, I mean, priest is really tough against rogues. Your only time that you're really on top is when you're full bis in vanilla, and you have the BWL trigger that puts a shield on you, Aegis mm. of something. That thing's very good. And then if you get the Nax. And night you have to be robe, dead. Night robes, the chest that has like 600 armor on it. You're basically mm. a male wearer with those and then the, the AQ gloves. You can mm. actually make a set on a priest that's anti rogue and it's pretty good. But if you don't have that set, you're just dead. Yeah. <laughs> I did not have that set. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I died a lot. Well, I think, I think I'm just, I'm, yeah, I don't, I'm not really here or there for Wrath air servers i know i wouldn't play them right now and i think i'd rather just have a fresh whenever it does come around um i don't think i'll ever play tbc or wrath ever again i don't it's gonna be a bit for me it's gonna be a bit for me but wrath i really enjoyed just the raiding part and i think that's really what's gonna happen in kata if i play kata it's just gonna be my TBC was ruined. I, I I didn't get Warglaves until the last day of pre-patch. Uh, I got my main hand. That's horrible. Yikes. I got an offhand on week three of Black Temple. And then I didn't get the main hand until pre-patch. That's a long oh time away. See, they should have treated Warglaves like they did. Um, Dude, we got six uh, pairs. Shadowhorn. Three pairs. Then you have players oh. like Rockman who like wouldn't be screaming. Oh, know, like, that's why, why I'll never play TBC again. Also, it's really? so annoying that Warglaves just drop off the boss and there's not like an epic quest a part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really dumb. I hate Warglaves. <laughs> so stupid. I hate TBC too. Yeah. I do too. All right. Well, He's like, the, you're never getting me back there. Never. On the next thing um that I've that I've got here, you did a a interview for Wowhead, and I encourage everybody to check in the notes and read the full thing, but I thought is there any one or two things you want to pull out and talk about here? Uh. Well, that that was I was super honored to have the opportunity to meet with uh, Tim Jones and oh, Tim's uh, great. Linny. Linny was the she's a producer for Classic. I actually didn't. Uh, I've never met Linny before uh, mm -hmm. that that interview, so I'll, that was really pleasant surprise to learn a new face on the Classic development team. But um, yeah, that interview was super cool. They were really chill. 
Uh, I only had 30 minutes, so I was kind of, uh, you know, I had I had the bazooka out, and I was just, like, lo- firing and loading <laughs> right. as many questions as I could get out. But, I mean, we had a really good time. We were, like, laughing the whole time about different stuff. You know, when I was talking about classic degenerates and how far we go to grind <laughs> in the game. And we, we touched on this earlier uh, in the in the podcast, but one of the big differences between retail and classic when the – opening voicemail asked about bridging the gap is in classic you your player power can be increased by how much you just grind and how much you're just grinding you can go grind reps you can go grind consumables you can go grind and get your world buffs and it's you can go grind and get rank 14 and get rank 14 weapons and now you're basically the top of the meters right so in vanilla, you can just grind your ass off to become the top of your class. But in retail, you can't do that. You actually, in retail, to be the top of your class, you need to be well-connected and in a high-performing guild. And not only that, but to be in that high-performing guild, you need multiple alts to be able to do split runs when a new raid comes out. And This that's is just what I've raiding. complained about forever. I don't like yeah. the... I like... The speedrunning meta in vanilla because everybody had the same gear that we did. So you could look at it and be like, damn, they're good. Whereas people, often people are like, well, I could do what Mythic Raiders do if I had, you know, it was my full time job too, you know? Yeah. It kind of cheapens it. And well, yeah, it's a full time job for them, but so is ranking. It's a full time yeah. job ranking, but you can solo rank, right? You can solo grind rank 14. So the biggest difference between vanilla and retail is just that you can grind your ass off and you can see the rewards, whereas in retail, it's a, it's a little bit more complicated on how to see the best rewards. So that's why I don't think there will ever really be a bridge between the two, and I don't think Classic will ever truly appeal as a main game for retailers. I think retail will always treat Classic as just a side dish, a little side fun thing to do between raids, but... Um, but yeah, in that interview, it was great to see the developers when I explained all this stuff to them. They were very receptive to it. They totally hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the stuff from the interview that I thought was the most most interesting was new tier sets. We're going to get new tier sets. They didn't, we're not going to get, excuse me, Blizzard said they're on the table. which yep. And that's all they, they wouldn't elaborate any it. further. Well, I... I think maybe a little more than a looking into it, but they, they didn't elaborate a whole lot, but they said it's on the table and they were smiling when they said it. So that says a lot to me, but it doesn't guarantee that we're getting it. So that scares and, me because I put something out of the podcast that maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I wasn't supposed to say anything. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal. I'm pretty sure we're getting it, but they didn't say, yes, I, we're getting it. I just know somebody who's working on it. Oh, and there you go. maybe I should have said that. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I don't think it's a big I deal. I think it's I think it's fine because I didn't get any information. Just that it's something on their plate that they're working on doesn't mean we're going to get it. Well, I knew about most of the stuff before season of discovery came out through leaks. Like if y'all didn't, there are know, no leaks. There was lots. I, and yeah, so I knew the name of season of discovery. I knew Rogue Tank and Mage Shield was a thing, and I knew Black Fathom Deeps was a thing. No, I have and, no idea of, of any of that. Well, it's Look, an interesting I, I'm just, story. I'm just proud that my original guests, like, right when they said a new season is coming out, and I said Psalm 2, and they said, it's not Psalm 2, and I said, fine, Season of Mystery. Yep, you yeah, guys. Which yeah, conveniently was that. still Psalm. Dude, uh, but go, I feel like Discovery is pretty close. Okay, yeah. so right after that, Go was on the next week's uh, podcast. So it would have just been a few days after the announcement, and Classic Go was like... I think it's going to be called Season of Dis- of Discovery, and you're going to discover a bunch of new stuff. That's all he said. I was like, damn, where did that come from? He just guessed it. I mean, on the money. But yeah. uh, I, I think, uh, so I got word, this is a really funny story. I got word that someone saw a weird Warcraft log, uh, yeah, Warcraft logs log, where it was all, so if you didn't know how Warcraft logs works, is if you mouse over a spell on Warcraft logs, it shows a tooltip. That's from Wowhead. So if it's on the Wowhead database, Warcraft logs puts it there. Well, someone saw a funny log on Warcraft logs where all the spells were question marks. And they were like, 
that's weird. And they looked at the healers and it said mage healer. And they looked <laughs> at the damage taken tab and it was a rogue. So someone yeah, saw that. this and they told some, some of the retail <laughs> Wildhead people and then they told me. But the th and, then the, and then the Warcraft log disappeared. It got deleted. So the theory was that someone that does QA for Blizzard might have uploaded the wrong log to Warcraft. <laughs> and it had some SOD stuff on there. That's but hilarious. That's how, that's how the leak came out, where some people were saying that mages can heal and rogues can tank. Uh, but wait, this is like a month before uh, the announcement. Damn, I'm good. Well, I was excited to hear it right then because um, I, I don't know how I didn't hear about that from somebody. Mm hmm. I only think it was a super small amount of because, like, who's who the hell is looking at all the most recent uploads on Warcraft? Right. Logs, you know? yeah. It's like one person that is like a giga retail Andy Warcraft log parser. They saw it and then they told one of the retail Wowhead people. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's where I got the information from uh, mm -hmm. for a season of Discovery. And then I got the name from somebody else who just knows someone at Blizzard. <laughs> But um, and in before BlizzCon, the the person that told me the name says that the people at Blizzard that have been playing it, they're having a blast, and that's not just mm -hmm. Black Fathom Deeps; they're playing all the other shit too. So, it sounds like SOD is going to be really, really fun, and I'm excited to main it. It's going to be my main game for sure, and I'll, I'll level up in Kata, and then you know, I'll have a character <laughs> on Kata. I'm probably not even going to raid. I might do yeah. a ten man. I'll do a ten man. I'll, I'll level up. I mean, I'll still I'll be doing IECC, doing... but I think it'll become my main game too. And I plan on playing a lot of dudes also. Yeah, I'm gonna do multiple rogues and multiple mages. I think just rogues and mage. I don't. I, I also really like the idea of Ellie Shaman. I want to see what other runes shamans get. But if shamans get a couple more runes, I might make an Ellie Shaman too. Nice. Yeah, I. That's another thing. Like. I like how they did their best to make 25 gameplay feel like 60 gameplay. Um, but I worry if we get all of those runes right at 25, like we can't not get any more. Well, I you think know? we're going to get, and like, I worry about having like hundreds of spells that we need no, to, no, no, and no, runes no. that we need to be worrying about. I think so we're I'm, I'm hoping that like they will like shift some of them to passives or that will, yeah, or we'll only get some of those uh, and we'll slowly discover them. As we move forward. No, no, no. I think each new tier is only going to be like two or three new runes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we're yeah, getting the bulk like one, of them. Like one for each slot, you mean? Yeah. No, no, no. Like in the next phase, mm -hmm. like this is just me guessing. But when we get to level 40, I feel like there's only going to be like three new runes added to the whole collection. Oh, like total. Yeah. So I, I think the number see. of runes we get are going to be, I don't think we're getting 12 <clears throat> runes every phase. That's. I don't, well, think, I, I don't think that we should get 12 runes at 25, to oh, be honest. I, see, I, see. I, I think that that front loads the content way too much. So, I mean, it's 12 runes per class, too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's over It's over 100, yeah. Yeah. We could, I mean, third, we could like, jump I, around I, I just these don't think things. That there's a, yeah, I, I don't think that there's enough to excite people if they don't feel like their class, their new class identity evolves you know, in the same way, like one of the coolest things that, you know, you experience leveling up in classic is your new keystone set level 30, 40, 50, you know, but oh, if, the talents, yeah, yeah, like, but with runes being the the mechanic that they're using to create new class identity, if your entire class identity is created at level 25, you know, that's incredibly early uh, to mm -hmm. be able to say, all right, we're done, like, enjoy your smooth ride. You know, <laughs> fighting a couple of new ten mans uh, that we've converted from from dungeons like Nomergan, for example. Right. Um, you know, I, I do think that the the Karazhan Crypt leak uh, is definitely a big change that does excite me because that's entirely new content. But if we're not seeing cool class evolution throughout that whole process, in addition to the new content, I think that that's a big risk for well, here, on jump player retention and burnout. Jump to number eight only uh, on our our. Uh, are right oh, up yeah. here. I forgot. I forgot. So Let this is crazy. This goes right to what you're talking about. So we're seeing other slots that could be that there could be runes for. So is it going to allow us to attach a rude to every slot, or is it going to cap out at like say four 
and you'll have to choose what slot you want to have your your runes on because you can have a total of four or something like that, right? Like, it seems crazy if we're going to be able to put runes on chest, legs, hands, bracers, cloak, feet, helm, shoulder, and waist. Like, that seems in crazy yeah, to in me. A, in I addition to... For all that. I know. Yeah, in, in it, it, <laughs> yeah that, that's another thing. Like, we definitely need to take a critical look at, like, re regardless of how many runes there are, on how often and how easily you can swap between them. Because it feels like, at least from the demo, that we're getting dual spec without getting dual spec. And they've still teased that we might get dual spec. I really oh, hope we do. We kind of, if they want world PvP to work, it's what I said in vanilla, we needed dual spec and world PvP would have been better. So yeah, I, I can tell you one thing that I got, I got information on. This is an exclusive for this podcast. Well, rock man I didn't make it a Wowhead article. Nice. Okay, so in the de in the demo, the only stipulation to change your runes was you're out of combat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me paint you a picture. You're fighting a Which mage. Which I think is bad. You're fighting a mage. Yep. The mage, is he's got icy veins, he's got... They poly uh, you. Drop he's got them. all the frost stuff, he's going to sheep you. He's going to walk away. He's going to drop combat. He's going to change his runes to healing he's going to resheep you he's going to heal to full mm -hmm. he's going to resheep you then he's going to drop combat and change his runes to the back to his frost runes and then he's going to kill you and he's going to he figure out how to macro it or have an add-on to do it or a week he can or do that forever yeah he can do that forever so uh i got word from blizzard that they are already changing that so that that won't happen well that's and good. What's really interesting about that is I think they're going to have to change it to where you you're not actually enchanting the the gear because then you could just change gear when the combat right. drops. You have yep. a healer set and a DPS set and you just swap your gear with a with a macro. So, I think you're going to actually enchant the the item slot and then whatever item you yeah. have in there will get the room. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I literally did it on the demo. All you had to do was drop combat and change your runes. So a rogue could yeah. vanish and swap runes. And that's that's like, that's just way too much. Mm. A hunter yeah. could feign. Anyone could CC you. They could just magic dust you, run away, drop combat, change their runes. And now they're totally different spec. And that, that would really complicate the world PvP. It would make it kind of messy yeah. and a little sloppy. So Blizzard is going to address that somehow. So I'm interested to see what they change, but I didn't have enough information to like, this is what they're changing it to, to make it a Wowhead article. Yeah. So there you go. That's an right. exclusive. No, that, that makes go. a lot of sense because yeah, like I was talking to Shobek and he was really concerned about that. Like from his playing a rogue, like what's to stop me from abusing this mechanic. I also think that oh. even on the PVE side, you've got a massive issue of, you know, like your rogue again, you know, Saying, okay, I've been DPSing this fight. Oh, for this vanish, fight, I can just tank. <laughs> yeah, quick, quickly vanish and change tank to handle one mechanic in the middle of a fight. You know, not not even switching like dual spec between the fights. Well, you wouldn't really be able middle. to do it on bosses uh, because when you be vanish, combat. yeah, it'll keep you in combat. Oh, sure, but you could on like between trash and stuff. But I really don't want to be have to do that. I don't I even want, want it to be an option. Well, I want, I want. Like this to kind of take the tanking role and kind of pass it off to ev to everybody. I feel like it'd be really cool if people were taking turns on different bosses, tanking them, so that everybody, you know, because being the tank, I mean, some people just love to tank, but I like tanking, but I like DPSing. You know, like it's it'd be nice to like just be like, all right, on this fight, Bob tanks with with um, Sam. But on this t uh, fight, Mel takes with uh, with uh, Robert. You know, like just depending on the fight and depending on if your class is 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 better for it. You know, it'd be kind of neat. I I think. Yeah, but then when are you gonna get to give us on the boss you're taking? You gotta rotate. You yeah, gotta rotate. I think if they give us dual spec, they could make that they could make it feel a little bit better, right? Where maybe you have the enchant in the slot for that specific spec, right? And you can't change your spec unless you're out of combat for mm -hmm. so long or something right i don't really care about dual spec i, I yeah. i've been playing private servers all those years and i spent a see but you play a rogue though a rogue could be have a spec that's viable and vanilla 
in both PvP and no. Mm-mm. I mean, it's not, not the best, but it's viable. Whereas a Fury yeah, Warrior is Rogue not Rogue viable. Feet. Yeah, Fury Warrior is not yeah. viable. It's like yeah. a, it's like a combat rogue with no utility. That's yeah. I mean, but I didn't do that. I had a PvP spec and a raid spec, and I would only, I would do literally if someone needed me to do a dungeon. If I had to go clear a DMT for somebody or a ZG, I would do it in PvP spec. If you guys. Uh, I'm only going raid spec when it's raid night in the raid. So mm-hmm. if anyone brought my rogue, they knew they were getting a, a preparation backstab rogue with improved sprint. And I'm and I'm going to and I got improved kick if I need to kick anybody. But uh, yeah, I. But it I, sounds I, like I you raid years. two days in a row and that's it, right? So you'd have five days no, we a week to do, do that. One, we, we would do one raid night. Yeah. So you'd have a whole week to do it. Whereas we were Tuesday, Thursday. So. I could do Friday to Monday, and then you would, so you'd have you wouldn't even be able to PvP Wednesday uh-huh. if you wanted to. Yeah, unless mm-hmm. I paid. Like it was horrible. Well, you gotta for find me. a new guild. You gotta tell your friends to piss off. That ain't working. That's that's a hundred gold down the drain. Yeah. So yeah, I had a one raid night, and you know what's funny is it right when 2019 launched, we really discussed this. Like we were really close to doing it. There is a way where you you raid. Okay, so listen, your your raid night is either Monday or Tuesday. But what you do is you, know, you raid the Tuesday it comes out or whatever, but then you don't raid all the way, and then you skip a week, and then you wait until the Monday, and then you go PvE spec, and you raid week two as a Monday, and then week three as a Tuesday. I've heard a and lot of people do that. And then you don't raid for another two weeks again. Yep. And then you mm-hmm. do a Monday, Tuesday, two raids back to back. That yeah. way you can really milk the number of respects you have to do oh and you could be pvp for you know 12 days in a row yeah. i mean i mean i mean it, it was a, a really good note that they pointed out um where respect costs particularly at low levels were going to be cheaper yeah i think that that's helpful respec. but but i think that the like my question still remains that i had at blizzcon which is like choosing runes as your primary mechanic of delivery for creating new class identities is just a really interesting choice not the one that i would have chosen like i would have done it through talents i think if i were a game designer and i i would like to know like from them from the developers like what they because i think it would be helpful even from a player perspective not even just like oh i'm i'm interested um to understand like what they think they can go ahead no, I was just going to say, I think runes allow them a lot more flexibility to tweak things, right? Because if you tweak talents and you change talents and then things don't go the way that you see them in your head going or the way that your developers play tested them, right? Like runes are much easier to nerf or, you know, increase power level on and change, change them completely, individually. right? Or add them or, you know, delete some and... I think there's a lot more wiggle room, especially with such a crazy, like the craziness that we're getting from all of these runes. Like you put these into talents and it's just like, whoa, this is a totally different game. Right. I I think they were influenced by the smart. I didn't agree with it in the beginning, but after I've seen how it's worked, the smart glyph changes that have fixed minor things in wrath and i know you haven't played a ton of wrath but there's been a lot of things that have been fixed through glyphs and that's something they can easily take in and out you know what i mean or change and also glyphs are opt-in yep Mm -hmm. and they can make glyphs where it's like this works pve or uh non-player controlled character only type of deal which is pretty cool for keeping the balance between pvp and pve so i think that's where they got the idea There's a lot less that can mess it up, too, right? Like, if you add a talent in, like, in this one spot here that you can get Rogue Tank, right? Like, they, it's much harder to think, like, oh, well, they could do this weird spec that would do this and then allow them to have this and this, and it would, like, totally change everything, right? And I think runes kind of take that away. But who knows? Maybe this is just them testing it. I do think... Ta- some, yeah. There are some talent trees that are just shot, mm-hmm. like the whole assassination tree for rogues past cold blood, completely worthless. 
Yeah. Most of the arcane tree worthless. completely worthless for mages. Yeah, like and and I can understand that, you know, having it be an opt-in system that's easier to tweak, like sure. But why not add in glyphs at that point instead of making a completely new, you know, yeah, they're, they're gear slot enchantable glyphs, thing. Sure. You know, and then additionally, like if your concern is, oh, we want to make sure that we can fix it if we get it wrong, like that's not a good design mentality to have when you're building out a completely new system. No, I'm I'm definitely like, there with you. Like, so, and that's why, like, I feel like, I don't know, even before I had the chance to like meet several of them in person, you know, like, and just like share times and plenty of alcohol with them, uh, like I, I trusted that they weren't the kind of developers to be basing their design choices off of fear of fucking up you mean you know so th that that's why i'd be alcohol. i'd be interested they had mock they had mocktails sure because sure, i didn't sure, see any of, of them drink alcohol yeah i didn't see that at all that's fair uh well i mean i think mean, that but i but i had plenty of alcohol so i think they're not allowed to anymore yeah yeah not um, at this but but that that's why i'd be interested to hear and i think it would be really helpful for players to hear what they believe the perks are of choosing a glyph like system with runes rather than reimagining talents because they've done that in in dragonflight and it seems to be that that well, has I can been tell, I can tell you what well. there is why please it's because <laughs> classic era and the hardcore realms are going to be on the same patch oh that's a very good point that's a the, straight up technical is, yeah straight up technical reason yeah so with, with the runes you could it's probably a lot easier to just add that in than to well no to just to delete the one rune opening thing and then anything that rewards runes doesn't on classic era brian birmingham talked about this in an interview with somebody it might have even been us but with somebody at some point where he talked about uh them having to keep it was a, the reason in season of mastery they changed something on i think paladins or something but they had to like they had to like shoehorn it in because when they moved over to classic era when they were going to be allowed to later like that would all be disappearing you know and so mm -hmm. since they're on the same game client that does make a lot of sense why that would be the reason that's just my guess though that. i'm sure they yeah. there is probably a way to make it work but well, it's probably a nightmare and i yeah. was with you only like i wanted like the trees to be changed but i was pleasantly surprised thing. with this here's the thing too though i think if you're if you're trying to appeal to everybody right because they have to deal with so many different opinions and everybody you asked had a different opinion on what classic plus should look like right mm -hmm. and so if you're trying to do that i think and I, I said it earlier in the show, but it, I think it was very brilliant of them to do a season that was this wacky season, right, of like all these crazy different things to be able to evaluate what's working, what's not. What do people like before just putting out a classic plus, right? Because if they put out a classic plus right now with all of these things in it, there's a lot of people that still don't trust Blizzard to make a new game that they're going to like, right? Like they know that and they know that people would. I don't think we would be as excited about season of discovery if it was just a brand new game mode that was set. I mm -hmm. think season of discovery is enticing because we get to kind of play around with these new things. We know that they're, it's almost like they're just testing for what they want to put into classic plus. Right. Well, also something like a shaman getting overload, getting lava burst, where do you put overload and lava burst in the tree that a level 25 would have access to? Right. You're yeah. going to put yeah. those in the first two rows. Well, that that's, that's part level of why I'm saying like, I think, I think that they overloaded. <laughs> no, I mean, I agree the, with you. The that... front end of like end game gameplay. Like I think they just to wanted to 25. juice it up for yeah. level 25s. Yeah. I totally, and I totally 25, get, bro. I totally get that. But that's, that's one of the things where I think like, if you did have some of the current, like lackluster talents in talent trees like elemental shamans like assassination rogues move to a glyph system and then you had something like mutilate be what you looked forward to at your level 50 keystone talent 
you know, like I think that that could be really, really cool. I think that, you know, getting some of those more passive abilities an extra, you know, 10, um, well, what about Shaman? 10 energy, like, for example, you know, on I a mean, road yeah, Vigor super... is the worst. Yeah. But like Vigor's if you had, if you had that, vanilla. if you had that effectively as a glyph, like in their rune system, I think that that would be a pretty cool minor thing. It's opt in, you know, it makes you a little bit stronger. It makes, you know, the 25 game where you don't have a lot at your tool belt, but having an extra 10 energy off, off the bat maybe allows you to, you know, cast out one extra ability. Uh, yeah, where you would you put Tank would be able Rogue? To. And what tree? Yeah, don't you think some of the enticement is that Warlock it's tank. not... Where the hell did Warlock tank go? It's not reliant on your spec, right? So, like, you could be a holy priest and get some of these shadow runes, right? Or DPS runes. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to change everything you're doing with your current spec to get these things. And I think that was some of the enticement was that any warlock could be a tank warlock if they want, if they got this rune. But there would be. As opposed be. to having to go there's through. There's going to be an optimal spec. For yeah, like on, will like be, on right. Rogue, you're definitely a 25. If you're going to tank, you're definitely going to want the parry and your post. Sure. And your you're going to want your right. dodge. You're going to want, you know. But I will say this. I've already been theory crafting some 60 Rogue tank builds. Mm -hmm. sleeper uh sleeper meta here but i really oh, feel I'm like hoping so because i'm going rogue and druid yeah maybe I rogue and like warrior setup, setup in subtlety it says uh 45 percent chance to get a combo point anytime you dodge mm -hmm. so i'm gonna be i'm gonna be overflowing with combo points <laughs> so oh, if, yeah. you take, if you take that you'll you might also be able to take improved Expo's armor from Assassination Tree, and now you're keeping up, because you're going to have so many combo points. You're keeping up Expo's for your raid, you're keeping up Slice for your own threat, and you're going to be able to keep up Blade Dance without a problem, because you're going to have you're going to be overflowing with combo points. Mm -hmm. Yep. And but single target seems to be what they're going to excel at, unless we get a rune that is giving us some sort of conal or something, right? Hey, there isn't anything. Like we have Fock, but Fock sucks. Fock is too much man, too much energy. Yep. We're not gonna be able to Fock down AOE bosses, right? Yeah. We fuck have Blade that. Flurry. Yeah. Fock that big time. <laughs> but we have Blade Flurry for the. Basically, what I've discovered over the past couple of days is a level sixty rogue tank is gonna be a blood DK tank. You got crazy single target threat. You got crazy avoidance, just raw avoidance. But you can't do shit for AOE threat. <laughs> and that's fine. Which I think, yeah, I which I think is fine. I don't want to take AOE shit. I want to take bosses, for God's sake. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't want to be the ad tank? Come uh, on. Hey, my best story of the original va Vanilla WoW is when we had Ani on, on a farm, and I didn't listen to my raid lead who said, take off all your, your, your fire res. And then I took aggro... On my rogue in freaking uh in uh in phase three at the very start, tank was down. I moved I moved the head to the front and I tanked Adi for the rest of phase three. I, Let's go. Yeah, I dropped off like the raid lead was like, drop off south, drop off south. Everybody heals on Bob. And since it's all it's all it's all fire damage. I freaking tanked it all, and it was uh, it was everybody was cheering and freaking uh, yeah. ventrilo, and it was like everything was getting distorted because like it wasn't a great connection back then. Yeah, and so it was ventrilo. I'm gonna live out my tanking rogue, uh, uh, you know, fantasies that I've had since that day. Yes, dude. <laughs> I I really think subtlety is gonna be the move. Also, ghostly strike and subtlety is very good for yeah. Dodge. Ghostly strike is very underrated. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be, like, after a weekend, there's going to be ideal specs with ideal runes that are all out there that everybody's going to be looking at. And there's not going to be as much crazy change up that but people think there's going to be. But I, I think do it's going to be like Diablo 4, like, where you're getting a whole bunch of different variations. And there's people telling you there's this guy saying that this is the best. There's this guy saying that this is the best. I think it's going to be cool. I think there's going to be variation. I don't, know. I don't think the classic community is down with this, like multiple spec optional things i think it's more like this is what you do if you want to be really good 
if you don't really care, you could maybe do these other options too. They're fine. Like, I don't know. As a rogue, I'm going to be have, paying have attention fun getting to a slot in any GDKP. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be watching Simon eyes as a rogue player and hoping that he's uh X X. I haven't talked to him since all this. So I'm hoping that he's excited about this because yeah. yeah, I love I need to your see his brain. builds. He's doing both of our rogue builds on Wowhead for SOD. Sick. All right, sweet. Then, he is the man for sure. Oh man, I, dude, he probably gets tired I mean, of sending him DMs all the time. <laughs> I used to do the rogue stuff. I had to find the yeah. best guy to replace me. <laughs> I feel like Simon, as you can just like literally see the wheels turning in his head at times, and you're just like, "What is happening over here?" What no, is, and he's what such is this a coming? nice this is what guy. Genius looks like, and he's. <laughs> yes, this and I mean, is what genius looks like when somebody's that smart. They're oftentimes not very personable and nice. He's such a nice dude. I mean, such a yeah. great guy. For sure. Yeah, we're All very right. lucky to have him at Wildhead. All right. Well, um, let me hit, let's hit on. Um, so I'm just grabbing these things because we're not going to have enough time for all of this because we got about 30 minutes left that we could do probably. Uh, so. Wait, 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's. I kind of want to hit on Horde getting kings. How about that? Oh man, this kings, me number so six. Off. You have no idea. It kind of, I'm so fucking it, mad about it, this. It kind of pisses me off too. It's just like, wait, did they get identity. salved too? Yeah, we will get salved eventually. Yeah. I'm sure. Faction I'm identity, I think, is completely lost. Like, with druids being able to cast one fury too. No, they don't have to cast it. It's just on their. Person. Or sorry, yeah, it's just on their person. But like with sorry with Only druids feral giving, druids, giving though, right? wind fury. Yeah, they have to be. Yeah, but I mean, there. like, who who else needed to give it? Well, <laughs> I'm not even mad about that. Well, they don't you know even get any benefit from it, right? Huh? They don't even actually get wind fury benefits, do they? Yeah, they, they will yeah, with they this do. one. This oh, one. they do. Okay, interesting. And they needed it, obviously. Feral suck. Hunters yeah. suck too, so them getting double kings is nice. But here's what I am so pissed about. Is the Paladins Inspiration Exemplar, they have a Tremor Totem glued to their forehead. They're they're just a walking tremor totem. <laughs> uh, that's not cool. That's too good. Yeah. Uh, and then they also get wind fury on feral druids. So the alliance now have tremor totem on their paladin, and they have wind fury on feral druids. So I'm just gonna explain this in the fewest words possible, because I don't want to confuse people, okay? Wind Fury is what makes Horde worth playing. Full stop. And that's the end of the chapter, agree. There's a period there. Yes. 100%. Wind Fury totem is why you play Horde. Okay? It's very identity. Like, it's very... Stuff. It is their identity, right? Like It's a global... The shaman has to run in with all the warriors and rogues, throw the totem down on their first global, and then they get to start healing. And the tank might have already died by now. But they have to spend a global to drop the wind fury totem, and the melee have to stay near it. It's not that good. So It was such a bitch staying next to my shaman at TBC. Yeah. Oh, my God. So that's wind fury totem. But wind fury totem is really poggers, because it's more numbers on the screen. And that's why that's why we play WoW. It's for numbers on yeah. the screen. So it was worth it to be Horde, to have your shamans lose a global every fight, and to then for you to have to stay next to it, just so we can get some more numbers. That's the whole point of the Horde. That's our entire identity. I also think Tremor Totem is pretty unique, too. Because, yeah. I mean, come on. It's the only way but the Horde can break out of a fear. But the horde can't get out of fear unless they're on the ground. Yeah, yeah although exactly. we're seeing that it looks like, you know, in the interview on Wowcast uh just just yesterday, they talked about how priests will be able to possibly get all the different benefits. So I mean then fear awards might just become an option for any priest. For everybody. Thank yeah. God. Because nobody so, wants to be a dwarf. Right? So, yes. Hey, hey, speak for whoa, yourself. Whoa, 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 whoa. BTC dwarves are dwarf. great. Okay. <laughs> What's so wrong with dwarves? Uh, dwarves are definitely the coolest race so, in the Alliance. Uh, so, we're going to cancel I, Melissa. So, Rockman, I, I'm hearing what you're saying about, like, loss of, like, 
usefulness or appeal to playing Horde. Like, I'm kind of angry about it across the board because I feel like it's just a complete loss of faction identity. Like, outside of, like, your PvP racials. Yeah, I you mean... Know? Like... I mean, we still go to Orgrimmar, you know? Mm. It's not like we have a new city. We still ride Zeppelins while sure. the stupid-ass Alliance are on their tram and their, their boats. They're yeah, but I mean, like, like when, when, like, where Phase you are, two, like, the never aesthetic forget. you look at is a fairly minor part of, like, the core system of an yeah, MMO. Yeah, the, the, the combat. You know, like, it, it's like combat is the central part of... Of the game, yeah. Of the game. You know, no, and, I, and I'm kind of wondering, like, okay, okay, okay. I feel like saying that, though, like, our our uh, faction identity is getting ruined. Yeah, it's true. But I just hate that... Uh, I, I, I feel like you need to elaborate on that because I feel like a lot of people that say that don't even know what the fuck they're talking about, right? And, and when, when, I, when I say it, I'm saying it's Wind Fury Totem. That is my faction identity. So instead of me saying my faction identity is getting ruined, I'm saying no. You're giving my one thing, the Wind Fury Totem, to the Alliance. Mm-hmm. That's not okay. Like, I, n- I don't even like the whole TBC thing with Paladins going to Horde and Shamans going to Alliance. I don't like that, number one. Number two, I would have really been pissed if they did give us each other's classes. But this is basically that in more steps. You're, it's, it's literally two Shaman totems are given to the Alliance. And right now, and one of those go to the Paladin. So what is the Shaman getting? Shaman hasn't got nothing. So far, the Shaman, he lost his shaman Winfrey Totem. He lost his Tremor Totem. And now we're getting Kings through a Hunter. But what the hell is the Shaman getting? And, mm-hmm. and, and listen, I don't even mm-hmm. like saying that out loud because it's like I'm condoning the fact that they're stripping Totems from the Shaman. I would, you know what? Don't give the Horde anything else. Just keep giving <laughs> shit to the Alliance. And then never do this ever again in any future season. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I totally get where you're coming from because a lot of people would say like the paladin and all that it entails like is the the faction identity for alliance. But I think that when you look at like the active way that the active ways that um, paladins create different ways of gameplay for the alliance, it's salve and kings. You know, and I think that those two passive benefits of just like oh i've got 10 percent more stats across the board and i have to worry and about my threat less like, have an extra that, that, I gotta, oh, I go, well, but i gotta but, say but, though but, for like, the 25 that, that bracket though it's kings is really not that great like you're gonna what might stats. You're, sure, add, you sure, like but, but you're gonna yeah, what but, might but over talking, kings about right class, I'm whereas later you want kings over might yeah like and i i just don't think that those two things like make me feel like i'm playing super different i feel like those two things just make the game slightly easier well you know, the alliance like in, also in, has very very passive ways. it's Paladins it can does, dispel her friends. yeah i i think that i think that the dispel is useful especially since it's like half the cost of a priest but i i think that like for me the alliance uh faction identity comes from fear ward in, in a very similar way to how you were you talking think so? about how tremor works yeah i think that I it comes from the way that i we, feel like, like it's south. actively mitigate like it's a danger south. like fear is such a dangerous mechanic light of a loon listen as a human priest i <laughs> don't Fucking agree with light that because... well it's just okay but okay so like salve no is salve such removes a different an entire thing. part of fighting yeah you could pump so much quicker on alliance than you can more on numbers, horde Martin. it's more numbers and they you like know? more numbers it's actually not more numbers I, I because i, I have a good tank like, in my raid but, I, can but I don't i don't think <laughs> that when you look at just like passive Y'all buffs that like make alliance. you hit 10 percent harder and like make you worry about like how hard you're hitting less with 30 percent less threat like i don't think that that's like identifying as no 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 no, no. threat like, is a like, huge like, part when you're fully world buffed, your raid is jacked. It's DMF week. So, dude, threat's the only thing that matters. Because yeah, surely yeah, everybody you think, knows you that. I mean, it's Sal- the main Sal- mechanic like, in, like in a, vanilla. Like a kingpin mechanic of what it That's means why to is so feel good, right? like you're playing Alliance. Uh, well, okay, so here's the thing. Like, When my guild went into BWL opening night and we were going to try to get server first, we actually weren't totem twisting tranquil air and, and one of our one of our new warriors that just joined our guild he ripped on veil and we died 
and it ruined our it ruined everything for us. We weren't able to get server first. Mm-hmm. And w- we started totem twisting tranquil air. Drop a wind fury, then you everyone gets their weapon temporary weapon buff. Then you drop a tranquil air until the weapon buff's about to fall off. Right. Yeah. So that's a that's two globals that our shaman or yes yeah, three globals our shamans are losing every like eight seconds. Meanwhile, on the alliance, <laughs> your paladin is just casting holy light, holy light, holy light, holy light, holy light, holy light, holy light. No globals lost because everyone just has a salve on them and kings and might and you fuckers went into orgamar and stole Warchief's blessing too <laughs> so what are you talking that, about that's, that shit was expensive though rock it was expensive Man, it should have never been possible it's a weird <laughs> bug with mc cap that should it should be well, poured you should have never had i was in orgamar killing all you fuckers all you rats how do you guys you should have never had a, you should have never had an extra buff help. we didn't get an extra buff <laughs> You, wait, you had King's Might and Salve on everyone in your raid. No, but I'm being world buff. Yeah. King's is 10% off. You had Wind Fury. Buff. You had. Okay, no, no, Warriors no, no. could play. And it, okay, Fury, Fury Warriors had a whole other spec. Okay, Fury Warriors had a whole other spec that they, well, that they could play two handed Fury, Fury, Fury that Zingo. nobody on the Alliance could ever make Let work. Me guess, you're a human warrior, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should just be playing Warriors. <laughs> the real Warrior faction. Yeah. I mean, oh okay, okay. God. Very obviously, I'm in a like minority of one on this. What I like, what the point I was trying to get to. I don't think that Alliance like really has any faction identity in terms of active gameplay. Well, like, we take you just, showers. The, the, I mean, that's, the only thing that that's Sal that's does you, is just you make you play the game without thinking, Westfall. like as magic much about like playing backyard. the game. Yeah, but that's an item that anybody can get. The horde has to just travel like, across the, the universe. We have to travel to Orgrimmar. Universe <laughs> across <laughs> the like, universe. Across the world. Like I, I think, I think that like what would have been cooler would be to, if they're giving or if they're trying to like give things that help create faction identity to the alliance. Don't just take what the horde has and give it to the alliance. I like agree. that's what I'm saying. Like, what? Why make horde feel? less op in their own right you know in the, make, in the few uh, ways that they get to be op make war chief's blessing horde only and everything's <laughs> fine you can have our shit take it but that's our fucking world buff <laughs> stay away yeah, I I would, I would, I'm, into I'm into it <laughs> <laughs> um all right so yeah we don't have we don't have much time i'm trying to see what i want to look at the most so th- you know there's new Librum's idols and shaman icons. Shaman icons. So I, I'll I actually, think it's good I'll, because there I just, just wasn't. Stop that one. I don't think it actually is going to be new items for them, like to go in their range slot. I actually think what we data mined might have just been a bunch of test items from Blizzard. When they okay, so like I said earlier, someone told me what was going on at Blizzard in advance, right? Well, originally these runes were going to be. Uh, extra bonuses on items that you would equip the item and the item gave you a rune. So I think in the very beginning, the classes that literally had a free item slot is shamans, druids, and uh, paladins because they don't have a ranged item until like level 50, right? They wear Egan's blaster in phase one because they don't have a ranged item. So uh, I think the very first items they were testing were for shaman, druid, and paladin and it would go on the range slot. I actually don't think what we put out is going to actually be new items for those classes. I just think it was a really early test for us. So D that makes sense. So yeah, yeah it's, it, it might, it's not really misinformation cause we did see it, but I don't think it is what we thought it was after we looked into it more after we put the article out. So yeah. I actually think that those were just test items to test runes. All right. But um, another one that I was, uh really excited about is the uh the new world buff boon of black fathom Mm -hmm. that's one um like we can just read it out for everyone the so there's also we saw a bunch of world buffs that might only apply to the pvp event i actually don't think you'll be able to take those out with you we actually probably for defending a camp or something yeah the uh I don't remember what Dev told us, but they said there was going to be specific ones only usable 
in the PvP thing. They might have yeah, said yeah, usable at BGs too. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's called Action Veil Rallying Cry. It just says increases all damage and healing done by 5% for two hours. I have a feeling this is just in the open world PvP. And like if you leave, it'll Yeah, fall like off. a zone buff. Yeah, it's like in, in Ultrag Valley, right? When Drek'thar puts a buff on the horde and everybody mm -hmm. gets bigger, right? Or I even just uh, uh, EPL. Yeah, exactly. With the damage for the, the Boon of Black Fathom, which we still aren't sure how to obtain, but I'm pretty sure in one of the uh, interviews, they said you get this at the end of the raid. So after you clear the raid, and in the way it is in Classic Era... When you kill the Murloc, there's the orb there you can go talk to, yeah. and it gives it, you the frost damage. Well, and there's another orb behind the last boss, I'm pretty yeah, sure, where hydra. you, like, refresh it yeah. after you finished it up before you go to Darn and then make your so way So I your feel raid. like you can get the yep. Moon of Black Fathom from that spirit. same thing. And it's a two-hour buff. It increases your crit by 2%. It gives you 20 AP and 20% movement speed for two hours. And so like movement speed is king. Yeah, it's a, it's a ZG buff, basically, right. with 2% crit and 20 AP. Yep. That's very good. I think that that'll, cool. again, be really, really fun for speedrunning guilds who, you know, want to get it right before reset, log out until they're going to get their DMF buff. Can we get rocket uh, boots? <laughs> go in, just uh, yeah, see you how can, fast they can blaze their BFD. No, I, no, I want Wrath rocket boots, but I don't want to pigeonhole it to people with engineering. I want to make it an enchant on boots mm. for anybody. That's, an engineer can good. put it on, but I don't know. It's just so cool when everybody has it, but it sucks that everybody has to go engineering in Wrath. Sorry, that was a total I, side I piece. Mind, well, most people go engineering in, in Wrath for the gloves, too, the haste gloves. Yeah, but the but biggest thing the... is the boots. Like you get saved yeah. so many times in, in encounters with the boots and just speed running in general. Everything just revolves around them boots. It would be nice if there was a way to make your boots break less often in vanilla. Uh, <laughs> the boots are so expensive. Oh, um, oh, oh, okay. So, yeah. Boots. Okay, yeah. I... I've never They're used like them in gold vanilla. Right now on Classic Era, three hundred gold. Damn. Because they actually break, right? Yeah. Oh, you can't repair them. No, they're they're gone. Mm. They're deleted. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in Wrath, they never mouth mal malfunction in a raid or dungeon. Only in the outside world. So some in people Valor, never. Too. Yeah. So some people never even use them outside, and then they're like, "What the hell just happened?" It's like, yeah, "Oh yeah, that could happen." Up. Yeah, I do. I do like that. There's also um, s these shrines in we don't know where. I'm pretty sure they're going to be around Ashenvale. And if you meditate at the shrine for who knows how long, you'll get a little 5% <laughs> stat. So there's an, a 5% in 5% spirit, 5% stam and 5% armor. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Yep, I mean, yep. like for robes, I would take the stamina one. Well, and then but the then, new the new mana oil and sharpening stones too. Yeah, the consumables. Yeah, like, and, but they're only usable in the raid, right? Or at Inside least that's what raid, we yeah. understand. Yeah, but those are huge with like so a lot of hit and stuff too. Yeah, one of them is what? what it's one percent hit. The uh, the consu the uh, sharpening stone. It's one percent hit inside the raid. Which, yeah, which is huge at lower oh, lower levels. Two percent hit. It's two percent hit. That is pretty nuts because what you you want like uh, six on a warrior. I don't yes. think you're going to get much more than that at level twenty five. You... Well, there are different pieces of gear that give hit earlier yeah. on. Now the the uh, different epics that that were data mined. So yeah. I think that's a good thing, though, because I think that sucks about early on leveling up. And it really pigeonholes a lot of classes, uh, especially dual dual wield classes. I mean, you guys have played hard, hardcore and if you've ever dual dual wielded, you know, every fight is completely different. One fight, you might kill him in a few seconds. and One fight, you might be there for like 10 seconds and like, what the hell? How many misses can I get? <laughs> true <laughs> it's horrible well i mean and that's kind of like what would feed into the okay i'll be 
two handed until what level fifty? It's mm-hmm. basically what I did in hard hardcore. I wanted to change a forty eight, but it just didn't feel right, so I specced back. But at fifty, well, you, it feels good to switch over to Fury. What level is it where you get you have Wind Fury, you get Whirlwind Axe, and you get I believe strike. You get 30, all that around mid thirty, like yeah, thirty eight. Like I think 38. yeah, thirty six or thirty eight is when you get Whirlwind. I, I mean, you, you could you could theoretically be getting your whirlwind axe and sweeping strikes at 30. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just but, doesn't but feel you don't good. Have, uh, war, you don't have a uh, whirlwind, but the moment yeah. you get whirlwind sw- sweeping strikes and whirlwind axe, your power level probably quintuples. I mean, that's like, at the point where I stopped taking mobs one by one and started taking them three <laughs> yeah, at a time. When, yeah. If your yeah. up, you pull the Changes whole pack. everything. Yeah. It's you're killing. Yeah. Road. Because you're killing them. Quick enough to where you'll only lose twenty percent of your health, anyways. Right, if that. Ro- when rogues get blade flurry, they go a lot faster and they pull more for sure. Yep, yep. But uh, but with warriors though, it's way more. It's way more powerful than rogues blade flurry. You get all three of those things around the mid thirties, and then you literally just start. You become mm-hmm. a machine. Yep, it's that's that's why I try to tell everybody like hardcore is a lot tougher the earlier levels. <laughs> like yeah, oh absolutely. Oh, yeah. Once yeah, you get worked up, it's kind of your fault if you die. Yeah. On a on a rogue, you get vanish. I think at twenty two, yeah, and then it's it's coasting. Mm-hmm. But one to twenty two is the dangerous part. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and you get your. Well, I mean, well, and, yeah, and I'm sure Mal could attest. Like that's why priests have the like highest survival rate to sixty. Like you unlock the entirety of your kit that you're going to need at level twelve. Yeah, one go. power and shield. Yeah, yep. <laughs> you just need power and shield rank two, and you're one. That's, I've leveled many priests on private servers too, so I, all I you definitely need. know. And you got fear. It's yeah, it's it's it's, it's cozy. really fun. How? Yeah, it's really yeah. It's it's cozy. It's fun. It's Netflixable. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We'll put yep. on the podcast. Bob died right three now. times, uh, and yeah. Mel's L- listen, character still listen to lived. The last episode of yeah. yeah. Listen to the last episode of uh, Warcraft Reloaded while you're leveling. You're your gonna things. get a, a level or two. We've been live what two hours forty five. That's like a whole level and a half right there yeah. on a priest. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> it's you're pretty like. There's not much you can't do on a priest, right? Like you can definitely get yourself in some sticky situations, but yeah, you can, can also pull five mobs if you want to, and, and then run drink. Away. And oh, and if, your fear, but... if your fear pathing's really bad, it could be gross. <laughs> locks, I mean, locks a lot like that too. Like I've had, like my lock, I just started out and I was just like, I mean, pulling four things, and I'm like, I'm good. I mean, like you got my pet over here with these two. I guess yeah, your pet is like the, I feel like yeah. your pet is like the equivalent of like our shield, right? Like our shield just protects us from all the <laughs> damage coming in. So if there's three or four people, yeah, if you're a us, priest and you're not ending a fight with 100 percent health, you're doing something. Yeah, 100. Yeah. Well, and you should have close to 100 yeah. percent mana too. Yeah, yeah with spirit <laughs> tab, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, I remember, man, this was so long ago. I did a I did a leveling stream. Man, what was this? Oh, it was season of mastery. Yeah. So when Season of Mastery launched, I made a priest. Um, and, Mistake and I number did one. In, I did it in first person mode. And I got a, uh, I, there's some clips of it on my Twitch, I believe. But I got a, a picture of like the Doom uh, first person shooter where he's holding the gun. And I overlaid that over my screen. And I made a weak aura that would play a gun noise every time I wanded. I love it. Yes. So that I made a awesome. first person shooter uh, dwarf priest and I called her Hood Granny on the street. <laughs> and she was cleaning those streets. She's just out there wanting everybody. But oh last God. So it was it. a lot of fun. All right. Oh, yeah. Rockman, I want to ask you because I've made this reference to a few people and you know, you said you're old, so maybe you're old enough yeah. to get it and make sure. and it and it'd be and it'd be funny for you because it was funny to some of the devs when I told them. But I feel like season of dis dis discovery uh, level twenty five looks to be a lot, like I get a very Muppet Babies feel, like the old car uh, cartoon where all of the Muppets were like little kids. And that's what. Oh, no, that's one. Ah, damn it! All right, well, dang it! <laughs> yeah, you lost me. All right, well, Muppet Babies were just all of the Muppets, but as kids. So Kermit's a little kid, uh, you know. Uh, Foggy's a, a like little kid. 
but that's what the level 25 looks like to me. Like when they did that trailer where they're going through and, you know, they're seeing everybody fight the, you know, the one fight, the people are falling off the platform. Everybody looks so small. It looks like, a, you know, and there's been other franchises that have done this where they make like the main characters kids. Like, yeah. Yeah. And that's I just what this up feel and this looks like. Fuel. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Fuel. Oh, wait. Dude, Muppet Babies was great. Wait. Puppet babies. This is just a This is a our dreams of come on you. From my childhood. Puppet I actually think I had babies will make our dreams come true. Nope, I remember nothing. the green guy, not Kermit, but the one with the glasses. I just I just saw a picture of him. I actually do remember this guy. I'm telling you, it probably was when you were a little kid. I just posted it in our Discord <laughs> uh, chat that we have. I actually do remember this. No. I do oh, the green, like Martian looking guy. Yeah, yep. the guy in the middle. I okay, had but, no okay, eyes. Can we all just take a second? <laughs> the the one on all fours on the right. Yeah, that's, that's nightmare, some fuel. nightmare that's fuel, right? There. That is a uh, that's a uh, animal. The Muppet I actually, animal. I actually think I actually think I have seen cartoons of this when I was a kid, but this came out in like the eighties, so it was old even when yeah. I saw it. Was it old really for me? Oh, I guess it was like the mid to late eighties. Yeah. Yeah, 1984 was their first season. Yeah, well, I mean, back then we watched a I lot of stuff on that. syndication. Yeah, and it, stuff yeah too. I was watching Scooby Doo when I was a kid from the 70s. So, but yeah, right. For sure. right well, Saturday morning like, cartoons were a thing. I, we didn't have DVR. <laughs> there's, there's definitely other IEPs that have done the same type of deal, but that's what it feels like. We look like little miniatures, and it's cute. I don't know. It's like really cute. I'm gonna say yes and no. We are miniatures because we're level 25. But now what I want you to do is give each of those Muppet babies a <laughs> shotgun, <laughs> a chainsaw, uh, you know, a scythe. Because yep. we're, we're, we're babies, but we're getting future spells that we should not be having. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. Killer babies. Yes. <laughs> Killer right. Muppet babies. Well, uh, I'm sure that's how they want it marketed too, right? I feel oh, like yeah. we're really hitting it on the nose here. Yeah. <laughs> Plaster season of discovery right over this image. Killer babies. <laughs> wow, babies. Classic babies. I don't know. We could no. we could work with this. Okay. I think we just have time for one last thing, and that's uh the um role combinations. I wanted to go through this. Um so real quick I'll go through. Druid can do what they did before, tank, DPS, heal. Hunter, DPS. Mage can now heal. Paladin could tank, but now can really tank. Uh, priest, it's, it's the same. Rogue can now tank. <laughs> I mean, Shaman can now tank. Yep. Okay, Locke can now tank. Yep. And Warrior's about the same. So... Why there's one class here that only has one check mark? Why do they hate Hunter? Well, well they supposedly they're trying to make them do melee. Yeah, we oh, yeah. we haven't we haven't seen it I didn't very split well, it up but in the melee and range. Well, but like even uh in their classic deep dive for it, you know they were saying when they were highlighting some of the runes that they got, they were like, oh, if you combine you know uh the lone wolf rune like with melee weapons you know you're looking at a sick melee hunter and they kind of just left it at that but it didn't like the lone wolf rune wasn't melee specific um right also so i'm sure i'm sure that there are a couple of other runes that are in store uh for them and maybe they did change a potential... hunter spell by the way really see so i this is a part of the data mining but we didn't make it its own thing the traps right it, no, no no i believe it's raptor strike so currently in classic era, it's your next auto like heroic strike on a oh, warrior. Oh, they made it instant. But now it just and it has a shorter cooldown. Gotcha. Isn't mongoose uh, strike instant too? I'm not sure. I I never used hunter to hunter melee abilities in my life other than wing clip. <laughs> Kipso made melee ability. <laughs> yeah, Kipso made a video just I think yesterday, pointing out like how he was like, uh, well, let's look at the. Uh, the abilities that have changed and dang yeah. it i can't remember which ones but there were quite a few uh, abilities that the text is completely different now i did see the range on the traps but honestly i don't think that means 
the, they can be thrown. Well, but you didn't have to it, be out of combat in. Yeah, yeah, you just reminded me. Yeah, the out of combat text was gone, which yeah. would be can, nutty. Dropping a frost pad. Yeah, I mean, I will say it's it's giga clunky. Uh, walking over, feigning, and trapping. It's just clunky, <laughs> right? And you look like a total goober doing it. <laughs> so I think if they could just kneel down and drop the trap, it's totally fine. The Some people think they might be able to throw them, which I feel like there would be... I could see... I would be able to see more stuff in, in, in different rows of columns in the databases if that were true. Um, because... It would need a cast time, right? I don't know if it would necessarily have a cast time or um, there would be some animation to throw it. There's no spell animation changes with the casts on traps. It's still kneeling down. So if you were to kneel down, how would it also be thrown 40 yards? I don't know why the 40 yard thing is on the tooltips. I mean, maybe but... it's because you're shot, you're shot putting. You know, you're just getting way down. Yeah, maybe. Going or maybe uh maybe you kneel down, you know, in sniper position and you shoot it out of your gun. I think it's up possible to, that to oh, yards or away. like a uh what's the things where the the oh, what were they called where you drop the thing in like mortar? Th yeah, like maybe it's a mortar shooter. A mortar. Uh yeah, I don't know uh, about the trap thing. Maybe they're in the it's still being updated to be thrown, but at yeah, least from what I saw, I don't think it can be thrown right now. Yeah. But maybe maybe it will be uh once there's more changes. I mean, we're going to get more PTRs, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And if I see anything else going on with it with traps, then yeah, maybe they're making it throwable. Yeah. <laughs> I I I would hope that at the very least they do a good job at making melee hunter feel fun and engaging and good you know I I, I'm, I'm sure that on their list of to do's is already make their damage a little beefier because they are kind of yeah. mid well, what we said earlier and call them about rangers rangers yep. what we said earlier about talents Air, I why they, it to why be they put it in talents it's because mm. classic era is on the same patch I actually mm -hmm. think raptor strike is going to change on classic era for people that'd be cool I, I, I mean, it it, I don't think it'll get used, but that's cool. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, what, let me open up the PTR right now. I'm pretty sure I have a hunter on here. I could just see if the traps are throwable. Easy. Oh, but, I don't, I don't uh, do that. but yeah, I mean, in the same way that like I'm hoping that they've got that kind of capability planned for hunters, you know, I hope that I, I get that their whole mantra was like, don't uh, nerf warriors like make everybody else op and i think that on the healer question like priests are traded the same way i do hope that right. they give in the same way that i'm hoping that they give hunters something fun to look forward to that makes them feel like they they got something i do hope that they achieve the same thing with warriors and priests um because i played the demo twice both times I had to be a healer because the second time nobody wanted to heal. So it was like <laughs> me and Trill healing. Oh, God. Um, and Priest was, it felt pretty much the same from a healer standpoint. I um, think because you know, I've I had played like Wrath and stuff and too. Mending. Yeah, but yeah. I've been playing with Wrath and, <clears throat> or with Penance and Prayer Mending. So it just felt like I had no too, mana. So like that, yeah. that's the only thing I noticed. Zero mana. Yeah. Which was like very I, I felt I felt like I was not a healing contributor. And I think that like when you have a class for priests, at least, with two options on healing alternatives, like to make them a little more distinct so that discipline isn't yeah, something you like, the best go healers, half right? into. I mean they I think they already I mean, they were. were. Like I, I think they were. the the decision to like make other healing classes feel more fun and like introduce mages to the mix is like a really enjoyable thing. But I do sure. think that making your specs stand out from one another on the healing front would have been fun. Like I think doing the same thing with like, you know, making arms a little more viable and fun to play with for warriors. Um, you know, as you look to end game content, whether it's at level 60 or just 25, uh, would have been I mean, really it's fun, fun as hell in fun PvP. 
Yeah, they're yeah. they're biz they're biz PvP. It's like yeah. Frost Mages are really good in PvP and they have a really good PvE in phase one and two and three. Mm. But like assassination rogues are never good for anything. Yeah. You get cold blood in Hemo PvP, but that's it. You don't go yeah. past cold yeah, blood. I, I I feel yeah, I feel like Yeah, assassination is even a, like a more prominent version of how i see the discipline tree like mm -hmm. it's so rare that you go deep enough in discipline yeah you don't really go PI. behind divine spirit yeah i mean you only take pi for warsong gulch yeah <laughs> i think even if you're in duratar dueling or open or, or PvP, to you know you make a quick PI. hundred gold on every boss in yeah, a race sure. yeah. <laughs> right free gold and you take it yeah. but but yeah, you pretty much always go spiritual healing and raid. <clears throat> yeah, you would never. And, take... and, and just like I think assassination could really use some love in an experimental server like Sod. Um, you know, I think something like discipline could as well. I think something like arms outside of just PvP could as well. Um, well, and say, same with survival for hunter. You know, I go think back to it. Discipline needs spell uh, shield reflection. Yeah. I think that that would have been really that fun. That at least makes it good for PvP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, like but, like Mel, I, I think you would agree. Like we we have a rune for priests where your flash heal, heal, lesser heal, greater heal, I don't know, all of your heals reduce yeah. weakened soul on a target by four yeah. seconds, which makes helps you cast it faster, uh, which is great. You know, you but I think I I think that yeah, you just run out of mana trying to get your your next cast to bubble out. You know, I think. Right. buffing your shield in the first place that it's more useful because it's not a super helpful spell uh yeah. in classic vanilla because it doesn't uh, right. you know, to, scale to where with it, spell power yeah, right because like at the end of the day like that's the core identity of the disciplined priest is mm -hmm. your bubble and what and like the additives to it i think adding something sure. like that spell reflect uh you know reducing the cooldown on cast from four seconds to you know Two, or even not having a cooldown so that you can put it on your whole party, or even um, having mana regen from <clears throat> shield. So casting shields at the right time give you mana. I mean, yeah, there's, you you there's getting mana things. back for for everybody, or you and your target that is shielded, like getting mana back or resources back. Um, now, nah, you guys, you know, this is from, what we want. from it being we used. Want mass shield. Okay, it would it would have been <laughs> want to be able to shield the whole group. Shield. And I want, I want I want mass shield. I want well, we mass there, shield. Yeah. And then I want shield to give me mana back so that yep. I have enough mana to then do something else. Mass shield. shield. And then yeah, mass barrier shield. Was fun to play with from retail, but the rapture. cooldown was way too long. Rapture and Wrath is the best thing about Priest oh, and Wrath. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Also, the fact that you can, it snapshots. When a big mm -hmm. raid AoE goes out and pops all the shields, you'll get like 10,000 mana. Put yeah. Rapture in vanilla. Now we're talking. Now that's a big juice. Yeah, Rapture and Mass Shield. Rockman, you can't forget about Mass Shield. I don't this think Mass Shield's a real thing. It is. You got it Holy could be. You know what's not a real thing? Rogue Tank. But it is now. So why can't we think outside the box I here, mean, right? To like, be let's... fair, Rogue Tank was looking pretty good at the end of TBC all right, with oh, all the different healer. dodge there's gear. Mage Healer. Tank. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on, we got mage healer. We can have mass he shield. Yeah, Although I, I will, I will say the the mage Rito. healer is like, it's not you're a real healer. DPS. Yeah. yeah, you're an arcane. You're an arcane, or well, you're just a DPS with you're gonna like the with tank. an AOE. Yeah, I rejuve feel like it's a tank and, healer and the ability to. You don't take the AOE rejuve. You, you're you only going to take. Here's what you're going to do. The yeah, AOE there's another thing in the same rejuve. slot that they would not skip. Right, you're going to take regeneration, and that's it, because. The leg slot that you would take mass regen, you're gonna want arcane surge. Mm -hmm. So, so what you're gonna do as a arcane mage is you're only you're an arcane DPS. That's it, period. And then occasionally you're gonna drop your regen on the main tank, and now your arcane mm -hmm. damage is also gonna off heal them. But that mass regen is a bait because it only does your party. So what are you yeah. talking about? You're gonna be in the healer party or a random party, like healing your party members. If you want it to heal the tank with that thing, now you're in the tank group, and now you're just griefing your tank because your yeah. tank is going to want the feral druid in his 
group for a stupid ass wind fury that should be okay. a port only <laughs> and then he's gonna need he's gonna maybe he, they put the warlock in there for the the imp that gives him more stamina he's gonna want a uh a warrior to battle shout well depending on what the tank spec is right so mm-hmm. it'll be really hard to squeeze an arcane mage into your tank group for the aoe and that mage loses arcane surge which he really really wants to pump arcane down mm-hmm so the AOE one is a little bit of a bait right now. Maybe when they add more rune slots and we get other stuff, you could consider the mass regen. But I think in the phase one, you don't take mass regen. Interesting. You only just throw the thing on the tank. So, so my, my question is, though, so you, you said only regeneration, and I'm assuming it would be like arcane blast and arcane surge. Exactly. Or the other That's two, what you but like, so, so you're not seeing any reason to do rewind time? Never. And then... Really? And then that's be like a, a fire a, mage with those two abilities? Uh, well, the thing about rewind time is um, how... Like, there's no limit on the amount that you can heal. So, like, right, right, if, right. You, if you know that, like, massive damage is incoming, you just, boom, pop rewind time. What I'm interested in... If I could turn is, back time. If you... If it has to... If rewind time only works for your own temporal beacon... <laughs> It does say your current target with your temporal beacon. Yeah, and regeneration puts temporal beacon on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, wouldn't it be cool if you could just be a fire mage? Well, that's what I'm saying. You, you... And throw it on your friend's regen. <clears throat> oh, you know? oh, but does but it, it say it, yours? It, I think it's only yeah, your it says, own yeah, temporal your... beacon. Well, and, yeah. and that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you do regeneration, rewind time, and like living flame. Or yeah, something. Probably... I think you. I think you still could. Well, I don't think you would take Living Flame because what do you think you would do? Well, you, it only works with arcane damage. The uh, the healing from regen. It, you could take you could take rewind time over arcane blast. And honestly, I think at level twenty five, you're going to oom yourself with arcane blast. Wait, wait, wait. What What do you mean? It only works with arcane damage. Temporal beacon. Yeah. The, yeah. It. it... The like it's gonna have to be an arcade mage that does, does it. Oh, I didn't read that part. Okay, you're an well, arcade I take mage. it all back. Yeah. I take it all back. You're not a frost or fire mage. Yeah. Well, then that's a just a really <laughs> shitty choice that you have to make between arcane blast and rewind time. To be yeah, honest. but I think you're gonna oom yourself with arcane blast. I swear to God, at level twenty five, <clears throat> you're ooming fucking three arcane blasts. Bro. That's fair. That's fair. Maybe I at level if, sixty or whatever. I, I I wonder if like then it's just uh you stack like plus arcane damage. And you do take the uh, the rewind time. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I actually and you just try and, try and boost the most you can out of your arcane missiles. I'd be interested to see the math on it, but there's probably a decent debate between arcane surges extra damage versus just a rewind time. Or even arcane blast. Either one of them works. Because arcane surge is like a DPS cooldown. Arcane blast is just big damn. But like having just... Because the more damn you do with arcane, the more healing you send to the tank with beacon Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's like what's better do i just put a beacon on them and then try to blast my brains out on a crappy arcane mage to heal them as much as possible or do i just forego trying to pump and just watch him really closely stare at his health bar and anytime he gets low i rewind time him it's like i don't i don't also i don't even like the idea of rewind time as a player if i'm a mage with rewind time, it feels like i'm I'm just playing silly in league of legends yeah it's like that's not a mage's like mindset right right. like there's no current person playing mage that's like i would rather be a mage healer and stare at the mage's health health bar to rewind time it right i mean any other way (laughs) it'd be pretty sick though if like your paladin like your tank is just getting owned your paladin lays on hand them your dps is dead your tanks down to that one percent, and then you rewind time them and just fully heal them. That would be pretty sick and okay. epic. What a moment! But also, <laughs> yeah. y'all are probably shit to get in that situation in the first place. Well, <laughs> and if that if that's what you're living for, play paladin with lay on hands. Yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, yeah, guys, be a red paladin. <clears throat> yeah. We definitely okay. didn't get to all of the news. There was just way. Way too much of it. Too much news, Blizzard. Too much. It's been news. it's been a great show, <laughs> but we're we're gonna start ending out here. Um, oh, and of course, I don't have my thing up. All right, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at WC Reloaded. You can follow the Mash Those Buttons Network at 
the MASH Network. If you want to email us, the email address is wcrpodcast at gmail.com. Um, don't have a Discord. Oh, that kills me every time. Um, how can you guys help the, the, the podcast? You can leave us stars. You can report Blaze and Bob on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? They've changed his name. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's just gone. But uh, yeah, you can uh, leave us stars on Spotify. You can leave us reviews on iTunes. We haven't had an iTunes review in like what feels like forever. Um, you can. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, although more people listen on Spotify, which over the years was very different. Spotify's kind of taken over the whole pod, the whole podcast market. Um, Thanks, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bob, if I weren't able to watch this live, but I really had just a burning question on how cool you are, could I? Is there like a phone service or anything that I could call you on and, and leave a voicemail to ask that? I'm glad you ask. Ooh. Only Black Smoke there is. It is 816 866 1066. But even better, if you're not in the continental USA and you don't want to spend money on on uh on long on distance anything. then go to speakpipe.com slash warcraft reloaded and record right from your computer or your phone using the app amazing and then yeah uh, yeah if you want to help out on the 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 patreon we do uh you do get early ac access to the show because usually we record friday or saturday nights and then it's not out till tuesday till tuesday so if you want it early you could do that there and uh, yeah. Oh, you can also use code reloaded at rested XP checkout to save mm -hmm. money and to support us. And then rogue energy, you could use code reloaded to support us. And rogue energy tastes better than G, G fuel. You heard it here. It's the truth. <laughs> Don't tell Wink. Well, I mean, I play a rogue. You want to see my keyboard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that is a color it's yellow because ro ye rogues are yellow i do more oh damage with this keyboard <laughs> i bet bigger nice. more numbers what's not to love nice nice <laughs> all right mel where can we find you you can find me on the podcast sometimes on twitter when bob doesn't add me to the post but you know other than that in game that's about it awesome awesome and only Black Smoke. Where can, where can we find you? Uh, in Rockman's basement, mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, in game. He's the data miner. He's yeah. just like in there. Just <laughs> I mean, they had to do it somehow. <laughs> um, no, I mean, mostly in game at the moment. I, I really haven't streamed too much. Um, you but should. Maybe with Season of Discovery, I will. Uh, Twitch.tv slash only Black Smoke. Otherwise, I'm on Twitter if you want to talk to an empty void. <laughs> uh, and yeah i mean i don't know i'm very excited ever since doing uh hardcore all-stars just to try and put on events for people and i think season of discovery is a big opportunity for Huge. a lot of a lot of fun fun content for folks to play so yeah with well, any luck i am i've been uh i've been trying to build up some murmurs but with any luck we might get a get some fun tournaments to play in yeah, I, ho I hope what we talked about uh, at Bliss that BlizzCon comes to fruition or possibly anything. I'm not gonna I'm say trying. anything, but I'm, trying. I'm hoping that happens because I think it'd be great. <laughs> Good. And Rockman, where can we find you? Uh, in about five minutes, I'm gonna be in my living room watching football, Texas and TCU's playing. Uh, can I come up? From yeah, the you can come. You can come out of the basement. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, I'm. I write the news on Wowhead, so wowhead.com is where you can find uh, me. But and don't you stream I, too? I, yeah, I stream, but man, streaming sucks, dude. <laughs> I hate yes. having to pretend to be happy and nice when I'm not I having know, a See, I, I just don't. Nice. I'm a completely, like, everybody comes to my stream and they're like, Bob, you're a lot more toxic than I thought. I was like, yeah, that's because I'm stream me, which is just yeah. me, and we're talking and the show is the is a totally different thing. I have to be on my best behavior on the show. So yeah, but I have to be on my best behavior on the internet and in yeah. World of Warcraft because I work for Wowhead. Yeah. But That's man, do I want to pop off sometimes when I'm on stream, but I'll get in trouble if I do that. So <laughs> Yeah, so I just I always get to be toxic. It. 
Yeah, so uh, I do stream, but don't follow or sub to me. F uh, follow and sub everyone else that said their streams. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm on wowhead.com. I'm also on Twitter, but eh, who cares about Twitter? It's R O K M A N. So no, follow it's R O K H A R D M A N. Yes. Rock hard. That's right. Rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And you can find me on Twitter at blazon underscore Bob. That's B L A Z Z I N underscore B O B. You can find me on Twitch streaming at blazon Bob. No underscore. And you will be able to find me soon on Kick and YouTube. And I think I'm going to use the Warcraft Reloaded Clips channel for YouTube because it would be really nice to just move the show there. But we need, like, at least a 1,000 followers to be moving the show there. So maybe give us a follow oh. there. <laughs> yeah. I know I haven't put any clips out, but I'm, I found something I might be doing clips soon. So we'll see. But, yeah, clips are a pain. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Great show. It was great having you both on. This is okay. awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank fun. you so much. I put the Viking helmet on because, uh, you know. Beautiful. We won. We we had a victory. Yeah, I was, for a second, I was like, Minnesota? Is... No. <laughs> uh, I bought this when Valheim came out. I streamed Valheim for like two weeks back when I <laughs> was streaming. Nice, nice. I I like it. All right, guys, well, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much for checking out Warcraft Reloaded Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any future content. <laughs>